this is a story of how Dennis got in a fight. Literally, I was shit, talking to you until he came. Shut the fuck up. I don't give a fuck about pussy. You relax. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Pull Out Podcast. If you want to support us, make sure to subscribe to our Patreon. Uh, you get cool uh, features such as uh, our Discord and uh, exclusive episodes or bonus clips. Um, and yeah. So <laughs> here's what happened. We, we go out last night and uh, yeah. We're, Why did we go out? Uh, we wanted to have a good time. We haven't been out all together in a minute. And, uh, was that the real reason, Dennis? They're like, how about we not bring it up anything? <laughs> all right, all right. That was the real reason, guys. Keep going, Phil. <laughs> so Alejandro, uh, Dennis, and two other of our friends, Vidrio and Danny. Yeah, two other losers. Yeah. Dude, what kind of name is Vidrio? I mean, he's taller than you, know? He's not definitely taller Dude, I'm all, taller dude. than him. And I'm dude, if your name is Vidrio, you're already a loser from the start. Do you know that means glass in Spanish? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, dude. <laughs> anyway, shout out Vidrio. Yeah, shout out Vidrio, dude. I mean, of course we're joking. Yeah. I mean, you are a loser, but we're joking. They're not joking. So anyways, not joking. Uh, we all went out and uh, we go to this uh, club in Hollywood Boulevard. And we're like, uh, you know what? Let's hit the the dance floor. Or at least when I get there, that's where I'm telling the, the story from my perspective. We're dancing for a while at the clubs. You know, we're having a few drinks. Okay, you know what? Let's do that, dude. Let's tell the story. So, okay, let's, let's wait, start wait. like this, dude. This is a story of how Dennis got in a fight, right? Now, yeah. we're going to still from different perspectives how we each saw it. Oh, that's it. that's good. I like and that. And then y'all can decide what is the true story and what happened. So, we'll start with Phil's side. And start from the whole day. Well, hold on. How, you got, up, no, how about we start with my side because it's more fun. No, here. no, no. But, but your side is going to be too complicated for them to understand. Damn, if Phil dude. says it, then they can understand your side better. So, they just start your whole day that led up to Dennis's fight. <laughs> dude i like this okay uh i guess the only relevant thing is like I'll, I'll start from the date because that's sort of like you know towards the end of the night um okay so the clock hits 8 30 p.m and i go to another bar in west hollywood okay. and i am meeting a suitor a meeting, suitor yes uh, uh what's a suitor <laughs> Yeah, I was, dude, I was about to say <laughs> Basically, someone who's, like, interested in you romantically. So, uh... Guy yeah, or girl? Undisclosed English. information. No, I'm kidding. Uh, so, I, I meet up with this girl at this bar at 8.30 p.m. Uh, we start having drinks. We have a lot of fun, you know, just talking about life and whatnot. And what's funny is that there's this couple that sits next to us. The guy is, like, middle-aged, and she looks like she's in her mid-20s. And she's like, oh, my God, you guys are so cute. Is this a first date? And oh, then, dude, she fucked it up. And like she was um, she was right on the money because she fucking knew it was a first date. Why didn't you roast her? Oh, my God, you guys are so cute. Is he your dad? <laughs> <laughs> Is this like a daughter date? Got him. Yeah, I'm like, wow, it's so great that you're doing charity work with, you know, senile people. Um, no, I mean, what senile mean? It means just ancient people. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we're there in the day and we're having fun, having a few drinks. Um, you know, things go well. So we go back to the apartment, right? And things uh, go well? Yeah, things. So they go back. How did you tell her, come back to my place? How did you bring <laughs> that up? For people who don't know, I know how to do that. <laughs> you know, I know how to do that. Dennis, I don't know about Dennis, but Wait, for what? people out there. I, wait, wait, wait. I blacked out. What were you saying? Don't black out the then next time. Now, dude, uh, <laughs> how, how did you tell her? Uh, so when we left the bar, come back so I can penetrate well, you. Um, not like that. Right. But what happened was, uh, the time at the bar, you know, kind of hit, you know, you hit a limit at the bar. It's like, okay, we've been here for uh, 45 minutes to an hour. I kind of want to move a little bit. So I was like, Hey, let's just walk around here, you know? And we start walking and we're just talking and talking. And I was like, uh, Actually, my place is not too far from here, so let's just get a bottle of wine and we can hang out at my place and talk instead of walking so much. This son of a bitch, so, dude. Uh, we yeah, we pick up um a bottle of eight dollar white wine, a Savon Blanc twenty twenty one, and it's really good, by the way. Why not black wine? Red wine. There's no black wine. There's no black wine. It's kind of racist. Why? <laughs> How's there no black wine? <laughs> 
Uh, I don't know, dude. It's it, fucked up. There's, I mean, I'm pretty sure there's blackberry wine or something. Okay. Maybe. I don't know. It's just rotten. Rotten? It's rotten fruit. That's what wine is. Rotten grapes are red Oh, wine. I thought you said black wine was rotten. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but keep going. See Anyways, uh, yeah, we go here um, and uh, Alejandro's in couch and... All right. The first question is, Hold Alejandro, on. was she the, attractive? The AC's on. Well, she's attractive. Hold on. Keep telling your story. People say they can't hear the AC on no, the we're podcast. Fine. Who gives a fuck? Yeah, who gives a fuck? Uh, we'll yeah, because I'm always hot as shit doing yeah, that. Yeah, we'll test it. it. We'll see yeah. if they can hear the AC. Comment if below can, if you can hear the AC. If you can hear the AC, Sick, this shit is free, myself. so fuck you. Yeah. If you want high production value, go to CNN.com or some shit. Russian dentist. YouTube. <laughs> So, anyways, um, we go into my room. We're watching a show, yada yada yada, and then like we leave. She leaves. She yada gets yada yada. Yada yada yada. What does yada yada mean? Use your imagination. And then, uh, holy shit, we we leave. And then I get a, a phone call from a hundred or like a text message rather. And you were saying, hey, we're at the club. You send me the address. Come over. Right. So I'm like really fucking tired because I'm old. And uh, I was like, I don't know if I want to go. But I was like, you know what, dude? You're only tw- in your 20s once. I don't want to look back. And you know what? Anything for the story. It sounds fun. And it's Dennis, Alejandro, Vidro, and Denny. So it's a larger group of people. It's a lot of fun. I was like, fuck it. So I uh, get ready and get an Uber. Fly over there. And of course, you. Br- here's what you do, by the way. A little hack. It's not really a hack. It's just like... Um, Usually you pregame, pregame, which is what you guys did. Uh, but I brought a bottle of vodka over there because I don't want to spend fifteen dollars on some fucking cocktail bullshit. Um, so me, Dennis, Vidro, and Danny are downing the bottle of vodka uh, with some chasers and just having fun shooting the shit. And then we uh, hit the club and start dancing. Uh, and yeah, I mean, uh, I think it was already like one thirty at that point, so we only really had like an hour, barely. Uh, and then we started walking outside. I wanted to get my ears pierced. So I saw this tattoo and piercing place. Yeah. What happened with that? I came uh, back and y'all were gone. Yeah. Well, so I was there, uh, and the guy was like, Hey, well, I'm getting off in like five minutes, Oh. but I got you DM uh. me and I'll just sit at my house. I live like a few what bucks away. What the fuck, fuck dude? I mean, uh, was your hair down and he thought you were a girl or what? That's no, 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 man. kind of weird, bro. I, okay, that's what I said. So I'm with Vidro and I was like, hey, I know I'm drunk, but I don't want to go to this guy's uh, place. You don't want to get your, cla- your cheeks clapped. Yeah, he was like, yeah, I'll do it for like 20 bucks. And he was like, yo, you got a deal. And Vidro was like, yeah, dude, it's fine. It's fine. I was like, I don't know if it's fine. It, you know, yeah, I mean, it, what if you use some AIDS needle, right? You're about to get like your that. cheeks clapped, dude. And yeah. uh, I, I, so I DM him and I was like, hey, you know, just let me know wherever the spot is. And I guess he never answered. He answered too late by the time we were already there. So, too late? Yes, too late because this is what happened. That's what he wanted, dude. Yeah. <laughs> so we're out. Uh, we're in front of the tattoo shop. Just, I guess, waiting for him to get the fuck out. And... Um, from my perspective, there's a group of three girls over there. And Dennis says, hey, uh, let's go. And he's talking to uh, the other guy, Denny. Is that, is that his name, Denny? It's Danny. 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 Daniel. But here, okay. I was talking to him. Well, hold on. Well, hold on. Let's, from let's, my perspective. Story. So this is from Phil's perspective anyway. So I see uh, uh, Dennis saying, come on, let's go. What the fuck? And Danny's like, all right, all right, all right. So Dennis leads the way. He's like, hey, and then Danny's like talking to the girls. And I see this random dude from afar kind of go behind Dennis and Danny and put his arms around it. He's like, hey, what's up? We're saying some stupid shit that I know didn't add any value to the environment. Right. Because as soon as he said that, the girls dispersed quicker than a fucking group of bees or some shit like that. But uh, uh, there, there's a cricket up there. That's why we hear cricket sound Holy effects. Holy shit. So... Is that a cricket? How the fuck is fuck a guy bro? in here, dude? I don't know, dude. <laughs> but the girls disperse and then they come back and I'm laughing my ass off. I'm like, haha. Dude, yeah, that's I'm annoying. Just... That cricket's annoying, dude. It's right in my ear. Should we uh, should we just fuck him up? Exterminate it? Get rid of it? Fuck him up. He's gonna keep doing that the whole podcast. That's fine. Hey, you shut the fuck up, bitch. Yeah, there it you did go. Qui- it did, it, it, it did, did stop. Quiet, so okay. All right. Keep going. So I mean the uh the girls disperse and then they come back and we're all just still waiting for the piercing guy to come out. But 
uh, the guy who like came in and, and fucked up the mood, I guess, um, came to our group and he was just saying some dumb shit. I'm not paying attention. I'm talking to Vidro and Danny, but I see like Dennis is talking to him. And then I just hear them screaming and he keeps saying like, I'm a millionaire. Right. I'm from LA. I got a mansion. Yeah. And I was, and then I turned around and I was like, oh, this is hilarious. I pull out my phone and start recording immediately. Yeah. I'm like, cause this is a stupid argument. This is this guy who's like five foot seven screaming. I'm a millionaire. I own a mansion. And I was like, why are you here then? Why are you here in fucking Hollywood Boulevard outside of this shitty fucking tattoo shop? Like, you should not be here if you're a millionaire. So <laughs> we're there. And if things keep escalating, Dennis is like, all right, what the fuck? You know, uh, and he's like, you don't got nothing. Right. You're a whack ass pussy or some shit like that. Yeah. Do you have your phone, dude? Let's play the video for like the camera. Okay, I think. we'll play the video here. Dude, literally the pound, no, bro. The only thing you fought, I will is knock you out. Drama, one hit, bro. You know dude, I, one hit, dude, I will I'm knock a, you I'm out. A, I'm knock coming to out. Tim right now. Knock who out? Knock who out? Anybody out? Anybody out? Knock who out right now, dude? Anybody out? Knock who out? Dude, anybody dude this guy trying to get fucking out. beat, dude. This guy trying to get beat. I'm in LA, bro. Don't fuck with me. I'm one millionaire. Nigga, I got millions, homie. I'm a millionaire, fool. I got a mansion. What the fuck you got? What the fuck you got? What the fuck you got? Tell I me what the fuck you got. I got everything, dude. You ain't got shit, nigga. Literally, I was No, fucking you ain't girl. got shit, nigga. You little punk ass I'm motherfucker. I got millions, fuck. nigga. I'm a fuck mama sucker. I'm a fuck. Say no. it again, say it again. You a sucker ass little punk ass. Literally, little I was shit, talking to you until you came. Shut the fuck up. I don't give a fuck about pussy. Fuck 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 all right, all right, all right, dude. Break it up, break it up. Fuck. What the fuck? <laughs> That's good, that's good. Dennis, Dennis, Dennis. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Yo, yo. Stop my fucking ass, dog, dude. No, 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 no. Dennis, Dennis. Dennis. Stop my fucking ass. Let's go, dude. I'm fucking up, my fucking ass. Let's go, dude. Are you fucking. Yeah, boy! Okay, yeah, yeah. And then, okay, video out. So keep going. So, yeah, so he's saying all that shit. And, uh, I mean, when Dennis pushes him, I was just like, oh, this is turning real. But the thing about it is, uh, this is going to make me sound like such a cock, but I was just like, it's just tiny people fighting. So, yeah. to me, it's just like, oh, no, no real damage can really happen. Like, worst case scenario, I'll, like, intervene. But I knew Dennis had it. It was just like, you know, this guy looked like a bitch, you know, and... um he starts fighting him like swinging and he drops his hat and everything. And I pick up the hat and I'm fucking recording. And I was like, Oh shit. And then Vidro and Danny are like, all right, let's fuck him up. You know, cause that's, they're backing up. Their that's friends. fucked up. Dude. That's <laughs> fucked up. Dude, I, so, I really, so okay. all of a sudden you just see three guys fucking wailing at this guy and that's, kicking that's him and shit. Up, and dude, I was like, Oh my God. And then I was like, all right, all right, let's fucking break it. Cause if I, there's no fight yeah, at that no point. Fight. Uh, so Vidra and Danny stop, you know, after they kind of, it's like, all right, they just want to make sure I guess the guy was down. And then he gets back up and I just see Dennis run into the middle of the fucking street with this guy and still swinging. And I'm trying to pull him back while I'm recording, which I, in retrospect, I should probably just record it. Uh, but I was just like, I don't want a car to fucking whoop around and just like hit everyone. Yeah. <laughs> but like Dennis is still fucking going and he's stumbling and everything. I was like, dude, it's over. So, um, then we come back, you know, like everyone regroups like at the corner uh, of the street and, um, it's like, all right, let's just head out. Fuck this tattoo guy. He's taking way too long. Uh, nobody knows where Alejandro is. <laughs> um, so the four of us are walking and we see behind us like a minute later, the guys walking, uh, like following us, not fast, but he's kind of like, I right. and the video starts saying, Hey, does he might have a gun or like a knife or some shit, bro. Cause he, he got like him and a couple other friends. Uh, and I was like, yeah, fuck that. So we all started just running. So we started running towards the apartment and then, uh, we got on a bird scooter, uh, skedaddle over here to the apartment. Once I get here, uh, I forgot. I Uber eat, eat, eat over eats. Uber Eats. That's what I said. Nice. There. Whatever. Uber I eats. fucking ordered food. I ordered a burger and fries. And in my head, because I'm very cheap, 
for the most part. So I'm like laying down in bed and I, I don't want to ever be one of those drunk people who forgets they order food and then they wake up and just see like the RIP, you know, the warm, delicious food. Right. right. Uh, so at 4.30 a.m., I wake up and I was like, dude, it was not a dream. I think I ordered food. So I go to the fucking front door. I open it and I see a drink with a greasy bag, you know, the brown paper bag filled with yeah. grease. And I was like, fuck yeah, I ordered it. So I open it, kill the fries, amazing fries. I'm eating like the triple, you know, patty from burger. Where from Wendy's? Where did you order from? Uh, fat burger. Fat burger, okay. Yeah, and it was bomb. And I'm eating that and I'm watching TV and I'm still a little bit drunk, so it tastes way better. Um, and I'm drinking water and I was like, you know what? It was a good night. It's a good Pretty night. fucking good night. Pretty good night. And, uh, today it hurts. Everything does. And I have a feeling in 10 years, I'm not going to be able to do this. It's like once a month or almost. To next month, we won't be able to do this. <laughs> All right. That is now this year. That was the end of, uh, Phil's uh, story. By the way, we already played the video of the, the fight. If I didn't explain that very well. So I guess the night from your perspective, when it started. You know what? Let me explain it very well. Okay. No, 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 no. Hold no, on, no, 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 I'm saying no, no, right no. now, if you're watching the podcast or you're listening to the podcast on Spotify or Apple, we're about to play the video of Dennis's fight and feel recording it now. So come watch it on YouTube. Okay. All right. Now we're done playing the video. All right, Dennis. So, so tell it from your from so the beginning of the day, dude. So beginning of the day? Yeah, to what we did, what happened. Uh, All right, then... You, um, you can start from when we were Uber eating, me and you. All right, so basically, you know, we woke up. Uh, We decided, you know, Steezy's not here. It's time to do fun shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yeah, we just... Uh, Phil was like, yo, let's just fucking let's go explore. So we, we drove to fucking downtown and shit. And we went to... Uh, what was that? We oh, went the, to the museum. The Grammy Museum. Yeah, Grammy Museum. I forgot how we did that that same day. Holy yeah. shit, we did a lot that day. Yeah, it was it was pretty fun. I mean, I liked it. Um, it was pretty fun. Uh, but I just had to go to work and shit. Um, so uh, yeah, and uh, me and Alejandro went DoorDash for like two hours and stuff, um, which was horrible, dude. Yeah. I mean, at the beginning it was okay. I liked it because we earned like well, like forty bucks in one hour, which yeah. is a lot. Yeah. yeah. I, dude, I used to earn eight dollars an hour, bro. Yeah, and you earn forty dollars. I don't know why people complain. That's a fucking good job. Yeah, I guess because you get no benefits and it's all fucked. But dude, I got no fucking benefits at eight dollars an hour. You think you get benefits at eight dollars an hour? Yeah, when I was working a subway for eight twenty five, if I broke a leg, I might as well have no job. Exactly, dude. You could play radio. You could play music. You listen to a podcast, and you're driving in Hollywood, just delivering orders. It gets it's annoying. So I've done like favor and postmates and it does get annoying, especially when you go to an apartment complex and you have to fucking double park and run in and you're like hoping your shit doesn't get towed or get a ticket. Okay. Yeah. It might get annoying after a while. Yeah. Uh, I mean the, the illusion of like, you know, driving around, listening to music. Oh, let me just, but it's it not as bad as a fucking real job. You have to show up and work eight hours, you know? Uh, yeah. I mean, there's pros and cons to everything, but yeah, I agree. This is it's like, if you do it part time, I'm pretty sure it's, it's fine. But you were saying Dennis, you had to work. Yeah, anyways, we worked for two hours, and then, uh, and then you know, we were like, I called everyone's like, yo, let's fuck it, Steezy's gone, let's just, you know, let's go. Dude, what's up with all this, what is Steezy being gone has nothing to do with us having fun or going it's out. It's I don't know why you, no, 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 I know what you both keep saying, Steezy's gone, let's no, go no, have fun. No, no, I'm just saying, it's like, we when Steezy's when, when right? here, you know, he always wants to work and shit, so we don't really, like, do fun stuff. Uh, no, no, we can. Well, yeah, he we, never we holds can. Us okay, back. yeah, we can, but, you know, it's always like, Nah, dude, I got a. I think it's re- recently just because he's been pouring his ass into this video. I guess yeah, that's true. Maybe yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, st- uh, I, I mean, this is nothing new. Yeah, it's no, we're, personality. Yeah, we're just like, dude, he's not necessarily a fun guy. Yeah, we're just we're just dude, fucking around. Okay, okay so. But anyway, has yeah. gone, so it's time to have fun. Fuck gone. Yeah. So <laughs> you know, we all uh, basically everyone come here. We pregame, you know, and um, we start going to the fucking uh club, dude, and that's when uh. Wait, explain pregame. Pregame. I, I want to kind of like, because I heard you all wild and out. Oh, basically, while we were pregaming, I was hearing Phil clapping cheeks, dude. Oh, but the only so thing, we figured out what the yada, yeah, yada, yada, yada yeah, man. I hear him. But the only thing what I didn't hear is a girl no, moaning. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. Now everyone so can Phil do was that. the one moaning. So it's like we like hear <laughs> moaning and we go in and it's Phil the one moaning. <laughs> what if it, what if, <laughs> <laughs> we're, like, we're like, damn, dude, Phil must be clapping her cheeks. She keeps yeah. moaning and so loud. Like, ah! Yeah, we go in and it's fucking Phil moaning. <laughs> okay. Yeah, dude, so we just uh, drink some White Claws and shit, and um, 
Yeah, dude, the balcony was was fucking spit half of it on in the on the balcony right there. And yeah, y'all were fucking. It's fucking Danny, dude. Uh, he fucking can't drink, dude. Um, but anyways, yeah, and yeah, we all got in the car, started driving to the clubs and shit. Started walking in. We went which for we went to this one club for like what like thirty minutes. We we stayed at the same club the whole night, dude. Shit, did we? It was the same well, one. I swore we went outside. Well, no, we went outside, but we got in through another door, which oh. I guess. It okay. might have seemed like a different club, but it was the same one. So we go to the club, you know, Alejandro. Typical Alejandro. Well, it was a bar. A bar. Typical Alejandro. He gets his fucking fishing rod, whatever it's called, dude. Fishing he rod. just starts fishing, dude. He talks to every... He walks in, he starts trying to talk to every fucking girl. That's good. Well, uh, I mean, every good, girl dude. that I think I can smash, which <laughs> turns out to be zero, but keep going. <laughs> <laughs> By the end of the night, yeah. it'll be zero. But yeah. okay, let's so, go. Uh, and then I was like, yo, let's, you know, it's okay. It's, uh, I mean, I yeah, was we're like, just out there having fun. Yeah, we just had fun. So I was like, yo, let's, let's try to go to another club. So, so we, we and Alejandro start walking to this club, to another <laughs> club, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, dude, and there was, so apparently there, you have to be like reservation and shit. Right, you have to be like a VIP too. So table. then Alejandro, you know, start pull, being Alejandro, he meets this fucking guy. And then that guy tells the security, is like, uh, yo, like, my friend has a table. My friend has a table, and then she goes like, "Is those two with you?" And Alejandro's like, "I mean, dude, if you wanna, you know." Yeah, help he us. said, "Yeah, they're with me." We're like, "Oh shit, dude, yeah. this guy's gonna let us in with him to a VIP table." Yeah, but then you know the security guy basically security guard didn't want to, dude. Yeah, he didn't want to. Like the guy, because the security guard, hey, are these two guys. So I was talking to the guy outside. I'm like, "Dude, how do you get in?" He's like, "I don't know, man." And then so we walked to the security guard, and the security guard said, "You need a VIP table." And the guy said, "Oh, my friend has one. He's inside." And then security guard's like, are these two guys with you? And he's like, yeah. And we're like, oh, shit, okay. Yeah. But the security guard's like, no, I'm not going to let you all in. It's like, Why? you maybe, but not he them being a bitch, dude. Gonna He didn't want, I guess, he kind of saw that we weren't really with him. But, uh, I mean, the guy was trying to get us in, but I guess security guard was just being a bitch. Yeah. Just something. Yeah. But, I mean, whatever. Yeah, and then... Uh, then Phil comes, dude. He brings the fucking bottle. I don't know. At that point, I don't remember where the fuck Alejandro was. I think he went back to the same club. And then, then we start pre-gaming outside by the yeah, club, dude. That shit was too intense, by the way, because we had, a, like, the, the bottle of vodka, Deep Eddie's flavored raspberry vodka. Oh, yeah. yeah. And Wait, I where did you get that? It was here. Yeah, it was here. I think yeah. Jimmy Zhang left that here. Okay, yeah. From the fight. Dude, that bottle's like three months old. I mean, it's in our circulation, yeah, blood circulating, fuck yeah. a fucking poison. Yeah, I know. But we, dude, we fucking, dr dude, that was so much. And Vidro was trying to get me to drink more. And I was like, dude, I remember the last, because I visited Austin a few weeks ago. And right. I went out with one of my friends <laughs> a Saturday night. And we're so cheap. So it's like, hey, let's buy a $24 bottle of vodka. But he was like, or we can get the $28 bottle of vodka. And it's like, xl basically <laughs> damn so we got it and it was three of us and one of us was driving so he's like no i don't want to drink so between the two of us we drank enough alcohol to put down an african elephant which was not good and it reflected obviously later in the night because i blacked out and that's the only time in my life i blacked out literally you're this is what blacking out feels like you're like you know it had dancing you're like oh fuck yeah and then you wake up. What the dude. fuck? Dude, that's so dude, weird, dude, bro. That's so, so weird. Many times, dude. And then like in in whenever you try to remember, you're like, what the fuck happened? And then I was what like, okay, I remember dancing. And then you hear like, you have like little flashes of memories, like fragments. Right. So you like think, I was just like, okay, I remember I was making out with a girl. Are you sure it was a girl? I don't know, dude. To be honest, at this point, it had a wig on. <laughs> so it, it was, uh, I was making out with a creature. And, um, and then all of a sudden I remember being over the bed like this, just like, like leaning over the edge of the bed. Like, like Oh, throwing up. Yeah. And then I woke up and then, uh, yeah. When my friend came like in the morning, he was like, you don't remember what happened? I was like, no, what happened last night? And I look around the fucking hotel bed and there's throw up. Like I was a fucking sprinkler dude. And right. just literally 360 degrees around the bed. It was painted with my vomit. Which, by the way, I had brisket earlier that afternoon. So, what if you had woken up next to a six-two black guy, buff as fuck? <laughs> what would what would be your first thought? He's still sleeping. You wake up. What would be yeah. your first thought? That would be yeah. I would, I would, I would go like probably the first noise to come out of my face would be, huh, huh, okay. 
guess I'm not racist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd be like, you know what? One for the for the what? For the human beings. Yeah. Because yeah. everybody's equal. All right, uh, so let's keep going. Then I just don't understand. Every time I say something, you guys fucking interrupt me. And no, no, but as a podcast, we bounce up and then we right. always come back to it's branches. It's no, branches. No, just, all right, fine. We're a tree. Um, we're, we're a tree. Anyways, dude. Uh, yeah. So we go back. Then we all, all pregame outside, dude. Well, I mean, I was already fucking drunk, dude. Like, freak, fucking drunk. So we walk we into the club. We meet Alejandro. All of us just start fucking dancing, dude. Like me yeah. and Phil were just fucking. Dude, going, Phil dude. was jumping so fucking high. Dude, I was trying. I, I was, hit my head. He almost hit the ceiling. Dude, no, I hit my head. He his hit his head. His was like, and one of them he pushed the me. Let me throw it in my gut. Sorry, sorry. No, anyways, dude, <laughs> I jumped twice out of the stage. There was like a little stage. Oh, and I was yeah. like, yo, boys, catch me, catch me, dude. Dude, no one's gonna catch you, dude. Why are you doing? It? I'm like, dude, why the fuck is this dude, guy trying to jump? Do. Um. I fucking caught him because I saw his fucking head opening up, like get hitting the ground. If mm-hmm. I wasn't there, I was just like, I look around and literally no one's waiting <laughs> yeah, to no catch, one's him. Gonna catch him. <laughs> fucking Jones. Yeah, dude, and um, and then, yeah, dude. After that, dude, we, I mean, was what time? What time was the club cut? Because the music just stopped working, dude. And then we all started walking. That's where. I'm, I what mean, time I was don't that? Know, I mean, like, like two o'clock. Probably three, honestly. Three dude. o'clock. Yeah, and then we start walking back home, but Danny, he was like. Let, let me just fix the story but Danny told me he's like dude please let's go let's go talk to those girls so I, th- I was like dude okay I mean uh, this guy needs to get laid dude I mm-hmm. see he wants to have a fucking sex and none, <laughs> th- and none of you guys backing him out so I was like okay dude I'm gonna go t- I'm gonna ho- go help talk to talk you to them but like I'm not hitting on them dude and so like that's when we start chasing those fucking chicks and shit and yeah. then and then we stop at this fucking light one of her friends was at the light and then those other girls they crossed it they had time enough time to cross it so i'm standing there with this chick and i'm start talking to her and i was like hey you know my friend over here you know thinks you're cute and stuff like that you know we start talking to her and then apparently she starts saying yeah my friend lost her phone and stuff like that and then that's when we cross the street and i go back to those girls right right and i was like yo did you guys find the phone they sell and then he was with me and um uh, and that's when the dude comes in right so he started like he put hand on my shoulder and he's like talking start talking shit dude uh not talking shit he's just talking weird girls start getting weirded out so they start coming moving closer to me dude and then uh then he says something about sex dude and that's when girls walked away dude mm-hmm. true right. story i'm not lying i saw your eyes yeah, uh, i mean he was a weirdo i'm pretty sure well, i'm saying at the beginning you said the girls stuff. started talking to you but now as you're telling it it seemed like well that's uh, now I mean, now okay, we know fine, fine, that fine, the girl yeah. got alone by herself well, but dude, i didn't want to sound like her. you know i'm fucking talking no to it's girl. still the truth dude. i mean dude, but i did you know i wasn't hitting i was like yo you guys found the phone yeah, you're just talking like about phones technology yeah, trying to be nice and then yeah, nice, danny you're was a nice with, guy yeah danny was with me and stuff i was like okay maybe just relax hey whoever's watching a chance one of them what huh a chance one of them what uh you know maybe <laughs> fucks him dude fox him okay yeah, mm-hmm. exactly and so uh so is that g- all love is sex there's mm-hmm. no getting nah, to know each other anymore i hope so <laughs> i mean not i mean no not right. really but um anyways yeah the girls the girls gets weird out he start walking away this motherfucker start following me dude uh why was I, he following you i don't fucking know he was just like he was sucking sh- keep sucking shit something and then he's just like and I was like, okay, dude, fuck off, bro. So I started walking to you guys. Um, <laughs> you fell and we drawn Yeah, yeah. Then he was already gone by the time. And um, so, yeah, we're all standing there and the dude comes into me. He starts saying, saying some weird fucking shit, dude, um, and stuff. Um, so I was like, I'll knock anyone out. Yeah, I'm knocking anyone out. I was like, who are you going to fucking knock out? I was like, he's like, dude, I fucked all the girls. And I was like, <laughs> dude, the only girl you fuck is your grandma, dude. Damn. And, uh, you know, I, said, I told him that and he's like, basically yeah at the end he just said uh he basically pissed me off dude because i was already drunk and i drink vodka dude and when i drink vodka i get really yeah angry, the russian dude. comes out of you i just i just <laughs> dude, I, like i would like i'm getting really angry it's like dude. dude he's that's like the hulk dude if you give dennis <laughs> vodka this real russian comes out yeah i just dude i get so happy right. i get so happy when i drink there's some people that like are on no, I mean, the alcohol's happiness yeah. i don't know why all this shred edge and like sober bullshit i don't know who keeps Damn. saying all this stuff dude but Damn. alcohol pretty good dude if you cry when you drink by the way you're the worst kind of drunk you're worse than the angry drunk <laughs> i used to have a cousin every time this bitch drank so, <laughs> so, so what does alcohol do like i don't understand uh i didn't think <laughs> I, I i mean it uh why do people react so different like it doesn't unlock memories like i don't understand what 
Like well, blacking out, you mean? No, no, just in general. Like when people well, that's drink, a good question. some people get happy, some people get mad, some people get sad. No, I, I heard that basically when um before you start drinking and whatever you think, like before you start drinking, like the old day that you think about something, um, and when you get drunk, basically you you do those stuff. Let's say like uh, like if I'm gonna like before I start drinking, like dude, I'm gonna get in a fight with someone, right? I'm gonna get in a fight with someone, and then you basically when you get drunk, you just start talking shit to people, and then that's when you, you know like. And when you're happy, dude, and when you drink, you're just going to be happy. Uh, All right. That's how, that's how I know. That's like, that's how it basically works for me sometimes when I was like, okay, dude, I'm probably going to do stupid shit, dude. And when I get drunk, dude, because I like, I, while I'm drinking, I'm thinking about it. Yeah. And then your memory just pretty likes to that point. And then when you, yeah. Yeah. I've never drank when I'm like angry or sad. Yeah, like well, it's usually oh, just like okay. going out and having fun. So he might be right. Uh, All right. Yeah. Russian science. But yeah, anyways, uh. So I start, so me, so he said something, he started calling me names and shit, basically disrespecting me. I, I, I fucking push him. You're a punk ass bitch. Yeah. I was like, I, pun, I, I basically push him and I was like, okay, dude, we're fucking going. So I started fucking going with him. And dude, for the reason I just didn't understand why the fuck we and Danny jumped on it, dude. Maybe he was beating you up. No, he, dude, I was winning the whole fucking fight, literally winning the whole fight, dude. Right. And then, uh. And then I, I, like, and I, while we, like, we stopped with this at the light, we were fighting at the light, dude, and I see Vidro fucking hitting, too, so I fucking grab him, dude, and I throw him on the floor, just right. to wait for him to protect them. you throw no, him on no, the floor, just so you, could, wait, you know, yeah, dude, so you can protect them. dude, I called the body, dude, and I fuck him up, bro, they right. need to find someone else, dude. Yeah, find their own guy to beat up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly, <laughs> so I fucking throw him away from them, dude, and, uh, start fucking hitting him, dude, in the head, dude, like, fast as fuck, dude. Right. And then Phil's like, stop, 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 stop. Uh, yeah, because a basic, the reason why I said that is because I saw Danny Vidro, like, kicking him in the No, that was, that, was, that was after I stopped Fucked hitting up. him. That was after I started hitting him. Because, yeah. dude, when I get in a fight and I start, like, fucking hit people, right. when I'm drunk, dude, I just don't stop until someone gets and grabs me away, dude. I'm just going to keep fucking pushing on the person and, like, and fight him, dude. And yeah, uh, I mean, he was way too drunk. Like, to basically, once Dennis was, like, willing him, uh, I mean, every there has to be a sensible person. And it's just like there's not a fight anymore. Now you're just like yeah, yeah. yeah. So I s- we both were fucking drunk, dude, at that point. And uh, <laughs> anyways, yeah, dude, he stands up off the floor, uh, and he started talking shit again. I was like, hey, bro, let's yeah, fucking I go <laughs> again. Let's fucking go again. At that point, me and him like walking, just like like he backing out, and I keep pushing him, dude. Like no, he's like backing out because I'm going on him, like I'm about to beat him up again. Right, and then. And he just keeps going into fucking middle of the street, dude. And the cars are fucking honking, dude, while I'm hitting him. I was like, yeah, beat him up, beat him up, fuck him up, fuck him up. Woo! Everyone's like happy as fuck, dude. Uh, yeah, dude. And th- I got him on the floor again. And that's, I don't remember what the fuck happened. Did you like grab me away or what? Yeah, I mean, I was grabbing you away and pushing you. But I I, could, I only had one arm because I was trying to record it. Yeah, I know. Which in retrospect, I should have just fucking recorded it. So, yeah. Because, and- um, but yeah, then... I guess like you came back and everything went back to normal. Yeah, and then we basically just my hand was bleeding, dude. My yeah, knuckles were bleeding. I don't know, like Damn. where you cut yourself, because uh, you also had a cut like in your palm. Oh yeah, I think this one, this one, in my and this end is when I like when I dr- drop him on the floor. That's what happened, and I think I like scratched it. But this, the knuckles, I think when I was hitting him in the fucking head, dude. That's yeah. what I think that happened. But Damn. um, but yeah, dude. We, then we just. We start going home, dude. Uh, I was bleeding and shit, and then Phil got the fucking scooter, dude, and uh, we scooted all the way back to the house. Did, yeah. did he hit you once at no, all? No, he didn't hit me. He any. never hit you? Yeah, he never hit me. Dude, dude. he didn't land shit, dude. He didn't land anything. He didn't land fuck dude, I just went so, on him. Just fast that's as why fuck, That's so funny, like, seeing it. Because the guy was, like, I don't even know, like, where he was mentally, <laughs> but it was so funny to watch from an observer's point of view. Right. Because I saw Dennis land a couple... Of, first of all, landing a punch is really hard. Yeah. But especially when... It, that guy was like... I don't know where he was punching. He was like... He did... I remember him throwing a punch and he went like... he Next to Dennis. It was like he was punching a, an invisible person next to Dennis or something. Yeah. And I was like, dude, this is hilarious. It was so funny to watch. I was like... <laughs> dude, I was like fucking laughing the whole way through. So, yeah. That's how... Yeah, we got home and... uh I think you start taping my fucking fingers. I did. Dude. No, I yeah. taped it. I think that's what I remember. Yeah, because you're like, hey, my. I think my fingers are broken. Right. So I put like two plastic spoons or something like that. Yeah. In, so you, and and wrapped it up. So you all came back home. You taped them up, and then you, you know tapped the them up. Then I tapped them out. Did y'all make it. out or what happened? Just to celebrate, not like not in a gay way, just to celebrate that. Uh, the fuck, dude. <laughs> that you won. What do you think this is, dude? <laughs> 
fucking Pornhub school, dude. dude. What if as Phil t- like, you know, like, you come back, dude, you're sweating, you know, you're like, your hand's bleeding. Yeah. Phil says, here, put some ice on it, right? <laughs> he's taping you up. And they all just look at each other, dude. How he's like, <laughs> Phil's taking care of you. <laughs> and then uh, y'all make out. You know? Okay. Yeah. Uh, how about we just start your story? <laughs> that, 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 <laughs> that would be funny if that had happened. Uh, uh. Um, all right. I mean, I guess from my perspective. So, um, yeah, I mean, we go to the Grammys Museum and we make Dennis a promise that we're going to Uber eat with him for one hour. We do not. Because. Uh, That's already false. Because. <laughs> because he. I know what you're doing. He didn't want to go That's to the false. Gra- no, it's Grammys. False. It's false. So we're like, hey, dude. Let's just enjoy being here, being present. He's like, but I got to go do Uber Eats. And we're like, you know what? We'll help you. That way it's faster. Oh, right or wrong, annoying. Dennis? Uh, that was correct. That was correct. We told him we were going to help him for one when, did, when the fuck did we say, hey, I promise to Uber? First of all, you yeah, said- I'll it. remember. This is what happened. I, I was like, dude it's, uh, dude, it's getting close. We just see Daniel just go, dude, because uh, it's going to take a... And now I want to get back home, dude, and I want right. to go on DoorDash, dude. And it uh, feels like, dude, I pro- dude, watch. How about... Me, me and Alejandro will DoorDash with you for an hour. I yep. did not say that. Yep. Yeah, you I did, did not say yep. that. And, uh, and it he was, said that. Nope. And then we're going to go to Grammys just for a little bit and then we go back home and Ex- we'll help you DoorDash. I mean, exactly. it doesn't matter what I say at this point. I mean, dude, there's, there's two people telling you you said that. It doesn't matter. dude. The, How does that not matter? Because the top scientists thought at one point the we're Earth We're not flat. scientists. Okay. First of all, dude. No, exactly. Which is so, even more of a point on my behalf. And we're not talking about the Earth. Dude. No, so I, have excellent, I have excellent memory. So, so what happened is me and Phil both promised Dennis. No, hey, dude. you promised him. No, no, we both did. No, uh, false. So we both promised Dennis, like, hey, dude, we'll help you DoorDash if you, you know, just be present here with us at the Grammys and just enjoy stuff. So afterwards, uh, you know, Phil changes his mind. He wants to go home and just be on his phone. But I was like, dude, you know what, dude? Uh, I was raised to be a man of my word. I was raised that when I say something, I do it no matter what. If I, if I tell you I promise something, I always do it no matter what. So I was this like, damn, I can't believe uh, Phil's... Uh, dude, what's up with your this phone, dude? No, Adrian. Lying. Adrian, is Fuck Adrian, Adrian dude. Pay attention to me, dude, all right? Pay attention <laughs> to him, dude. What's going on here, so, dude? Uh, Why are you trying to smell my ass? <laughs> yeah, stop smelling his ass. It's too late. <laughs> so you broke his promise. So I'm like, okay, Dennis, you know what, dude? I'll help you. Because that's how I roll, dude. Mexicans like me, dude, keep their promise. That's how we race. So I was like, all right, dude. We go do Uber Eats. Wait, um, wait, wait, wait. That Mexican uh, that I fucked, uh, fuck, like, not nah, fuck. What the <laughs> fuck? Not nah, fuck, not nah, fuck, not nah. fuck. I mean, like, the like, fuck bro? him up. Like, fight him. Like, fight him. Yeah. He said he's going to beat me up, but, you know, he didn't. He wasn't you know. Mexican, dude. He was born here, dude. I'm talking about from the mountains, raised with beans, grown in the soil. Raised with beans. Exactly. Grown in the soil. Um, so then we go Uber Eats, dude, which, by the way, it's kind of cool at the beginning because we get to explore Hollywood. We're driving around uh you know dennis like oh shit we got an order for 15 dollars i'm like 15 dollars damn in like 20 minutes that's a lot of fucking money uh and then um i mean dennis has this whole system where we go to beverly hills which i don't know if that system's correct but i want to argue i was like okay dude i'll just trust your system and then we get an order for six dollars and dennis is like should we get this one and i was like "Ah, i don't think so i think we should wait for another one but then is like let's get it so we get that order. I drop off Dennis to the restaurant, and guess what happens? What happens? The donuts. We wait 40 minutes, dude. Dennis is in there for 40 minutes. For a $6 order. Yeah, I guess the restaurant wasn't ready. Uh, is that a thing that happens? Well, my system, when I used to do like Postmates in favor and all that, yeah. was like, um, if the order is not above $10, I'm not going to fucking take that shit. Unless... It's like a midnight order and it's a gas station order. Okay. Because those are easy. Like there's always like, hey, can you get me like, I don't know, some fucking apple juice and cigarettes. Like that's such an easy thing in and out. Um, Yeah. Because the cheap ones, first of all, they're not going to fucking tip you more than the thing. And I was like, "Uh, best case scenario, I earn a $2 tip and it's all the way. So fuck this order. I'll get the next one. So why are you getting orders that are $6? No, no. So basically this is how it works. Um. You only need to get like you can get six dollar order if it's close to the to the house, right? Uh, cause like there's some that's the orders are like six dollars and you have to fucking drive all the way fucking West Hollywood. That's fucking thirty minutes. So you right. basically like you gotta like finesse the system. So you, you wanted to get the most money and as close as you can. 
Because then if I like, if let's say the order is like two miles away, right? So I pick up the, and then the house is like two miles away and it's like $10, dude. You do it quick and then, because uh, then you get, and you do more in two hours than anyone else, right? Okay. I mean, yeah. is that a, is that a good system or just wait for big orders? Uh, Cause I guess it depends. I mean, I haven't done it in a minute. I used to do Postmates and Favor at the same time. So two delivery systems, literally at the same Damn, time. Damn, dude, why don't you do that? So uh, here's what I would do. What? Do this Postmates and Favor at the same time? Uh, dude, I, I can't do Postmates because they would fucking Uber. And since uh, my car is not registered in Los Angeles and my license is not in Los Angeles, then uh, I basically can't do it. You have to, like, if you're working for, because since they basically Uber owns them and shit. And um, yeah. Oh, dude. they did buy them. Yeah, for Yeah, dude. That. And uh, so you, but in, basically, if you want to work for Uber, you have to have the state license where you live okay. and the fucking car register and shit like that. All right. Yeah. How come you're just in Beverly <coughs> Hills? Like, have you tested other areas? Uh, Beverly Hills um, is the best area to do it because rich people live there yeah. and they always tip you a lot. Okay. And everything is close there. It, like, it's so close to each other. And um, that's why I try. I mean, I try to do West Hollywood, but fucking people from Eaglewood Asking yeah, 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 yeah. No, and I, know, like, I know what you mean. And it's like ten, like it's like f- eight bucks, and it's twenty minute drive. Fuck that, dude, I'm not doing no, it. No, no, right. he's right. He's right in that because in Wayho, like I'll order because I'm a dick. You know, I'll order something from like Santa Monica. What? Yeah. You, what have you ordered from Santa Monica? Uh, Carl's Jr. or some shit like that. Like, and it's how like, much do you tip? I assume you tip a lot, right? You're a big 800. tipper. Eight hundred dollars. Eight hundred dollars. Yeah. All right, Damn, dude. That's Is that good. enough? You know yeah. what? That's good. Make sure when you order, <laughs> I'm gonna turn my DoorDash at <laughs> the same time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, you were saying, so you're. Oh yeah. So uh, I mean, uh, I told Dennis not to get this order. He got this six dollar order. We park, and we wait for forty minutes. And I call him like, "Hey, dude, isn't there like a rule? Like, if you wait more than ten minutes, you can cancel." Yeah, you can cancel order. No, 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 no. You can't cancel. You can't cancel order. You ba- because then uh, DoorDash can send you a fucking block message, or they can basically like block you for a week and you can or for two weeks to not do DoorDash. Because if you approve the for the order, it's basically like this is like you go. T- you basically this is what happens, <coughs> right? Uh, you were working restaurant, right? But you can't send a message like, "Hey, dude, this no, no, order's yeah, taking forty no, minutes." Yeah, I, no, I can't no, be you, fucking here. Yeah, but you can't cancel. You can text them and be like, "Hey, the store taking forever." Blah blah. But you can't cancel it. Because like, you already approved it and you're already at the restaurant waiting Sometimes for Sometimes what I used to do, I would text him, hey, if you cancel and order again in 30 minutes, it'll be faster. Of course, I was lying. Because I want to get the fuck off the order. Right, you should, you should have lied. Because then. it's so, also like when you cancel the orders, yeah. DoorDash, like, prom- like they put you a little bit down so you get less orders. It's basically like, oh, yeah, you okay. want to have yeah, like... Cause, yeah, there's a whole provable shit. Yeah, that is true. But well, anyways, dude, we're in there fucking... 40 I'm minutes. 40 minutes, yeah, dude, for sucked. $6? No, that ruins it, dude. Suck, I was like, Because dude. what? Here's the thing. How much did you get tipped Um, for that order? For like, like two bucks, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like anything... Because you have to think about it like from percentage base. I, I got super analytical with it because I made pretty good money at some point. And it's like, if the order is less than $10, like 20% is a good tip. It's a pretty fat tip, to be honest. Right. So most people don't tip that, first of all. So best case scenario, if I get a $8 order, what's 20% of $8? Yeah, $1.60. Um, it's uh, 20%. Of, hold on. 20% of $8 would be $16. Oh, my God. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, of Wait course, it's $180. It's one sixty, dude. One, I said one fifty nine. Okay, it's one. Yeah, one. So, anyways, I'm like, okay, the amount of gas wear and tear in the car, my time, and all this other bullshit. Well, I could potentially get something better. It's right. not worth a dollar yeah, sixty yeah. for the max out tip. Yeah. So you start making rules like that. You know, exactly. even like fifteen or less. Sometimes it's just like. I don't know if I want to fucking take that. Obviously, when you're starting the night, all right, thirteen dollar order, twelve dollar order, that's yeah. fine. Um. But yeah, dude, fuck anything under ten dollars. Well, dude, why don't you turn it on right now? Why don't you? You're in that that place. You turn it on. And you get a fifteen dollar order. You just do it. You get the car and you pick it up, and you're here at the apartment. What? Let's say you turn on DoorDash right now, right? Yeah. And you get an order that's twenty dollars. Why don't you go do it right now? Dude, so that's what dude, I'm saying. Like, wouldn't that be a good idea? So Instead ma- of driving around trying to like dude, waste gas like, and it's doing like, all- it's like. 
No, cause dude, um, that's not how it's like. Basically, watch. I see here, right? And uh, I see I get a order like six bucks, dude. Right? No, no, that's, I'm saying twenty dollars. I mean, dude, there's like fifteen percent chance you're ever gonna get one. No, no, but I'm order. saying you only wait for the twenty dollars orders since you're here. You but can then, do yeah, but stuff. then your your fucking things dropping down your percentage of. Oh, how much so you have to like pick up. As yeah, a, oh, like okay. the, I barely like so like, uh. Like if there's like a six like box and never like I just I was like too far I always press it too far dude but you like you ha- sometimes you have to put it because you don't want your percentage dropping low. Um, and shit oh like. okay. Is there like a stupid system dude? You basically have to watch dude. Like watch if a water is fucking eight dollars dude, and it's fucking like ten miles away to deliver him. Is it worth it eight bucks to to spend the gas to drive ten minutes? Yeah. But I mean like ten miles. Right. That's ten miles as well. Like fucking forty minutes in L.A. And I mean yeah. Yeah, so like you know, you gotta you gotta like watch the fucking mileage, how much gas you spend. Cause yeah. I I got the six dollars, cause it was so close to the house. It was like four. It was like uh like one mile, like two miles max. Right. And it was I was like fuck it, I'll, it's a fuck. It's probably gonna be our last order anyway. So I was like, let's grab the six dollar order. And uh, definitely was not gonna be our last order. Yeah, dude, it was, it was eight a.m. We were gonna stop at nine. Yeah, dude, they're they're fucked. Yeah, I was I was like, dude, where the fuck is the order? I tell him like three times, and he was like, dude, yeah, we're like we're so busy <coughs> right now, fucking booked. And uh, I was like, like everyone got before me. Like that dude, I came first, and that dude that came later. And then he got his order before me. I was like, dude, what the Damn. fuck? I mean, I'll tell you why. Because that uh, sucks, they dude. look down on, on delivery people because it's like, oh, fuck them because they take a percentage off. So it's oh. like less margin. Uh, when a restaurant was being a dick. Uh, I mean, dude, I have very little patience. I didn't realize that like going back. I'd be like, hey, I want to pay as a customer. And I would just have favor refund me. Mm. be like let's be like i would almost call it out and be like hey i want to pay it you know fuck this order let me do it and um because i would recognize restaurants who do that bullshit they'd be like oh let's make them wait do so they like, ask you or hey are you delivery or are you it's a favor or something like that just so they can like be like because i guess they have a separate section <coughs> and i'll sometimes i'll even go with the shirt and stuff like that wait so you order there or does the app order no for no it? like it's basically of? people order it but you, you like, let's say like you order fucking Uber, right? To go so you, to somewhere. So you can, but like at least when I did it, you can have shit refunded in case a card doesn't work for no, you. Okay. You just have to take a picture of the receipt and shit like that. Well, um, it never happened to me. No, like for for DoorDash, it's basically they already paid everything. They're just picking it up. Yeah, you're just picking it up and taking it. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyways, we're not even towards the end of the night <laughs> with your yeah. story. Yeah, I mean, so... As then it's in there, I'm like, dude, this motherfucker's taking, like, it's already, like, 10 minutes. And I call him, like, hey, dude, can you fucking cancel this? Like, and then it's like, nah, man, my score goes down. Uh, you can't cancel. I would have canceled that after 20 minutes. Even if your score goes down, dude, I, overall. No, no, no. Yeah, dude, that, I would have canceled after 10 dude, minutes. It's, it's, dude, that's how it works. It's like, it's, it's But he's hard. like, I might get banned for a week. So, I was like, okay, banned for a week. I mean, I don't understand the system. I was like, okay, all right, we'll just wait. Maybe it's almost done. So, I have to take a piss. And I'm parked on the street. And it's night. It's like 8 p.m. So it's the sun's going down. So I see a bottle of, uh, an empty bottle of uh, vitamin water. And I'm like, all right. You know, the, the circle on the top is big enough. You know, <laughs> I can take a piss there. So I go to the back seat, right? And I see this dude walking by. And I'm, I have my dick out, right? And I'm trying to piss in the bottle. And I know the the, win, the car windows are tinted, right? I'm like, I ah, probably can't see shit because it's tinted. Like you, you, can, you can't see, but you have to put your head next to the window to see something, right? So he's passing by looking at me. He's like, oh, maybe he's like trying to steal the car because it's on. Maybe he's trying to see some shit. And I'm taking a piss. And after I finish taking a piss, you know, I close it and I open the door to drop the bottle. Oh, in the trash kit. Recycle it. No, I put the bottle on the street, okay? Because there's no trash can. I can't leave the car alone. But as I opened the door, I realized the window was down. And I couldn't see because it was night, but the window was down the whole time. Because <laughs> I, I, go, I go to open the door and I'm like, wait, there's no fucking window here. That is hilarious. So he probably saw me take a piss. That's why he was staring the whole time. Yeah. Like, what the fuck is this guy doing? <laughs> and that is hilarious. And I thought the window was up. All right, fast forward. You have so I mean, yeah. Dash. Then uh, I'm like, dude, this Uber eats shit. It's uh, DoorDash. It's is good if you know how to do it. I mean, it's still worth it than getting paid eight dollars an hour. Uh, so then me and Dennis come back. He's promising he's gonna do something that he didn't do. We're not gonna talk about that. Uh, 
But you know what? I don't know how. I guess Russians don't are are not men of their words. I guess only Mexicans who were born in the mountains have men of their words. Costa Ricans, no words. Uh, Tunisian bitches, dude. I met this guy from <laughs> Tunisia, dude. Has no word, dude. He he promises things, never delivers. Who are you talking about? This Tunisian friend that we have, dude, that never keeps his word. <laughs> and to me, it's so weird. To me, like I can't believe that people break their word. To me, it's like, how can you do that? I'm like. I don't understand why people promise something and they don't do it. To me, that's impossible. Like, I don't understand how people are comfortable by telling you, hey, I'm going to do this. And then they don't do it. Because I'm like, dude, you know. Well, like, I don't understand. Like, it's okay. just to me, it's unfathomable. Oh, how someone can tell you big word. they're going to do something. And then they just say, oh, I don't want to do it anymore. Okay, I'm glad you said that. I'm like, what so the So next fuck? podcast, I'm going to show you. Because I'm already pulling what out. What are you going to show me? What are you going to show me? I'm going to pull the bullshit from Alejandro's vault. What, what bullshit? Where it's contrasting that. No, what we'll bullshit? wait till next podcast. I mean, I, I mean, there's certain instances, dude. Ah, I'm so sure, now sure, there's I'm a sure, tapestry. I'm sure that was a good okay, reason. Okay, dude. You went on this whole speech. Mexico, You're not going to be able to find anything, dude. Never, never You're not going to be able to find anything. You can try. You're probably going to try for hours. No. You're not going to find anything. It'll be very quick. No, it won't. Yeah. Okay, I'll time. Time, how, time it. How long it takes you to find something. <laughs> and you won't. Watch. He's, this is what you're going to say next podcast. It's probably in a hard drive. I live back at home. Yeah, I couldn't find anything. But yeah, there's some things you did. Hey, guys. What's up? It's motherfucking Alejandro. I'm going to be at 10K sus by so-and-so day. That's not I'm a gonna... promise, dude. That's a goal. Dude, there's a difference between the promising someone up, and dude. saying, hey, I'm going to be a millionaire by next year. Huge difference. What, dude? But anyways, let's keep... Dude, there's a huge difference. You can't tell me those are the same thing. Okay, dude. So you're saying about keeping your word. Now, if you're breaking Literally your word said. to yourself, that's even worse. Who's, I didn't break the word to myself. Yes, you did. No, I did it, dude. Multiple that's times. the universe not giving me 10K <laughs> subscribers, dude. That's the universe not giving me 10K <laughs> subscribers. Uh, but anyways, dude, so then... uh, Yeah. I think... Oh, yeah. Then, then I come back to the couch. Then it goes do something... And I, I went to get my keys. I, went, I drove back to that fucking restaurant and looked for my keys. No, I told you they were here. That Phil took them. I didn't. I did. I thought like I texted Phil and Phil never responded. Dude, I, I like, told you Phil took them. I, I'm on left. It. So why? I drove, so did I drove all the, the way back. The no, I told you Phil took them. Yeah, why wouldn't I have them? I didn't fuck. Fuck, dude. Well, I oh fucked up. Oh my god. Anyways, uh, I'm sitting on the couch and I see Phil walk in with a girl. Not the best. I mean, dude, Phil six, one barely oh, but i'll let it slide dude he's like six no, feet something i'm but like, i'll give him six one just i'm barely six two no no we measured him dude. anyways who gives a fuck? Who gives a fuck? i'm barely six feet. you know we're what? shorter than we're shorter than phil he's gonna pull that how tall are you shut the fuck up okay anyways doesn't matter you care doesn't matter basically you care. Dude, basically dude according to phil's height he should be getting way hotter women than he brought in but you know what i understand it's uh, Halloween's coming up. Uh, <laughs> he's got to get ready. <laughs> he's practicing. No, anyways. Uh, I mean, it was better than anything I could get. I'll say that, dude. I'll say that. Uh, homeless. No, I mean, dude, on that note, shit is hard out here. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's hard. Whenever, whenever you see, and girls are probably have a very difficult time understanding this, but to get a very attractive woman is fucking hard. It's impossible. It's like, because you're, especially here in LA, dude, you're competing against... <clears throat> fucking leonardo dicaprio yeah everybody's handsome here yeah and they're fucking red and it's be like hey come to my mansion or my boat and you're like right. hey would you like to come to tacos gavilan yeah you would know? you like to go to ralph's <laughs> 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 walk around the store yeah, yeah. pick so, up some 99 cent cookies what i can offer versus what other people can offer very limited uh -huh. so you know what i'm probably gonna be in the trenches for a while but it's all good i think once i rise above i'll appreciate a lot more yeah, and I'm like, you know what? He's about to have a mini feast. Uh, <laughs> I was like, I'm going to be positive. I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to be positive. Dude, I mean, you're not do, your, do your thing, Phil. I was like, do your thing, Phil. Um, Wait, were you going to say something when I walked in? Is that what yeah, I was going to say like, hey, dude, what's going on, man? I mean, uh, <laughs> you're, down, you're down to my level. I guess. <laughs> you're Alejandro, supposed to be yeah. higher than me. Like, what, uh, like, that's something, you know, what's going on? That's Why are you in my realm of uh, women? You know, you should be up here. But uh, anyway. you're like you're like you're like oh, funny I see you here. Right? Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck is this guy doing here? That's um, so then then Dennis comes back uh, with Vidrio and everybody. And they start drinking. Now our room is dirty as fuck. It is disgusting. Yeah, you fucking clean that shit spotless because you were, you know, 
preparing so, for so I, a potential I, no, I, mate. I, I, that's all these guys like, dude. If you even happen to bring a girl, there's no way to smash. Nowhere. Living there's room a green trash. screen and all this bullshit on your bed. Yeah, we already know we floor. can't. Yeah, we already know we can't smash on Steezy's room because he put glass all over the fucking uh, bed, <laughs> yeah. so people would get cut up if they try to smash. Um, True story. So yeah. like, let me clean the room. So as I'm cleaning the room, these, I see these guys getting drunk. They're fucking drinking all the white claws, everything. I'm just cleaning the room, and I'm like, damn, now I gotta clean the living room too, because I mean, uh, yeah, I gotta clean up a little bit, dude. I mean, these guys, if you'd get laid, you I know, mean, dude, your room has but, to be clean. Yeah, but maybe you know that. No, no, that was in Texas. You gotta fucking clean here. At this point, if a chick walks at this fucking house, and all I have to do is like. Oh, look at that wall. Nice fucking wall. She sees a YouTube fucking plots, dude. And at that point, she, she wants think to read the, the name. You're like, hey, don't read the name right now. We'll read it afterwards. Was it like, she's <laughs> like, oh my God, you have that? And they're like, no, no, I'll explain you later. Explain it. Just get in my fucking room, dude. That's Tell all. Tell you dude. this. If, but I wouldn't uh, do that because, you know. Huh. Even bragging about the plaques and I'm here in this apartment, like something's not adding up. Right. You know, if you're like, oh yeah, I got a million subs and shit like that. And she's like, why are we here then? Yeah. Exactly. Well, I mean, this is a pretty nice apartment. Yeah, it's, so it's not who a knows? Apartment, dude. Who knows? Dude, I'll be like, hey, this is my fucking workspace. We haven't seen other apartments that people live in. Yeah, so you know what? Maybe I'm being. Uh, it's actually kind of nice of apartment. Um, yeah, there's always bullshit like laying. Or I think trash all over the. I'm place. not gonna I lie, dude. I'm not gonna lie. When I brought Maddie here, I was like, uh, and Alejandro was sitting there, dude. Yeah. And I was like, hey, uh, oh, this is Ale Alejandro. So she walks in and I definitely saw she saw the fucking plaques, dude. I was like, dude, I gotta, you know, I gotta flex a little bit. No, I gotta get late tonight. Right. And so, uh, and that's what I did. She went like, she walked from here and she like saw the plaques and then she went to the kitchen and then I met her at, at, in the fucking room, dude. Okay. You know, I did a smart way. I pull out the fucking, you know, you fucking see, He gave her the tour of the value of the plaques, the podcast. Yeah, dude. I mean, dude. Our whole experience. Yeah, yeah dude, like, I mean, dude. Yeah. I mean, we live in LA, dude. Girl, Girl did she know that Dennis had nothing to do with any of those things? <laughs> yeah, but fuck it, dude. Who gives a fuck? At that point, they felt like, you know, uh, you know. Yeah, she got God. You you bamboozled her. Yeah, I fucking uh, I fucking. Fuck it, dude. Uh, be smarter you know next time. Dude. Read the name in the plaques next hey, time. You know what? But you got scammed, and that's their fault. I mean, dude. I mean, I work, dude. Look where I am now, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Um, um, but yeah, dude, we're living in LA, dude, and uh, girls here likes cloud and money, dude. They like cloud, yeah. And at this point, you don't really need fucking clean. Well, I mean, dude, dude, well, unfortunately, dude, I have neither of those things. Money but who gives a or fuck? Cloud. Don't don't tell. Don't show her your Instagram. Don't show your YouTube, dude. Be like, hey, I'll, I'll tell. I'll show you later. Like, <laughs> just turn the fucking movie on. And then you have sex, she forgets about it, and you t tells her, hey. She forgets about it. Oh, Why would you no, forget about no, it? I'm forgettable. Okay, what kind of sex are you no, having? No, 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 no. Let's, let's say this, like, you know, you have sex, she wakes up next morning, you'll be like, oh, fuck, dude, she I got to. who are you? I, no, no, I'll be like, oh, hey, I got. Why are you in my house? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'll be like, oh, my, dude, oh, shit, I have to go to this meeting, bro. Uh, yo, um, yeah, dude, uh, can you just leave right now? And just never talk about YouTube, dude. She's like, it's 3 a.m. What meeting are you going to right <laughs> now, dude? What do you mean 3 a.m.? Like, you wake you're, up you're next morning, You're wearing shorts, dude. Dennis. <laughs> dude, at that point, dude, uh, you know, I would, uh, she yeah. would never find out my YouTube channel. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, you know what? Next time, I'll try the Dennis way, dude. Kick him out at 2 a.m. because I have to go to a meeting. And, uh. The forgetful sex. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but anyway, wait, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. yeah Phil yeah. brings in the girl. <clears throat> I'm cleaning the room, cleaning everything. Then we're driving over there, and uh, I decided to pay for parking. Cause okay. I'm old enough, dude. Where fuck, they're trying to find free parking. Yeah, that bullshit. It's a whole fucking. You spend 20 minutes trying to find free parking, just going around around. I'm like, you know what? Let's go in a parking lot, dude. There's four of us. Let's just split it, right? Wait, hold on. The gas tank in the car is almost fucking done, and I put it. No, that has, not, that has to do with this guy door dashing. So don't blame me. Oh, dude, yeah, you yeah. need to fucking put yeah, gas he, he in that shit. Put, yeah, what he, the does the fuck? he does that whoa, on purpose. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He does that what on purpose. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, yeah. I wasn't driving. The Doesn't driver matter, always dude. puts the gas, So right? he owes you gas money. Dude, I put $25, and I was like, all right, if if you guys can help me split it. And I get this whole speech, and no, I'm broke, and all this other shit. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> why? This was hey, not that empty. It has a door dash. What do you dude. mean? That was, dude, that was all you, dude. By the way, you still owe me the $13 for the Grammys museum ticket. Well, I technically, I didn't want to go, so. So what does that mean? You didn't want to go? So basically, you paid for me? You paid for him, dude. Yeah, because you, you really go. want me to go. So basically, that was a date. That dude, was a date. You that took was about a date, date dude. dude. So, yeah. You're yeah, supposed to pay for a girl. fucking day, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but Phil never pays for the girl's date. Yeah. So. Yes, he fucking does, dude. Yes, he does. You know how I know he does? How do you know? Because when you guys were fucking gone in Texas, dude, me and Phil uh -oh. brought girls here. Uh-oh. And I remember he said, yo, 
I'll get, I'll buy, I'll pay for the food if you get the alcohol. Yeah. And so what he does, he basically pays for the chicks to eat, dude. Ah. Uh, I mean, the, I don't got think, you. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I mean, that's not wrong. I'm just saying because Alejandro <laughs> said that, like, you know. I'll but get you on that <laughs> anyways, so we park. It's twenty five bucks. I still, um, you still owe me money from the parking. I'm gonna send everybody money from the parking. The Venmo request. I mean, dude, all I can do is just deny it, dude. You know. <laughs> okay, so you could do that. Um, dude, so I realize everyone here's a fucking scammer. No, I always pay my. What do you mean, dude? I paid you everything you've ever dude, requested me. Dude, we live in the lake. So dude. what? I'm gonna it's request fine. you gas, and you're gonna fucking what pay gas? Me. Yeah, exactly. What, what gas? gas? What gas? No, yeah. no, Phil's gas was different, dude, because he said. I'm going here anyways, even if y'all don't come. Yeah, that's I the remember. difference. Yeah, I remember. I asked him, I was like, but that has nothing to do with your DoorDash wasting gas. So you still owe me money. You still owe me money from DoorDash. <laughs> that, <laughs> that doesn't make sense. It's a ticket. What the fuck, dude? What ticket? Anyways, fuck it. Anyways, continue. Um, I'm just going to take the L. So then we fucking go to the uh, bar, um, which is kind of cool, dude, because there's bars here. How'd you everywhere. find the bar? Uh, when their last time with a uh, Tunisian bitch. Mm. You wish if he sees this, he's gonna get mad. Why are you calling me a Tunisian bitch? Relax, dude. It's a joke. Everything yeah. I say is jokes. Um, you know we got Glassman, Vidrio, and we got Danny. They're cool, I guess. I mean, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah. Um, you know it's weird because I'm trying to tell these jokes, but I know if they see it, they're gonna get mad because out of context, all no, this. If they get mad, here's what happens: <clears throat> where like, um, you don't have to be like, oh, it's a joke or anyway and stuff like that. It's like, dude, if you generally think that i think that of you then we're not fucking no but like i think it fuck. might be people who are not in like uh youtube or internet they think if you're talking in here yeah it's like oh you're telling the world i'm this but video does youtube no i guess yeah. but i guess they don't understand that dude who gives a fuck about this no yeah. one I mean, really dude, watches these podcasts no one cares i mean dude if i if someone talks shit about me in the podcast dude all i know they bring up my name dude and i get clouded there it's you all go fucking okay dude. Yeah, see so then it's things about it the good way yeah there yeah. you go that's your hands kind of soft dude huh. i mean dude. <laughs> <laughs> so so we go to the bars right yeah yeah now i'm coming hot home hot from vegas right yeah in vegas i did a lot of crazy shit dude. flying high cool shit happened i mean I'm, fucking, I'm a pimp sums. i feel like a pimp dude because in vegas i'm there i killed it in vegas it was cool shit everything was easy dude. i mean women are hot blah blah and i get here to this bar everything's dark so i'm like dude they can't fucking see how i'm dressed it's bad i can't see their eyes see what they're looking because my like trick, a basement it is like a basement yeah, dude, my trick is uh you know you walk around you see a girl that stares at you and that's who you go talk to you poke them in the eye yeah you poke them in the eyes like hey how are you doing it <laughs> seems like you got something in your eyes let me help you there uh, <laughs> but i can't see anything dude. i'm like i can't see shit and uh the th weird thing about bars is that uh, there's so many dudes there and every everything's so loud, dude. You can't or club. This was like a bar club. It's so loud. Did I try talking to a girl at the club? This is how I went. I mean, so imagine everyone listening, like loud ass bass. The fucking floor is vibrant and everything. Right. So I can't even hear myself. I'm talking, and I'm like Phil, and I'm like doing a sound check. Basically, I'm like, oh, because I'm trying to see how loud I have to talk to the person. Because sometimes you'll be next to someone and you're screaming. Yeah, at you them. can't hear shit. Yeah. So uh, there was a girl there, and I'm like, "Hi!" <laughs> or so, at forget. this bar or at this club or yeah, at this club. Okay. It was just like, uh, you know what? Because I was all yeah, nervous. Fuck and let me, like let me and talk was, to you. Hey, <laughs> you know, and I'm like trying to scream, <clears throat> and uh, she like she's like, "Wait, what happened?" Like she's trying to find where the sound came from. Right. And I was like, "I have no chance. You have to like." And the fucking group of people come in. What? Basically, you have to be like with fucking, uh, what's it called? A flare or something like that. And right. loud ass lights with a flashlight pointed at their face and be like, hi, hello, this is me. Uh, clubs are not uh, conducive to conversation at all. So <sighs> yeah, um, I, mean, this, I don't uh, I don't get how people fucking do it. So you were there. So I'm there, dude. And I'm like, you know what? So I'm good, dude. I, I took fucking uh, two white claws, which is enough for me, dude. I know Dennis is like, oh, that's pussy shit. Most people say that's pussy shit. But, you know, I'm a healthy guy, dude. It hits me hard. So I'm like, that's good enough for me. Dude. I just kind of want to get a buzz so I get out of my head. Yeah. You know, just, just so I can get loose. You know, just feel the music. <laughs> uh, so I'm like, dude, I'm hot, dude. So I'm fucking, I, I'm happy. So yeah, I want to yeah, yeah. talk to people. And the first thing you find out, dude, is, uh, I mean, dude, I don't understand why girls go to bars. I mean, it's. You either come in or dance or have fun. Like, I don't understand. But, uh, I mean, dude, 
you kind of have to bring your standards down too because you know you can't get the hot girls. You know, you automatically <laughs> go, okay, dude, I already know I can't get that. Even if I wanted to. But why you think that? Because it's hard to talk, dude. It's hard to talk and it, it fucking is dark and the music and dude, there's so many guys around that there's so many distractions that even if you wanted to, it's unless you hold overload. like big presence, unless you're like tall as fuck or buff as fuck that you can keep her attention. I mean, it's hard. Wait, how do you like when you talk to All right, dude. Whoa, 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 no, no. Next what? time we go, I want you to talk to these girls. <laughs> no, you didn't no. talk to any girl there. So I hate when well, guys well, try dude, to I- give you advice. When they've never yeah, talked yeah. to any girl at the club and they say, No, no. Oh, oh you couldn't get no, the hottest wait, girl no, at the club? No, 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 wait. Oh, was, how could you not get the hottest no, girl I'm at not, the club? No, I was, I was just wondering, like. How, what did you say? Dude, I'm not trying to teach you. I was just wondering, hey, like, like when you talk to women, how do you, like, how do you talk to them? Like, what did you I say? Mean, there's many different ways. Like, what would you do? The easiest way is just to fucking get out of your head and stop making excuses. Oh, you say, hey, how's it going? That's dude, the easiest way. Dude, this is what I do. I just say, hey, what's up, fucker? I mean, it's the same thing. No, it's 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 you're just sad dude. fucker. You're yeah. just sad fucker. Yeah, dude. exactly. Which is not the best, but okay. <laughs> hey, you stinky bitch. No, dude. I mean, dude, no, no. <laughs> hey, I you just, stupid no, whore. I, what are you doing here <laughs> no, at this no, bar? I, I, dude, no, dude. Uh, <laughs> hey, dumbass. How's it going? <laughs> Dude, no, you know like, what I'm gonna try no, no, way no, before, before I got in a relationship hey, dude, dude I used to like DM chicks I was like yo what's up fucker and she would respond back she's like okay I ne- never heard this before and then you start and then you and then you start having conversation dude it's like different oh, well, I mean DMing is different dude I'm saying you're at the fucking no, bar like, you I, have I, one I, shot one opportunity that you capture dude, you, you, you hear me before Mom's saying spaghetti. what's up fucker yeah. to a girl you literally hear me before and what happened that. I mean, dude, it's it was funny though dude, what happened Dennis <laughs> uh, but anyways I mean I understand what you're saying basically yeah. what I'm saying is you gotta be realistic, dude. I hate that oh, guys pretend they can get any woman they want. Oh, you couldn't get this? No, dude. I mean, dude, see what you are and know what kind of woman you can get. Yeah. You know, it's. I mean, it's the reality. Yeah, because it's like, hey, why would you go out shopping for fucking thirteen thousand yeah. dollar Gucci shoes if you work at Walmart? Right. No. Don't. Just go to Ross. Go to flea market. There's nothing. Garage wrong. sale. Dude, you can find a really good deal. Yeah. Of a great pair of sneakers, very respectable. Exactly. You know? And it's like, and it, in your head, you're not, you know, faking it and being like, yeah, I'm about to buy these Gucci slippers. You're not going to buy the Gucci slippers. Right. Even if you could, you cannot afford to maintain that lifestyle. Bingo. So let's say you catch somebody in a downward spiral. And, That's you know what I'm talking about, dude. <laughs> you know? It's uh, like, uh, yeah, you're going to be a mistake. A good mistake, but. Yeah. I mean, the number one thing that you look for, dude, is she taller than you or your same height? Yeah. If the answer is yes, your chances go down to about 20%. Dude, I, I don't know. I 20%. Like, chances what? go down 20%. And, Did, it's, and they're not really taller than you. They're just wearing these fucking four-inch heels. Yeah. That it's like, you're not taller than me, but you're wearing these heels. So now you think you are. You know what would be funny? The four inches is a lot. Go to the club with heels. You know what? I'm going to start going to the club what with the heels. Fuck? Dude, how funny would it We're be? We're even. <laughs> now no, no, we'll no. be even with the women. Well, like, <laughs> club you, heels. Well, do you like... Uh, have you ever like talked to like like have you ever fucked a girl that's like taller than you or what? Uh, I don't think taller than me. I think maybe my height or oh, maybe dude. slightly a little bit, but yeah. uh, no, dude, not not taller than you. Bro. I mean, Dennis lied in his fucking profile when he met his girl. Yeah, you said you were five ten, dude. <laughs> yeah, this motherfucker. And dude. then she's five ten. So when it showed up, it, I know I don't she think she's five ten. She might be like five nine. Definitely not. No, five. she's five ten. Yeah. I mean, with shoes, it definitely seemed like yeah. five ten. Yeah. All right. She's five, but. 10, yeah. It was so I, w- I know I'm wondering what she yeah I wonder what, what happened dude, when you she was up. like yeah no dude this is what happened dude uh I'm glad she was sitting in the car because you're five eight with shoes no, dude. dude no I'm <laughs> not no no they were. I don't want to say you're real high but dude, like uh, the, I remember I like when uh, I was like oh shit me and her about to hang out dude and I was like dude Phil she's five ten dude this can be embarrassing I was telling Phil jokes I was like dude should I put like paper like in my shoes so I look a little bit taller dude right uh making all those jokes but yeah I got lucky dude she was sitting in her car dude and you uh, know. This is me walking, dude. I was walking like pretend, yeah, pretending I was big, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> sitting. I opened the fucking car on my fucking tippy toe. She wasn't seeing. I was like, so I look big and shit, you know. And then I walk, in, I get in the car, dude, and we start a conversation. But then we get to Hollywood sign, and I get out of the car. Uh-oh. I'm like, oh fuck, this is about to be end, dude. I'm glad she was like. Did she ever bring it up? Like, hey, I thought you said uh, you were five ten. No, she never bring it up. Uh, but like. I'm glad she was walking on the road and I was walking uh, walking on the, like, the sidewalk. He, so was I watching, taller. he was walking on the curb, dude. This motherfucker was <laughs> walking so, on the curb. Yeah, so, so, I, so I looked taller, dude. This <laughs> <So laughs> <I'm laughs> bitch, bro. But walking then, yeah, dude. The the fucking curb. <laughs> well, at least the good... Well, 
It's the difference between dates because in dates yeah. they get to know your personality, you know, before that. But at the club, dude, at the bar, yeah, you can barely talk. Yeah, I mean, I guess. So I mean, dude, every dude, it, presence it, it, really matters. Yes, I agree with that. Like at a club, it's very uncomfortable. Like for me at least, just because like when you go there, it's a hundred percent physical uh, communication. Like you have to like pull girls and do all this other shit. It's not like you're gonna strike up a conversation in the middle of the fucking dance floor while the bass is being boosted. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, dude, give me a a day with any girl. You know, just me talking to her, and I can probably smash. Yeah. After I get her super, no, I can. <sighs> no. Uh, we so caught him with 4K. But the thing is, dude, it's like, uh, I mean, that, that's it, dude. I mean, you have to like, uh, they have, they know nothing about about you at the club or bar. Yeah. You know, you go on a date, you can, they can see your personality and be like, you know what? Yeah, this guy's short. Yeah, he's a stupid, but you know what? Uh, he makes me laugh. So. I'll fuck him tonight. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Dude, if I can't talk to me, it's like losing your superpowers. Right. Yeah. If you can't talk to me, I'm done. Yeah. yeah. If I can't open my words and I can't manipulate you with my words, <laughs> uh, it's over. Like, it's done. Yeah. Because this is all I have. Other than that, you have to go in, like, which, I mean, take a fucking pair of steel nuts. Right. I, I don't have those. Yeah. I don't have those either. Like, you have to walk up to people and, like, physically grab them right and be like hey i'm here like yeah you have to try to communicate all this other shit and right. it's like what am i gonna i'm not gonna do that yeah i mean it's like the fucking three little pigs dude like uh my nuts are made out of wood <laughs> and uh then you got the nuts made out of what what's the other house made hey, out of? I hey i think and the clay and then well then there's a nuts made out of concrete and none of us have none of us have that not even a concrete brick, brick right no brick no, is there, the was, guy no there was wood concrete and then there was a fucking no. Uh, it's hay, wood, wood, and then and then uh, brick. brick, which was brick. the strongest one. No, I thought it was fucking cement, dude. No, no it because it the wolf comes thing. in, blows the hay, he burns the wood. But, but he, he doesn't burn the wood. He also blows the oh, wood. Yeah, he blows the wood. But he the concrete. But anyways, dude, we don't have none of those nuts. We all have hay nuts. All right, it can be blown away easily. Why are we talking about nuts? Uh, it's a figure of speech, dude. Oh, okay, not literal cool. nuts. Yeah. So I mean, dude. Uh, I already know, dude. I mean, I already know. I'm, I'm old enough to know, okay, dude, I've been to many clubs, many bars. I see the situation. I see what the environment looks like. I'm like, dude, if I'm taking any girl home, she's probably going to be fat. <laughs> and that's the real. That's the reality. Oh, yeah. you're making fun of fat girls? No. Or am I? What am I doing right here? What no, you're just of? saying... You're just saying what you like, dude. You're just saying what, yeah. you, what you do. No, I'm just saying, how do I... How do I summon the blow on this <laughs> one, dude? <laughs> I think what you should say is... You take home uh, people who aren't traditionally yeah, beautiful, I mean, I but guess, they're I still beautiful in their own way. Fat was like a quick way to say, well, I guess that quick way to say, all right, I'm thinking <laughs> myself in a deeper hole. <laughs> um, you're like, whoa! Um, okay, no, the thing about fat people, okay, you're, you're the one that hates fat people. Help me out. <laughs> <laughs> you're like bringing it down. Yeah, yeah. Help me out of this uh, hole, dude. I mean, dude, just say uh, you don't bring the best. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. Um, and so, what is the, the best? Yeah, we're, so we're saying, okay, now we're, all right, dude, we need to get on this. You should say they're not the best. Is that what you said? Listen, dude, uh, <laughs> let's just move on. Yeah, we let's move on. We'll kind of move on. Um, so I'm like, dude, I'm not going to bring the best, right? <laughs> 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 okay, anyways, uh, I'm like, I'm not going to bring the best if I'm here. And, uh, I mean, their weight is not the only thing, but I mean the best. I mean, uh, like the way they're dressed. You're going back in. No, I'm saying like the uh, many, <laughs> many, many things. I'm saying that there's many. Not that. The weight is the only thing. Yeah. It's not the only thing. There's okay. many aspects of, of the person. And I'm like, oh, it's not the no, best. Let's cut the bullshit. If I go to a club, I'm not looking at the fucking personality or anything. I'm looking at the shape. Right. Okay. And that's the same thing that women are doing. That's why I yeah, understand dude, them. If you're if you're not tall, yes. they're not looking at you. They're and not. hey, you can't control your yeah, height. Yeah, and I don't blame them, dude. Same thing. So if they're tall horizontally, holy shit. <laughs> I would no, uh that's not my particular taste. Whew, thank God I awoke in the fat god, dude. <laughs> 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 uh but yeah, so I'm already dude, I already know I've been here many times, so I understand. Um uh, I basically I'm like dude I'm just gonna have fun because I already know I mean even the girls that I could bring home I don't want them anymore I'm too old to be smashing that stuff I'm bored <laughs> dude uh, it's, it's yeah plus every anytime you go out with an agenda like oh I have to smash I have to do this and stuff I you first of all 
it minimizes the chances of you doing that. Right. Second of all, it ruins the fucking fun. Because now you're hanging out with a guy who's like, oh, you're on the look at it. It's just like, dude, just relax. Like, realistically, yeah, yeah what, at 11.30 p.m., you're going to fuck somebody? Nah. You have to wait towards the end where the c- clubs are closing. And uh, that's where you go into strike. Yeah. Uh, but, I, mean, I mean, basically, it was like, uh, I know how you get laid with hot girls. You become a millionaire. So I'm like, dude... Uh, I'm not even fucking stressed about it. I'm like, dude, yeah. this is not my time to fuck hot girls. I don't even want to. Dude, I'm tired, but I still want to have a little bit of fun, you know. Um, so I'm like, dude, let me just see my skills where I'm at. I mean, I haven't come out in a long time. Let me see where I'm at. Yeah. So I'm still looking for y'all because I guess y'all are on the top floor or like you're all, y'all are still outside street, drinking pre-gaming. vodka. Yeah. So I didn't want to leave because I'm like, dude, if I leave, what if I can't get back in? Yeah. So I'm just going to wait for these guys we here. We had to sneak in the back and I guess the security guard changed because Vidro was like, hey, just tell him something. I was like, oh, we're already in here. He was right. like, oh, I just got here. I guess you could just walk in. Oh, shit. So we fucking saved ourselves. Okay. Um. So dude, uh, first approach, you know, I talked to a girl. Hey, how's it going? And then um, Dennis starts recording me and I'm like, all right, dude. Uh, don't. Your, oh, I don't remember I'm that like, shit. I don't want this out there. So I quickly stop and uh, <laughs> I walk away. Um, why was he recording you? Because you already know why he was recording me. Dude. He was trying to roast me later. But well, he doesn't know that I was warming up. Dude, I was warming up. You got to warm up. <laughs> I was warming up, Dennis. Uh, dude, someone, I don't even remember that part. Dude. So then I go talk to another girl. It's like <clears throat> someone filming you whenever you just left in the bar at the gym. Yeah, I'm like, and hey, you're like, hey, this is not what I normally do. I yeah, just, this is not my normal wage. I'm warming up with this. Uh, <laughs> so then, uh, oh shit. So then I go try to talk to this. I'm like, all right, this is a hot girl. Let me talk to her. Right? She's with her three friends, which is already, dude. Girls don't oh. understand how hard, people don't understand how hard it is, dude. It's like you're out there on your own, and you're about to talk to a group of four girls who are all like in the same group dude so it's like you're going to the lion's den your heart is to talk to four random people and try to fucking maintain their attention in a loud bar it's it, fucking it's it, hard as fuck it's miraculous people yeah and, and then even if she did want to talk to you her friends go in the way hey stop talking to her you're not her type and it's like what the fuck are you doing because yeah. they get jealous that you're not talking to them Dude, it's a whole fucking ordeal. Like, it's so... They make it so hard. Where you're just trying to have fun. Yeah. So, you know, I go, I say, what's up? And uh, you get the classic, the friends pull her. And I'm like, dude, what the fuck is this? Let her do her own decisions. She's old enough, you yeah. know? <laughs> but I'm like, okay, whatever. Rejection number one, dude. <laughs> All right? So I go, ching! Rejection number one. I'm, I'm already waiting for about 100 of these by the end of the night. Yeah, yeah, All yeah. right, they got the first one out of the way. <laughs> now I can breathe. Yeah, dude. You got to get the first one out of the way. Yeah, the first rejection. You got to get yeah, the yeah, first rejection is, out of the that way. That is the, cl- the starter. That's the best thing you can do. If you're trying to get girls at a bar or club. Get rejected as quick as you get can. Get rejected as soon as you can because it frees you from the whole, oh, my God, oh, my God, I'm yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. No, you're not cool. All right, so first rejection out of the way. And then I go talk to another girl. <laughs> do they do this? Which was, it feels horrible, dude. So like, for, it destroys your, they, they do it. But anyone's listening to the podcast. Yeah, they're doing like the, this, the go get away gesture peasant. with the hand. Yeah. Get away peasant. Like, where they're just flick of the wrist, put like, is like swooping your way. Like, yeah. push. Now, by, I see that, and my heart automatically crumbles in pieces. And my soul leaves my body, dude. <laughs> and I turn one into stone. And I'm thinking, hopefully nobody saw that oh, shit, dude. Yeah, that I just got so fucking brutal. destroyed. No, I pretend like, because I was about to go in, right? Before I say anything, they do this, right? Oh, so I didn't, I didn't even do anything. No, maybe it wasn't towards me. Most likely it was, but who knows? Maybe Because there was other guys around, right? So I was, there, she was doing it to other guys, but I was about to go in, right? And, and I see this motion. Might have happened to me. I took it that it was for me, dude. My heart breaks. My soul leaves my body. I Time stops for about <laughs> 10 minutes, dude. And I'm just... My brain dude, is running through brutal. my whole life. It's like Fuck. I'm having my whole life run through my body, and I'm like, oh, dude, it's fucking <laughs> sucks, major cock. Uh, and then I come back, and I'm like, I pretend like I was dancing. You know, I'm yeah. like, oh, I, was, I was just dancing around. No big deal. I wasn't trying to talk to her. So I'm like, all right, that's fucking three rejects. I'm like, oh, this is brutal, bro. Yeah. But I know how it feels. Like, I'm not, I know this is how it goes. You it know? never gets easier to, like, the thing about it is, <laughs> like, even though you're familiar with it, Right. Like it still hurts like a bitch. It fucking when it hurts, happens. bro. Because it's someone telling you you're garbage as a human being. Yeah, here's a and without yeah. even getting to know you or nothing. So which is the which is why we're stupid because she's not saying no to you because she doesn't even know who you are. Yeah, right. She's just saying no to what you look like. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> yeah. No, it is true. Yeah, 
Um, what were you gonna say? No, I mean, uh, I'll let you finish. Okay, so I mean, that's like three rejections. I'm like, damn, dude, this is. Where are these guys at, dude? Where, where's <laughs> Phil and uh, Dennis at? Uh, so then I'm I'm walking close to the stage, and then this girl falls. Right, she lands on my arms. Nice. Which I don't know if she planned this that's or whatever. That's hilarious. But she falls in my arms, and her friends like, "Oh my God, help her up!" I'm like, All right, do I help her up? And then they pull me up on stage with them. I'm like, "Okay, cool." Oh, yeah. And I'm uh, I'm already hurt from these rejections, so I'm not longer in fun mode, dude, because I just fucking got crushed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I don't <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't even, I don't want to be here at this point, yeah, dude, because yeah. I'm like, dude, what's going on? And then she goes, "Hey, if you're not gonna dance, don't be on stage, right?" That's what she says. Which she's saying that it's a way for me to dance with yeah, her. Yeah. Right? She's like, "Hey, if you're not gonna dance," and I told her, "All right, let's dance then." So now I'm dancing, dude. I'm grinding. But I'm still hurt, you know. Like this is okay. This yeah, is kind of yeah. like uh, this is better. Yeah, it's kind of like your mom bringing you like a little pastry a little cookie, like, after <laughs> you got fucking fell on the floor. So I'm like, okay, this is cool. I'm grinding on her. <laughs> then she turns around and she pulls my face in. We start making out. Not the best girl, right? That's why I'm not, you know, like saying that. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, it's it's okay. okay. It's okay. It's better than anyone. It's better than any what y'all did. I'm like, all right, it's okay. Yeah. And, I'm like, and I'm also looking, hoping y'all see me do it. Because I'm like, all right, <laughs> yeah. it's pretty good. Dude. Hey, everybody, this is the guy who got rejected right here. Uh, but then I'm like, okay, I mean, uh, I already know how it goes. I mean, I'm probably going to grind for 20, 30 minutes, maybe more makeouts. And uh, I mean, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Because I'm like, let me find these guys. Let me. Sometimes, dude, with your friends, like if I find Danny or Bidro and I get rejected with them, that's more fun. Than being here grinding with this girl because I can make fun of him that he also got rejected. Yeah, yeah. So it's a little bit more fun. So I'm like, let me find these guys so yeah, we can exactly. get rejected together. Why am I not saying that we can get laid together? Because I know we're not gonna do that. So I go down stage. Dude, I fucking dude, I'm trying, bro. I'm out here trying, dude. Yeah. I get rejected like three more times, dude. I'm like, at this point, I'm like, dude, why am I even come out here? I'm mean, I might have thinking, gotta go back home, dude, edit video, yeah, dude. I'm gonna yeah. show everybody, dude. Change I'm a, my life. Yeah, I'm gonna blow up, dude, hit the gym, dude, become a millionaire. <laughs> Fuck everybody. Which is good motivation. Yeah. It's good motivation to get rejected, man. Um You know what I hated? When I was at the club, Vidra was like, Go talk to that girl. And I was being honest, I was like, dude, I'm honestly kinda scared, like I just hit the dance floor. I'm trying to get let loose. <laughs> right. I'm like, you know, pretend that I don't fucking or see you, the you woman can, you around You pull me. the classic, let's just have fun, bro. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> let's just have fun. <laughs> why, are, why are you putting all this pressure on me? Yeah. You know what I mean? Why are you putting this pressure Dude, on me? Dude, we're here. We, you know, like, present, enjoy the vibe. Bro. Be present. Why are you trying to, like, ruin the fucking vibe, bro, yeah. with yeah. that shit? I yeah. fucking... <laughs> it's like, uh, so I was like, well, you know what? Show me. Bro. Oh. No, that's what I told him. I was like, dude, show me. Go up to a girl. If you approach it, I'll go with you. Oh, I was like, and I promise you that. I was like, dude, I promise I'll go with you. Like, I just need you to lean. That way, it can kind of give me the confidence because I'm like in my head. Um, because he was talking all the shit. And he was like, yeah, come on, it's easy, and all this other shit. I'm like, okay, then show me. Oh, fuck. And then he kept saying, come on, you do it, you do it. And I was like, dude, let's be honest. Both of us are fucking chicken shits. Okay. <laughs> And then uh, he laughed and we kept dancing pretend time, pretend time. Right. Uh, it, I mean, at that point I had to decide I'm, I'm not going to fucking talk to anyone anymore. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm just going to, I'm just going to be damn. here. I'm going to exist in the club because having, uh, you know, romanticizing the illusion of all of a sudden I'm going to run into a model, you know, be James Bond smooth. And we're going to go back to my mansion and smash that. I mean, w what is that? That's for the birds. Right. right. So I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to, you know, cut the floor here dancing. Okay. Enjoy myself. And I'm enjoying the music. The the DJ's pretty fucking good. Yeah. Um. And then he does it again. Ah, oh, dude, those girls are next to you. They want to talk to you. I'm like, dude, shut the fuck up, dude. <laughs> I fucking hate when people say that. It's like, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, you got this. I was just like, don't say anything. Because we're both just lying. Yeah, it's like, you want to talk to them. You're just telling me to do it. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> you're scared to go. Yeah. And first of all, like, I don't want to talk bad on their appearance because I didn't talk to them right so it seems like oh you know he's being a bitch pretending to be cool it's like no i was still scared to talk to them regardless of what they look like yeah it's fucking scary but also the way they look like wasn't particularly Didn't motivate to my, you to yeah. take the hit yeah it's it's like, if i'm gonna go to war i want to go for a good reason yeah i was just like if i get rejected by that i would literally die right i would die like because it's like okay any illusion that i had in my head about self-esteem goes out the window immediately so it's just fun. So that part is fun. It was fun. Maybe like, all right, let's push each other to approach, even though no one's approaching. <laughs> but like the thing. So y'all didn't talk to any girls. 
I mean, I attempted to talk to one. <laughs> you motherfucker said I attempted <laughs> because uh, I can't say I talked to her <laughs> because talking involves dialogue. You're right. Okay. What I did was I initiated a monologue and they didn't reciprocate. Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> no, I didn't talk to any girl. I'm like, hi, and then no response. I'm an idiot. I'm dead. <laughs> Bye. I'm worthless. Yeah. You know? And then you're like, uh, and then you go back to dancing and you're crying. Tears are going down your face while, <laughs> you know, good. the fucking uh, uh, Rihanna song. You do the whole the thing. Yeah, DJ, you got me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody having fun. Yeah. Woo. Uh, but uh, at the club is a completely different game than uh, than when you're like like on the street or some shit like that. Yeah. I mean, than life anywhere. I mean, it's the probably the hardest place. That's on hard mode, like straight yeah. up. Because what guy, like, what can you fucking say that is valuable? At no, a club? And, and even if you're a good looking guy, dude, and even if you're tall and that, the thing is, you never know. Because I did see some, like, uh, good looking tall guys approach the same girls that I did, and they also got rejected. Yeah. Big time, too. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know what these women want. I'm like, hey, they went in, they got rejected. I'm like, okay, let me go to, I got rejected. Everybody's getting rejected. I'm like, so what is going on here? Do they just like feeling the pleasure of rejecting guys is that what they want to go there yeah um so i, I didn't understood i'm like everybody's getting rejected well dude, maybe they just want to you know i have like a girl's night they just want to go and drink and just have fun no anyone fucking trying to you know hit on them and fuck no, no, them, but it's, it's not like they're hitting on them harsh it's just like hey it's just like normal conversation so it's like uh and trust me dude you can tell when a girl's just trying to have a girl's night you can tell they're you can tell dude trust me uh, these girls weren't trying to have a girl's night but even then dude <laughs> I still respect way more the guys who are out there getting rejected than because when I was walking around getting rejected, dude, multiple, I probably got rejected like 15 times, dude, which Fuck. by the end of the night, dude, my, I was crushed, right? Yeah. I was completely destroyed. And even if I saw a girl look at me, I was gone, dude. I'm like, dude, even if you do want me, I'm, uh, I'm destroyed. You have to approach me. At no, even if I can't, I can't do this anymore. Even if there's a chance between me and you, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm <laughs> gone, dude. I, I'm gone. I'm, I'm, I'm limping at this point, but. I would walk around. I would see guys just standing by the wall with their arms crossed. Oh, you know? yeah. those guys! Like a bunch of group yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, okay, so, those are more loser than me. Yeah. Because yeah. at least I'm out here trying to make something happen. At least I gotta make. At least I I'm grinding. I think there's like multiple tiers. Yeah. I, I mean, at the top, obviously, it's people who approach and are successful and grinding, and you know, have the second is you're trying. Basically, right. that's the hundred level. Third, at least I'm fucking dancing. Yeah, at least you're dancing. At least I'm fucking. Yeah, okay. So at least yeah, let's break I'm it dancing, down. Dude. So first is the guys who out there killing no, it. First is the guys who bring girls, right? They yeah, brought yeah, yeah, girls, yeah, yeah. dude. They're dancing with, with the girls they brought. They have like a VIP table, or whatever. Uh, then you have the the guys who talk to girls and they're successful, right? And then you have the guys who brought their girlfriend. Do we put them there or do we put them a little bit low? Because oh, if you bring there. your girlfriend, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm not bringing your yeah, girlfriend yeah, yeah, school. Yeah. We'll put them a little bit. Then you have the guys who are approaching, getting rejected. Yeah. Then you have the guys who brought their girlfriend. They're dancing with their girlfriend and their friends. Then you have the guys who are enjoying the music. Yeah. Right? They're just out there fucking enjoying music. Bottom tier, dude. And then you have the guys who are not dancing. They're not looking like they're having fun. Okay, hold on. Before that, yeah. it's the guys who are just drinking. Okay. Yeah, it's so like, you know what? If you're kind of like joking with your friends and just drinking, you're not even that. It's just fine. Right. And then if you're... If your back is touching the concrete wall that the building is made out of, right? Leave. Yeah. Find a different establishment. You're just taking up space. You're just blocking me from getting rejected. Yeah. Give me that space. It's making everything worse. It's like there should be a prerequisite, meaning like if you're not dancing or if you're not drinking or attempting to talk to girls, right? You cannot be there. Yeah, man. I mean, uh, otherwise you're just a fucking creep. You're like observing Smo and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's. I agree with that. Dude, uh, you know what? I uh, like when I was living in Texas and shit, and yeah. with the friends and stuff. When you like go and have fun, and girls see you having fun, they like you dancing and shit. They will come up to you and stuff. That's like like what like when well, it I depends. Would, you're talking about at a frat party or where? No, no, like about? actually in the bar, like in the well, bars. What bar? Uh, six Street, like any I mean, bar. Six Street is different than this bars, dude. Yeah, I, I know, but Six Street like, is more fun. Yeah, yeah. Girls there are fun. Yeah, because you're like no bueno. Well, me and fucking my friend, they will just like start fucking dancing and shit. Like, yeah, girls would just literally like they would always walk to us and they would start talking to us and shit. Yeah, I mean, uh, Six Street is is Six, six, six Street good. is a lot of fun. I People mean, dude, yeah, when we yeah. went to Rainy, uh, because Rainy is not Six Street, but it's like in the same area in Austin type kind of, um, 
people are so much more open and friendly. I think it's more of a Texan thing. It's a yeah. Texas really. thing, dude. Yeah. Um. Anyways. Um. But yeah, I mean, so the, the you have the cool guys at the at the fucking wall, dude, just with their arms crossed, like trying to look cool. And uh, dude, I, I walked around the club multiple times. They didn't leave for like forty minutes. They were there. Yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on, dude? Like, I don't. Why do you even come out? You yeah, know? there's a, there's a, they take a fucking picture. Last night was a movie. Right, last night was a fucking movie of you standing next to a wall. Yeah. Damn. But, I mean, anyways, I mean, dude, I'm like, all right, dude, I guess uh, in my mind I'm thinking, yeah, I now I remember why I don't come out to clubs. <laughs> because uh, unless I'm coming out to have fun with my friends, which I did, which was cool. Yeah. Never go alone trying to get laid to a club. Because so, it's not going to happen. And if you do, it won't be the best girl. You're wasting your time. Come out. Actually, dude, come out to get rejected. And kind of it grounds you. Yeah. And you realize, oh, dude, uh, I need to work on my money and get get that right if I do want a better life. Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. Because the way it you humbles get, you. Yeah, the way you get really actually laid is you throw parties mm-hmm. at your house that you own. You have to right? have a lifestyle that makes it easy for that. Like exactly. if you're the kind of person who is always indoors, not doing shit, that lifestyle is not a fucking attractive right. for anyone, first for, of all, but especially girls you exactly. know, who are like trying to have fun. So yeah, um, no, I agree with that. Just get your money up, get your shit straight, have fun, yeah. and then eventually, uh, it'll it'll fall in your lap. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we're talking about hot girls, right? The girls that nobody ever gets. I you're mean, not the, gonna get I them mean, at the, the club. You won't. You get a but, no, you might get a normal yeah. girl, but you're not gonna get a hot girl. Like, at the club. why are you guys like? I just like uh, when you guys saying hot girls. Right. I mean, dude, there's a middle, there's, let's say there's middle class girls and there's fucking hot girls, right? Right. I mean, dude, middle girls is always like exactly the same as fucking hot girls, you know what I'm saying? They have exactly the same pussy. Probably just face better, you know, and fucking, that's basically pretty much, I think. Wait, so, so what are you saying? No, I'm just saying is that like, I feel like you don't have to like, you know, oh, dude, I don't have money, bro. I can't get hot girls, dude. I mean, just let me tell you this. The probably the hot chick, the hot chicks only want to be with you because you have fucking money. Uh, and I, I mean, I don't blame them. I mean, uh, <laughs> no, why I just, would they want to no, be with a broke no, guy? I just, no, no, I just feel like you need to be with like someone that, you know, like. No, I mean, I guess we're talking more about casual dating I mean, I guess, relationships. Yeah, yeah. So it's different. Dude, if I was a hot chick, I wouldn't go out with broke boys. Like I wouldn't. Why would I do that? Why would I go out with a loser that has no money? I mean, I guess you're right. You're right. Yeah. Like I don't blame girls for not wanting to date broke guys. I don't, I don't get why guys get mad. Hey, she only wants guys with money. Yes, I would too if I was a hot girl. Think about it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Why the fuck would you do that, bro? Well, like, let's say, do you can like, get you pregnant? Wait, wait, and they can't even take care wait, of your wait, child. Like, let's say when you when you hustle for girls, do you look for girls that like like let's say, oh, dude, that girl looks like she has money. I want to fuck her. Do no, you, do you think that? No, no? I don't care okay. about money, dude. Because we're guys. We yeah, only I care guess. about what they look like. Yeah, I guess you're right. You're right. Uh, I like when girls have status. Yeah, I'm not same, gonna lie. like same. if I'm being completely honest. Yeah. Right. If I find out there's some sort of you know sort of like status thing and it like when i say status i mean like she's accomplished she's like driven like something yeah. not like a stupid bimbo it makes it a little bit better yeah i like when they're like you know they're not childish they're like how to say that word in english mature mature dude, yeah because yeah. i'm a fucking kid dude so i gotta find someone that is mature dude because because yeah. it builds me you know uh but trying to be mature and shit uh all right let's wrap it up yeah let's wrap well, it up come down steezy Oh, dude, come on, dude. I, let it flow. I, dude, I got to sneak into Hollywood. Dude, time. I mean, you can leave if you want, bro. Just, we got to let it flow, dude. Okay, I mean, that's fine. Be present. I mean, dude, 134, dude. I'm just barely getting talking into the night. All right. All right, douchebag and bitches. I'm out. Uh, keep your dick hard. <laughs> all right, then it's out. I mean, he wasn't adding anything to the conversation anyways. Uh, so. What in here? I mean, the AC's on, dude. Yo, relax, dude. Kind of hot, all this, dude. You're living a good life, man. I'm not complaining. Don't be flashing the camera, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, man. So, <clears throat> where were we? We're talking about. Oh yeah, yeah. Basically, dude, I knew no girls were gonna be brought that night, and if they were, they weren't gonna be the best. So then I come back to y'all, and I can already tell. Oh yeah, these guys haven't talked to any girls. You yeah. know, I see Dennis there pretending to dance. You know jumping up and down i'm like okay dennis she's gonna get drunk he's not gonna talk to any girls i see vidrio and i'm like okay yeah this guy's not gonna talk to any girls danny he's really drunk I'm like yeah this guy's probably gonna talk to girls and get rejected now it was Definitely hilarious not. seeing him talk to girls no he did oh he did and he got rejected majorly which gave me hope i'm like okay yeah we we're both at least rejected. he's trying yeah, yeah 
Then I see Phil jumping up and down. I'm like, all right, dude, this guy's gone. <laughs> uh, and then we leave. Do you, we all leave. And uh, yeah, then we're walking down the street. Um, and then uh, uh, you're trying to get the ears pierced. And I'm like, you know what? These guys are going to get their ears pierced. Let me just fucking walk back to the club one more time. Let me see if it's still open. Um, so it's closed. Or oh, I was trying to go to another club. It's closed. And then I call y'all. Y'all are gone. And then I, I just go back to the car and fall asleep there. Holy shit. Because I don't want it to get towed, right? I'm like, I don't want this thing well, to get Well, why didn't you towed. drive home? Uh, just that I, I like playing it super safe, dude. I wasn't drunk anymore. I wasn't anything. But I was like, dude, you know what? What if there's 0.0001% alcohol and then I get fucked? And I'm in jail getting pounded. Jesus. Right? But I think it's like zero. I know, I know, dude. But I didn't want to risk at I, all, dude. Yeah, yeah I know. At all. Dude. I'm, I'm like, I'm not risking anything. Fuck that shit. So I was like, you know what? I don't want a car to get towed. Um, and I don't want to Uber to the apartment because, yeah, the kids. I'm like, I'm just going to sleep here for three. I was already like four. And yeah. yeah. So I'm just going to sleep here for three hours. Okay. And then drive back. And uh, yeah, I mean, I fall asleep for three hours, drive back. And um, yeah, I mean, we're back here. And I see in Dennis' stories how he beat up that guy. That's hilarious. And I'm like, holy shit. What was going through your head? I was like, damn, dude. I'm glad. Honestly, dude, y'all got lucky that he didn't have a gun. Because if he had a gun, he probably would have pulled it out on y'all and shot y'all. Yeah. And people have died there in Hollywood. I mean, in retrospect, that was a very foolish decision. And, um... Yeah, I mean, uh, I always play typically play safe, but then I saw, I mean, there's just one guy, um, but then he had kind of like baggy right, pants. Hold on. Yo, what's going on over there? I thought y'all were leaving. So if people are coming, why did you leave the podcast? <laughs> we can, hold on. You guys are fine. I guess uh, you can hang out in my room. Up yeah, until we're, we're about to wrap like so in five loud, minutes. Dude. It's fine. Shut the fuck up. There you go. All right, there we go, dude. That works. Um, wait, what were you saying? So these guys were being so loud, I couldn't hear anything. Um, what was I saying? Uh, uh, I was talking about. Yeah, basically the guy. Uh, he's he looked like a little bitch, which is fine. I was just like, oh, okay, physically he cannot hurt us, but I'm always aware of that because the thing about like smaller guys is that they have really big egos. Right and you it's always this fucking smile like the tory lanes you know shooting that bitch yeah it's like uh i mean they make getting made fun of so much life beats them up to yeah. the point where like anything fragile like that and especially after like vidro him and and then it's it got excessive to a point and i was just like okay we're good um and uh yeah I, there's no dude like to lose if a guy's like talking shit you leave right just leave because most people would be like, nah, man, you got to protect your pride and all that. Dude, fuck my pride. Yeah. I don't care what any, like, if you give that much weight to what someone else is saying, you're already fucking up. And what if, like, what are you going to lose your life just because some dude has just, like, decided, fuck this guy. I don't like the way he looks or something like that. I'm not saying be a pushover, but there's nothing worth dying for when you go out at night with your friends. Yeah. There's nothing, unless someone is about to die you know like unjustly or something like that then maybe but um yeah anything like all those events surrounding like that fight i was just like fuck no if i would have died like get it ble- like someone shoots me and i'm bleeding out i was just like i cannot believe this is the way I'm what going. if they shoot you in the leg and you're in a wheelchair for the rest of your life <sighs> i would be. make fun of you every day dude i mean dude i probably would commit suicide yeah yeah i, I, mean, I wouldn't blame you i wouldn't blame you dude i'm like dude you go from six to to wheelchair wheelchair bro <laughs> yeah i mean it's uh um it's like unless you you can play the waiting game to see if you get bionic legs or some shit like that right <laughs> but like uh at that point it's fucking tough um i mean that that's happened to people like not even getting shot but like if you get punched in the back of the head or something like you can end up um uh, with serious brain damage and like you're Fuck. medically retarded damn like that's what happened to that boxer that is so oh, sad oh yeah i remember seeing yeah that was sad as fuck dude dude that was so sad like that the referee didn't fucking stop it when he would get him punched in the back of the head and that sucks you know he was going up and all of a sudden he's just there and his family has to take care of him and it's like the most depressing thing in the world so i mean everything is risk to reward type shit uh but what do you have to gain from a street fight like at a bar a little bit of pride 
No, yeah. I mean, the thing is that we're laughing right now. And we're, this was a good time because nobody got hurt. Yeah. But if somebody had gotten hurt, we would have been like, that's the stupidest things that, that we did. Exactly. What the fuck was that? It's funny yeah. up until it's not. Right. And then all of a sudden, um, yeah, that's what happens with people driving drunk or like being reckless and shit. That's why like hanging out with YouTubers stresses me out. Because I was pranking and doing shit like that. Yeah. And I understand it's a lifestyle. Yeah. But then shit happens. And it always does. I mean, look at David Dobrik, dude. He's fucking swinging his friend around. Some shit is bound to happen. Right. Because you think you're in control, you're doing everything right, and you've had so many wins that you don't think, oh, this could never go wrong. Yeah, if there's so many pranks, something's going to go wrong. It's just a numbers game. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I mean, take it as you will. Everything is a risk, I guess, to some extent in life. Yeah, dude, I was surprised when I saw that, that you were laughing so much and uh, you didn't try to stop it because... Uh, I would have, I would have definitely stopped. That would have been like, Dennis, what the fuck are you doing? Like, it seems funny and all that, but yeah. I mean, dude, I just like <laughs> even before then, like the same night, some guys were crossing the street in a car, kind of cut them off a little bit. Yeah. So the guys got mad and were like, "Hey, dude, what the fuck are you doing, dude? We're trying to cross the street," and the guy inside the car flashes them a gun. You know, mm -hmm. and then the guys, oh shit, and they all walk away. It was just a normal car right so it's like dude out there at 3 a.m you know it's you yeah no be being really stupid careful, and dude. everything yeah i mean uh um, careful yeah i let it go for longer than i probably would have like if i was more level-headed right i was laughing because i saw him swing and he's not really hitting and yeah, like, i mean it wasn't like a big serious fight yeah that's why i understand but no but even then like you are right you. because it was foolish it that's what it was it is stupid and People die when there's stupid shit that happens. And it's not even you. It's not like, uh, oh, but I can handle it and all that. It's not about you handling shit. It's about the X factor. Right. Where like this random guy who, you know, his dad used to beat as a kid. And he's like, you're a tiny little guy. And that's in his head. So he's like, I'm always going to carry a gun and no one's going to hurt me like that. And then you're fucking with him and you're like, you're a tiny little guy. And then he's like, you're like my dad. And he <laughs> they get shot in the face. Um, yeah, I think, uh, so it, as, I think as you get older, when, um, when people are like, oh, did you get lamer as you get older? It's like, well, if you're not a complete moron, it's that you just like understand that some things are just not worth the risk. No. Yeah. I mean, uh, I've never been in a fight, uh, when I was a kid, but th those don't count. Uh, but as I got older, I always run away from fights. That's my motto. Always be running always be abr dude. yeah abr always be <laughs> runny dude i will never get in a fight if i'm in a date with a girl and someone tries to fight me i'll uh i'll kick the girl in the leg and then i'll <laughs> run you know so they take her no i mean uh i think that might be the only situation like if i'm in a date and they're yeah. coming over like and maybe they're attacking her yeah. then maybe but if they're attacking me i'll just be like yeah dude i'm a dumbass yeah i mean yeah yeah, she's out of my league. Yeah, I mean, I can't believe she's dating me either. <laughs> and then just let it go, you know. Yeah. But if if they get physical and like they're attacking her, then I guess I mean I would probably have to step in because they, you're you're hurting another human being. Yeah. But I mean, if this is like uh, insulting me or whatever, I mean, I don't really care. I'm trying to survive, dude. I know I'm gonna be a millionaire. I can't let nothing fuck with me. <clears throat> yeah, that's the thing where fuck like that shit where people forget that like people who fight people who have nothing to lose yeah. always lose. Cause my I, my cousin when he gets very aggro whenever he drinks. I remember going out and at the time he had a scholarship in football. Damn. And he was trying to pick a fight and I was like, dude, are you fucking stupid? Like, if he fucks up your leg or something, you literally lose your scholarship. Fuck, you're right. And you're being out here like trying to kick him and punch him and shit. Don't be a dumbass. Yeah. So. Yeah, and also I think the same as you. I'm like, dude, I'm gonna have this amazing life, and I'm gonna have all these achievements and shit like that. What am I going to fucking be at a bar? Somebody punches me in the throat and I lose my voice. Damn, dude, like, that would be fucking horrible. So there's a movie with Elvis Presley where they, because uh, they, I I can't remember if it was based on true events or not. Yeah. But like he almost lost his voice because somebody punched him. Damn. And after like four days, uh, you know, medically or like four months or something like that, like he was good. But uh uh yeah dude what the fuck somebody stabs you in the eye or some shit like that fuck like the thing about it it sounds crazy now but when you're drunk and you're brawling especially civilians 
Yeah, like a regular people, they're they're not fucking aiming at anything. They're just trying to swing for the head. They might miss if they catch your throat, nose, eyes, anything like that. Or some guy who really is used to violence, and he's like, "I'm just gonna fuck you up in everything and every way I can." Uh, he's like gouging your eyes out or some shit like that. And for what? Because you bumped into him and you look back, and he says, "What the fuck?" And you're like, "Oh my bad." Instead of saying "my bad," you're like, "What?" You know? Yeah. Dude, who who cares? Or because he called you a pussy in front of your friends or in front of a girl you were talking to. Yeah, to me, it's just like if I'm with a. Um, that's the thing with like, because uh, I have we have this friend who always talks about that. Like, oh, if he's on a date and some shit happens, he has to protect his dignity or whatever the fuck you call it. I'm like, dude, fuck your dignity. Yeah. Keep your life. Right. Keep your life. Hey, how about you keep your life? Yeah, and I lose mean, the that, dignity. Fuck that shit. Like I said, <laughs> the only reason I would is if they're hurting the girl physically. Yeah, yeah. That's the only reason I step in. But if they're fucking making fun of me, roasting me, I'll just take the L. I'm like, I'm probably not going to see this girl again. I probably won't fuck her. She'll think I'm a loser, but I'll be a, a live loser. Yeah. With all his body parts. I'll be a loser with a heartbeat. <laughs> yeah, a loser that's fucking walking normally. <laughs> uh, I mean, I remember in sixth grade, dude, I was talking. I was talking to this girl. I just go up to a girl, start talking to her. And, uh, you know, she's fucking giving me her number. Everything's going good. And then this guy comes and pushes me from the back. Holy shit. And he's like, that's my girl, dude. Why are you getting her number? And in my head, I'm thinking, why well, are you getting mad at, at me? Me, dude. I hate when guys... Dude, guys who do understand. that because Dennis said that. He was like, oh, if I ever catch the person I'm with cheating, yeah. I'll fuck the guy up. I'm like, dude, you're mad at the wrong guy. You're mad at the wrong person. Yeah. And they'll be like, why did you fuck my girl? Dude, he didn't rape her. Right. She consensually allowed him to go inside of her. Right. So who? Why would you? Who is in control in that situation? Like the guy's just trying to bust a nut, and you know what? He should. Yeah, he should. Uh, what well, you're talking to my girl, dude? I hate that shit. I'm like, dude, if she's your girl, then why she give me her number? You like, fucking that, idiot. That's what I'm thinking in my head. Now, of course, I know you don't say that because you're wiser. Exactly. I'm like, dude, uh, there's nothing I can see at this point. So what I do is I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna walk away. Like, I'm not going to come back and try to look cool in front of the girl or, like, try to reason with him. Like, hey, dude, I mean, she gave me her number, so logically she doesn't care about you. Uh, look at the facts here. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, that, none of that's going to work. That would be hilarious. He's though. just trying to look cool in front of his girl. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to walk away. So as I'm walking away, I hear, oh, you fucking pussy. Come back and fight me like a man. You're a fucking pussy. And I'm thinking, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to entertain this. I'm walking away. Yeah, that's good. Never going to get in a fight. Dude. You'll never see me get in a fight. Never. Never, dude. Yeah. Unless it's like, okay, I have to fight for my life and I have to do something. Well, but the thing, even then, I'll run. Yeah, yeah. I'll fucking run and look like a bitch. Yeah, but I remember getting... You've seen me run <laughs> away from trouble, dude. <laughs> yeah, I'll run fast as fuck. After you catch me, then okay, you've let me no option. I'm trapped in the wall. Then I'll fight. Yeah. And I have no option, but... Running, it's always an option for me. It's one. Yeah, the best way to win a fight is putting one foot in front of the other quickly. Just fucking run, dude. And uh, no, it's, it's the same thing because like with, um, I think the same. Uh, I don't know what, what it is, but like in my head, and uh, I, I guess this is something my dad told me, if like vaguely remember him saying this, which is when you fight, he was like fight to kill. So never fucking fight like loosely. Damn. Like if your mom is getting beat up or some shit like that, that's when you activate that part of your yourself. Basically, like you you flip the switch. So he was like, never be loose with fighting, because then like you get used to it and stuff like that. He's like, you should be scared if you're like in a confrontation situation. Fuck. Because like if there's like literally you're okay, this is borderline. There's nothing I can do. Then you flip that switch and you go balls to the wall. Now. What maybe once or twice in your life you should have to encounter that maybe. maybe like you should never really be in a position where like because most of the times you know you're aware when shit is about to go down i mean uh chris Delia yeah. has this whole joke where he's like learning jiu-jitsu and his friend is like why are you learning jiu-jitsu and he's like well in case some shit goes down and or like just in case anything he's like you always know when shit goes down what do you mean like you could always run or do some shit it's not like all of a sudden a ninja comes out of the bush <laughs> and is trying to beat your ass and yeah, and most people are like, oh, dude, you're a pussy. I'll defend my ego and stuff like that. I'm like, dude, I'll be a pussy. Yeah. I'll be the bitch today for sure. Right. And uh, that's the funny thing about like, uh, especially the male ego, dude. 
it's just like, oh, I got to defend it. So, yeah, I taught it. Even Dennis talking about this fight, dude. Like on the way on the walk back, he was like, yeah, I kicked his ass, man. Fuck yeah, and all this other shit. In my head, I'm like, dude, he didn't kick no one's ass. <laughs> right. He didn't kick anyone's ass. Yeah. I don't think he even landed a punch up until the three of them like jumped him. You know yeah. what I mean? I mean, uh, and it's even if you did, like, you don't win anything. You lose. I, I mean, yeah, he, he broke could, his fingers. Hopefully, he didn't. Yeah, but I mean, did, they're, they're probably just like strained. But that's like, a lot of fucking money, dude. If you did, if you fracture a fi- what for this fucking guy saying, "I'm a millionaire, I got a mansion." It's like, dude, let him have his mansion. Be like, all right, cool, but enjoy your mansion, bro. Like, wh- what? What's all this? What's all this, then? Yeah, um, I'll be like, give me a thousand dollars if you're a millionaire, man. Yeah, I hope but, Dennis was here to hear this conversation. <laughs> he probably wouldn't have listened to us anyway. Yeah, no, but that's the thing about like anger. Uh, when anger takes control, you stop being yourself. Literally, you stop being yourself, and you're a whole different person. And then you go back to reality. So there's no logic to it. So that guy getting mad at his girlfriend, she probably cheated on him with ten other guys, and he's crying and depressed in his shitty ass job. Because if you're getting mad at your girl doing that, you're the kind of person who doesn't really have the temper, uh, the temperance uh, for like self reflection. Right. So if you're not that kind of person, you probably don't have a high position in society. Like, cause you have to be very fucking cool, calm and collected if you're at the top, especially if you're a celebrity. Like if you're like really in those ranks, dude, the shit they hear and get and all that, like fuck. you have to be stoic as fuck. <laughs> yeah, dude, those paparazzis must get really annoying. They follow you everywhere. There's like, what the fuck? Yeah. I want to say like, oh, celebrity meltdown. Like Katy Perry screaming at paparazzi. Cause she's like, I can't get out. Cause they're literally in front of her car flashing and she's getting blind. Dude, I'm like night blind already. And yeah. imagine seeing that and like, eh. Um, why don't they have like a button dude that just produces this high pitched noise yeah or like something that it, like uh, maybe you carry like magnets or electromagnetic wave that deletes all footage from cameras so there's a thing that uh, you can wear that's uh, I forget what it is but basically when you take a picture the contrast fucks up and only focus on the jacket because of the material oh. so some people wear that like they'll try to take and it's just a black everything is black except the jacket because it absorbs all the light that's cool. Um, and some guy made it because he fucking hated celebrities. Or you do the Marilyn uh, Manson you mean paparazzis. thing. paparazzis. The what? You said celebrities. He hated celebrities. Oh no, Same. celebrities do that. So he hated paparazzis. Oh yeah, yeah. Anyways, so Marilyn Manson, he the rock star dude. He um, uh, one time he wrote "fuck you" like all across his face, so this uh, so they wouldn't be able to print that. Oh shit. And I was like, that's pretty fucking smart. Okay. And uh, I think if you were like a dick for a face or something like that, like a mask. Put on a dildo. Yeah. If you put on a dildo in your forehead. Right. You're good to go. You're good so to just go. Just carry a dildo <laughs> everywhere you go. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm about to head out. Yeah. Initiate. Uh, but I mean, it, it's. Um, I mean, have you ever been in a fight? Not a brawl like that. Okay. I've, I've always ran. Yeah. There have been ch- like uh, where people swing at me. Right. And there's a moment where you have to make the decision, but there's something I, I hear my parents' voice for some reason. I don't know if it's a good or a bad thing, but I hear my parents' voice. I hear my mom saying, Be wise, this is worth it, like all this other shit. And then cause when I get scared, my adrenaline shoots up and it's like, All right, someone's swinging at me, let me analyze this. And then the voice comes in and there's like this fucking little thing being like, dude, this is not worth it. We both basically there's a a moment of rationality before you know, because if I fight, then anger kicks in and then that voice is gone. But there's a moment right beforehand. And it's like, we both know this isn't worth it. And this is stupid. Yeah. And to me, since I'm a comedian and, and well, I have a comedic attitude towards a lot of things. Uh, I always laugh at like Kevin Hart talking about if we go to the movies and I'm with my girl in this six foot nine, a tumble slaps my, my girl's ass. Like, What's up, baby? And she she looks at me. She's like, "Why are you looking at me? Right. What do you want me to do? Do you see me? Yeah. He's five foot five. Like at the movie theater, we could talk about it afterwards. See what you did. Maybe it was your fault. Yeah. I don't know. I just got here. <laughs> right. <laughs> and he was saying like, I mean, I'm not gonna be the kind of person who's like squaring up with somebody who's gonna annihilate me. I'd be yeah. like, you know what? How do you how do you feel after it happened? Be like. Let's work through that. You know, let, we can sit down together. We'll work through the motions. It'd be like, yeah, you know, real man, if you're not fighting, which I'll be the bitch today. And yeah. after that, I'm like, yeah, dude, 
if a if you're with the kind of girl who's just like doesn't understand well first of all i mean obviously there's like some level of self-respect that you might lose or some bullshit fuck that no girl's worth that nothing is worth that walk right. away dude just walk away and uh it's so difficult to walk away because you know uh the male ego kicks in and the male ego I do think, and that situation thing. is rare. That's someone would just slap your girl's ass at a movie theater. Yeah, yeah, super rare. Or even with you, with your thing, like you're getting his girl's number. It's just like, dude, that did not warrant that response. Because yeah. let's say you were the wrong guy to do that too, right? Because I mean, I the was the wrong guy to do that too, but <laughs> I became the right guy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, what I'm saying is wrong for him in the sense that, like, I have met people who are like that. They're explosive, kind of like Dennis, and. You pick a fight with the wrong guy, and there's some people that fight to kill. Yeah. You know? Where, like, if he did it to, like, a psycho, he turns around, and he's like, oh, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. And they mean it. It's not like, oh, dude, I'm going to fuck you up and stuff like that. It's like, no, I'm here to die. It's like, dude, if you fight those people, I mean, you better fucking bring everything you have, and even then, there might be a chance that you, like, might not survive, like... Yeah, dude, honestly, I think, I think someone who you do that to... And they are gonna beat your ass. I don't think they'll start yelling or saying. No, Come they're over quiet. Here. They're quiet. They'll literally just walk up to you and just probably just start beating the shit out of you without saying anything. Like if you push them, without him saying, "Hey, let's fight," they will literally just probably turn around and beat the fuck out of you. Yeah. Um. Because if you hear the guy say, "Hey, come fight me," like, "Oh, that probably guy doesn't want to do anything." Yeah, he's just trying to look cool and trying to be Basically loud. Basically, way he's so saying it's scared. like, "Please leave, so I don't have to do this." Right. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, I mean, that stuff happens to me many times, dude. Where I'm talking to a girl, their boyfriend comes. Even in Vegas, dude, I was talking to that girl, um, and she told me she had a boyfriend. I was yeah. like, "That's fine. I mean, let's just hang out." And she wanted to keep hanging out, and then her boyfriend comes and pushes her. Okay. Which I was like, okay. I mean, at least he pushed her. And he comes up to me, you think my girl's hot? I was like, eh, I got a girlfriend. That's what I told him. And he's like, well, you think she's hot? I was like, I don't know, man. Um, so even in there, I mean, I knew he wasn't going to fight me because we were at the casino. Yeah. But uh, I mean, I don't understand that type of guy. Like, It's never happened to me when I've had girlfriends. But I understand, dude, you see your girlfriend hanging out with another random dude. Yeah. How do you not just break up with her? Yeah, I guess like, so. Like, what's the rationing behind no, that? Like, hey, I saw you talking to that guy. Don't do that. Like, you shouldn't have to tell a girl that. Like, hey, yeah. why did you get his number? Like, dude, if you see your girl getting a guy's number, why are they still with these girls? Do you know yeah, what they're To me, rationing? in my head, it, um, it's, uh, it's so stupid. I think it's like the fear that... But what's, gonna, why, why do they do it? Do you know what I they th- do? Yes. Why? I, yeah, they do it because they're afraid that, like, if... Th- it's so... Somebody like me, not that I'm like special or anything, right. but if I would see that, I would be very logical. Like, oh, we're not together anymore. That's it. Very simple. Like, there's yeah. no reason for me to like fuck somebody up or anything like that. It's just like, um, I was just telling her, hey, you're not in an um, emotional space to be in a relationship. Right. You don't have any boundaries. So therefore, we're not going to be in a relationship. Block her from everything. Like, just move on. Just I would literally on. handle it like that. Just completely cut it off. But I think that's because you have the like power to walk away right and i think those guys no matter what their girlfriend does they're not going to be able to walk away because they're too scared that they're going to end up alone not be able to get another girlfriend That's mm. what, it's just fear it's okay. just fear that they're not going to have enough ever and um dude everyone is scared that's the thing about it whenever you go out like first of all fight is scary like no matter who you are because yeah. like you have to like think about survival mode and second of all, like, even if uh, all these dynamics, like boyfriend, girlfriend, girlfriend talks to somebody or a boyfriend talks to another person, it's like, everyone is just scared of everything. So everyone can calm down a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I see my girlfriend talking to another guy, my first instinct, even if I do feel like jealous, it's like, okay, dude, it could be anyone. And second of all, dude, relax. Like, and third of all, like, you basically, this is what our brains do. We see something happen right. and we're like, oh, this is a worst case scenario. Yeah. She's fucking cheating me with some guy and be like, oh, this is uh, Greg. He's my uh, coworker. You know, we used to work at the company that I told you about years ago. So funny that I ran into him. He's visiting from San Francisco. Oh, nice to meet you. Yeah, well, I got to get going, but it was, uh, you guys have fun, da, da, da. And it, your brain was fucking with you the whole time. Who the fuck is this guy? He's like, did he hit that? Right. Probably did. But, you know, <laughs> 
It's, uh, dude, your brain always goes to worst case scenario for no fucking reason because that's what the brain does. And you have to acknowledge it. You have to really be aware of like, okay, why am I thinking this? It's because like the brain is trying to fucking, emotions don't make sense. Yeah. Like they just fucking kick into full gear and you have to like balance that shit out. So I don't know. I mean, this is coming from someone who's, uh, loses his temper very quickly. So I'm, uh, doing a lot of introspection here. Uh, Guys are funny though, dude. They're fucking bitches, dude. They're they're such little sensitive. How, how bitches, do women dude. see us? You know, well, not us. You know, because we're cool. <laughs> you know, I mean, I feel we're cool. But I've seen how, how do the women, other ones? Yeah, how do women see the other guys? Uh, uh, do they probably look at us like bitches? I was talking to. I remember going on a date and. Um, Girls test you, obviously. So right. those like say shit just to see what a reaction. And even though I am reacting internally, I'm like, eh, I don't want to show this because I know it's just my emotions, you know, and that's going to change in a few hours, if anything. Um, But uh, are you guys dipping? Take it easy. I guess Dennis and his boyfriend are going to climb the Hollywood sign. Yeah. So Dennis has this new boyfriend that he's walking away with right now. So. Yeah. They're going on a date to the Hollywood sign. Which is yeah. kind of cute, I guess. Yeah, didn't he do that with someone else? Yeah. yeah. He takes all his bitches there, huh? All right. Um, wait, what were you saying? About yeah, basically, the, like how girls view us. You asked me that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was talking oh, about you don't react to the tests they give you. Well, yeah. I mean, sometimes it, it's hard to like process and be like, oh, why? Are, what do people do this? Um, but I think like whenever anything happens, it's almost like optimistic nihilism. And nihilism means like you don't give a fuck about anything. There's no moral codes that you have. You're like nothing matters. But it's optimistic. Obviously, you want shit to go well. Right. You're not being negative. Uh, so when something happens, if a girl does something, it's just like looking at me and I'm like, okay, this, I'm aware that this is some bullshit she's doing for the reaction. Um, I don't know. I run through my options in my head. And it's just like, this is probably not going to fucking matter. Like, this does not matter that much. Yeah. Like, whatever emotion is kicking in right now, it does not fucking matter. Uh, so if she's like, uh, yeah, I remember, like, um, these three... I remember going out with a girl, and she was like, yeah, I mean, th these two other guys keep messaging me or something like that. That's what she was saying. And in my head, I was like, cool. Like, uh, the thing about it, because Jay Alvarez also talks about it, like, whenever, uh, you know, I guess whenever he had a, a relationship and she freaked out, she was like, I'm going out with the girls, probably going to get hit on line and stuff like that. And he was like, all right, have fun. Like, no matter what you do, first of all, you can't control what the other person is going to do. Yeah. And second of all, like, if they're testing you with some bullshit, you're like, okay. Be like, oh, I, I sucked three dicks last night. Well. Here's the fourth one. <laughs> there you go. I mean, it's different when you're in a relationship, uh, obviously. Um, but I guess I'm saying whenever you're with people and they're doing those dumbass tests, it's like, hey, what are we, fucking 12? Relax. No, no, but I don't blame girls because think about it. They have to do that. Yeah, yeah. Because they don't want to be with a guy who's unemotionally there. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they want to make sure you can handle pressure and you won't fucking snap out and go crazy on them and kill them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So... No, no, I mean, I don't blame them for doing it. It's more like... Uh, I guess I'm talking about like the system as a whole. I understand like girls, yeah, they have to put up with a lot of fucking bullshit and a lot of guys are stupid as shit and they're dangerous too because like they're in their ego so a girl rejects them and they get pissed off and they might hurt them or something. Like it's not as simple as them saying, no, I'm not interested because that might trigger a guy into like doing some crazy shit. So I get it. I guess it's more so like, uh, um, I don't know. Girls looking at us and being like, dude, why are you guys so uptight and stuff like that? And I was like, you're right. Why are we so uptight? Why, why the fuck do we care so much? Like, I, I think the difference is, the cool thing is that me and you, well, I don't know about you, but I started from the real bottom. Like, the real fucking bottom of the fucking barrel, dude. Like, could, like, you know, no women. Zero. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, in high school, I mean, dude, you needed to have a car to get laid. So many obstacles, right? So, when you start from zero... And all you've known is like rejection. Don't you think any of these rejections are gonna affect me? Yeah. I'm the god of rejection, dude. You think if someone calls me a loser, that's gonna affect me? I was born being called a loser. Like when I was, when uh, the, my mom gave birth at the hospital, the doctor didn't say it's a male or a female. He said it's a loser. <laughs> that's what he said. So that's the first thing that I heard. So none of that shit's gonna affect me. So when um. I think what happens is these guys probably did get laid a lot in high school. Yeah. You know, or they maybe had great success at the beginning. 
So when you have good success and then that happens, it hits you because it's like, oh, I thought I was cool. Yeah, yeah. What's going on here? Why don't you want me? I'm the cool guy. So that's when it, it affects them and they want to keep their brain can't handle not being cool. So yeah, they have no, to do 100%. something to yes. keep that status quo that I'm the cool guy. And this is true for everything because people have narratives right. in, their, in their head. So you have a narrative in your head, for example, like... Um, Money. Let's say you were born rich. Yeah, you were born rich. Or even with marriages, it happens all the time. I was like, no, we're happy marriage. You know, we're fine. You're putting up with a whole bunch of bullshit. Right. And it's hard for you to say, this is not fucking working. Exactly. I'm going to lose my life like and all this other shit. I had to come to terms with reality. With like, I'm still working through it. But there was like times where in my head, I was just like, I'm the most... Um, I would say not even, I never thought I was the best looking. Right. I never had that thought in my head. I, I knew I was just like, okay, I'm receiving certain feedback. Yeah. But even then, there was a little bit of skepticism, but it's natural for it to get a little bit to your head. And then I'm this person who was like, oh, yeah, I'm very good looking and stuff like that. And um, then I realized when I moved here and you have to like talk to strangers and shit, I'm like, that was one of the first signs, even though I didn't fully accept it. I was just like, oh, this is... I'm in a completely different game. I'm not in Costa Rica in the small town anymore. Mm. I'm in the real world. Like it felt big. Right. You know, and dude, the reality is, um, I mean, there's a lot of harsh truths to life and yeah, I mean, looks matter, money matters and all this other shit for everything, not even romantically for like having a group group of friends for having, uh, not that you need money to have a good group of friends. What I'm saying is like, typically the more accomplished you are, you'll find like-minded people and therefore those people you can assume share your same values and morals. So they'll probably make good friends. At yeah. least some of them. You'll find a few people, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, I guess what I'm saying with all this is like, <laughs> yeah, with me, uh, I was just like, oh, uh, I don't have the big stick. That's for a fucking fact. Even though I'm a little bit uh, taller than normal, there's like, uh, Nothing can take away what you have inside, like who you are and shit like that, basically. So I realized, oh, I don't have it. Like what's inside what you need to like orchestrate all these things that I want. Uh, basically, my point with all this is, um, personally speaking, I can't talk for everybody, uh, but I assume it's true for most people. There are hard truths that you don't want to accept. Right. For everything. Yeah. And one of the truths for me was like, oh, I'm not the funniest. Yeah. I'm not the most That's charming. <laughs> And uh, no, but it was like, it was hard. Like I like as it's slowly kicking in and I was like, I'm not the smoothest. And that one hit hard. That one hit hard? You because thought you were smooth or what? I thought it was smooth char- criminal. Yeah, 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 here, yeah. I, I thought it was like butter, you know, in the conversations. And in retrospect, I'm like, oh, there's a lot of things that I say that are mega awkward and they have no context. So people like, it's like dropping a bomb and people are like, what the fuck? Mm, okay. So I'm like, okay, I'm not cool. Like in my group of friends, they knew me. So I understand right. that context, but I'm like, oh, I have to recalibrate this whole thing. Cause I used to go really hard. Yeah. You know, I used to go overboard. So I'm like, all right, let me dial back down. And, um, uh, but other than that, when people call me like physically ugly, uh, that is the one thing that I feel like invincible, not mm-hmm. in the sense where I think I'm the most attractive, but when I remember like there was this girl in sixth grade and it was like, you have chicken legs or something like that. And I was like, in my head, I was like, I don't understand what that means. And then she was like, you're ugly and all this. I was like, you're wrong. What do you mean I'm ugly? Like, I have not, like, this is, we both know this is incorrect. Right. Type shit. And it wasn't like, oh, I'm hot. What the fuck are you talking about? I got a million dollars. I got a mansion. It wasn't that. It was more like, oh, you're just saying stupid shit at this point. Oh, this moon is made out of cheese type shit. Um, because I'm looking at the world from traditional standard, you know, point of views and all this. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we all have these narratives that we tell ourselves in our head so we can cope with, you know, a lot of realities that we don't want to change. And, uh, yeah, one of the realities is, uh, I'm very awkward, very fucking awkward. I get pressure when I'm in social, I have a little bit of social anxiety because I feel the need to perform. Like everybody mm. needs to be laughing and I need to be doing them like silence. I feel like everyone's staring at me sometimes and I'm like, okay. it's not that serious. You know what I mean? But, um. So I hate whenever we're in a group and no one's talking. You know, I'm very sensitive to how people are feeling, like mega sensitive. Wow. So if there's a girl, like it'll happen mainly with girls because 
uh, we'll be in a group and I mean, it's happened before, like in one of those situations and she's saying something and everyone's kind of ignoring her. I empathize a lot. Yeah. And I was like, I know she's trying to get out and I, I need to acknowledge it because otherwise the whole energy's fucked up and it's all pretend time. Um, but yeah, that's uh, as far as narratives is everyone's lying to themselves about something and you have to constantly check yourself. It's like, dude, what am I doing? Like, is this really, you know what I mean? Yeah, I you guess. had one of those things recently. Which one? You, where like Nothing you're trying to be less toxic. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, but I mean the funny. I side, guess yeah. I'm toxic, <laughs> dude. I mean, I don't know. I think uh, no, no, not no, no. I mean, we're being funny when we say that, but it's more so like. No, no. I think I think what it is, dude. Me and you are just used to extreme shit. I mean, let me tell you what kind of extreme I'm used to, so you know where I'm come from. Yeah. You know. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I've literally slept on the floor most of my life. Even now, I still sleep on the floor. Yeah. I like the floor. You're I'm like sure I'm going to be... Castaway, Tom Hanks and Castaway. No, dude, I'm sure I'm still going to be a millionaire and I'll be sleeping on the floor. Yeah. Like, I will. I know I am. You just make the floor really nice. Yeah, I'm just used to the floor. Like, the floor <laughs> feels good for my back. Uh, makes me feel like I'm at home. I feel comfortable. A bed is weird to me, dude. <laughs> I'm like, I'm in another world when I get in a bed. I'm not used Water? to Water? Yeah, like, what the fuck is this soft stuff, dude? Let me... When I... You lay on the floor. I'm like, oh, dude, yeah, this is home. Um, so, dude, I'm already used to extremes, fucking situations, or where I sleep. No, imagine someone who was born in a nice house, right? Yeah. And then they have to live in a mobile home. To them, that hurts their ego. Yeah, that's major downgrade. Right. So I know they're gonna have problems with like how they deal. With, like, imagine them inviting friends to their mobile home. To them, that would be really hurtful. That would suck. They would feel yeah. like, uh, I mean, they would destroy their ego. So they'd probably like maybe lash out on their husband, even though their husband's trying to do the best. Or like maybe the husband lashing out on the wife because they're not okay with that situation. Yeah. But to me, dude, we're having a mobile home. It's like, holy shit, dude, come party at my fucking house, bro. It's yeah. got three rooms, <laughs> three fucking rooms. You know, we can do a lot of crazy shit. Uh, so that's why, dude, I really like, I wish, you know, it sucks for people who started at the top it sucks i empathize even though like oh they have money it sucks dude uh, i would rather start from the bottom and work my way up because you enjoy fucking everything dude um same shit with girls i mean let me tell you a story i think i was i think i was uh maybe 14 i think maybe i was 14 and uh dude i had a lot of fucking acne on my face but i still had balls you know yeah. even though i still had a lot of acne and i know it was down bad i still had balls because i had to grow balls dude like i was forced to grow balls genetically yeah yeah i mean it's like it's not like uh you know some guys get it easy they're in, they go to parties they're in situations where there's women around them but to me dude the only way i would be around a girl is if i went up and talked to her mm. i had to do it. it was either i die alone and i just stay in my room masturbating jacking off which i also did but i'm saying like uh or i grew some balls and like dude the only way i'm probably gonna get laid is if i talk to girls yeah they're never gonna come to me never I have to go and do this. So I had to grow this fucking, I had to fucking trick my brain. I don't know what, what the fuck I had to do, bro. But I'm like, this is what I have to do. Yeah. This is my path in life. I wish it was easier, but it's not. So I was in Mexico with my, uh, one of my little cousins. He was probably like maybe eight years old, maybe, maybe 10, maybe he must be 10. And I'm 14, maybe 15. You know, we're at this crazy, uh, huge festival, huge yeah. festival. There's maybe like a thousand people. And then there's this band, Mexican band playing on stage and couples are dancing together you know it's i mean dude the floor is dirt yeah yeah this is dirt floor dude it's <laughs> out there in the woods not the best and uh you know everybody's dancing i don't know how to dance i've never learned how to dance any of those type of mexican dances uh no one ever taught me but i'm still gonna ask girls to dance even though yeah, i don't course. know um so i told my cousin watch this you know what i'm saying i'm trying to, t I'm uh, trying to show them how to like, talk to girls what let me lead the way yeah i'm yeah. like watch this bro let me show you because he was scared to talk to girls i'm like hey dude don't be scared watch watch your big cousin here do the talk i'm like watch this so i go up to the first girl and i'm like you know i'm you know what i'm saying I'm, I'm feeling it dude. i'm like dude i'm not i'm not the best good looking <laughs> fucker dude but i know something's gonna happen yeah you know what i'm saying so i go up and i'm like hey do you want to dance she says no I'm like okay you know what strike one strike one it's all right it's all right pick ourselves up it's all right and my cousin of course he laughs at me ah you gotta reject i'm like i'm like relax it's it's a number game yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I told, I told me, relax young bull it's a numbers game okay yeah, we're just yeah, getting yeah. to the fun part all right yeah. so i'm like 
let's go talk to that over there come with me so we go to the i go talk hey what's up do you want to dance little bounce yeah no i'm like all right <laughs> hey it's a numbers game remember that you know <laughs> third girl you know what i'm saying third girl fourth girl fifth girl but yeah, fifth yeah. girl i'm like all right what's going on here i'm like this is this this is weird five rejections in a row damn i'm like huh am i too handsome for these people you know yeah yeah what's going on here what's wrong with them maybe, yeah maybe they're afraid to dance with my greatness yeah, um, yeah. but i mean five rejections and i'm like damn dude that's 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 a lot <laughs> <laughs> and uh, i i still don't know why dude, what was going on maybe they knew i couldn't dance because you do have because basically the girls don't want to dance with guys who don't know how to dance because it's embarrassing they look embarrassed uh yeah. but they didn't even give me a try to embarrass them i know which was weird uh let me embarrass you first and then you can make the decision they can feel it <laughs> Yeah, I, dude, maybe I had too much acne, dude, that it was, you know, like, oh, and I had a lot. So, I mean, I can't blame them, uh, but I don't know what's going on. I, mean, I was trying my best. I mean, I was dressed good, so I don't know what's going on. But basically, dude, I'm like, all right, it's a numbers game. Dude, relax, young boy. I can tell him, like, we'll, we'll get one. We'll catch one. So I go out another one, another one, dude. I think it was up to 20 rejections. And I was like, damn, dude, I, I don't know, man. I don't know what the fuck's going on. I'm looking at it, and I'm like, dude, this never happens. Dude, trust me, dude, this doesn't happen. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to give up. I'm already 20 down. I mean, dude, another one's not going to fucking stop me. So, dude, I pretty much ask every girl there. And they all say no. Holy and up shit. Up to this day, I still don't. Maybe someone put a curse on me. I don't know what yeah. happened. Not one yes, dude. I think I probably ask over 100 girls, dude. 100? 100, That's dude. impossible. No, it's not. It's not when you're me, dude. It's not when you're me and you're going out. You're like a tear to uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what's going on, dude. I mean... Uh, That's tough. Yeah, I mean, he saw all those rejections. So after that day, he probably looked at me like a loser. Yeah. You know, how did you get rejected by 100 women? Um, now, you think a guy 14 to 15 years old getting rejected by 100 women <laughs> dude, in that under is three insanity. hours, you think he's going to get hurt from a rejection? He will. Yeah. But I mean, it's, much. It's, you think I'm going to get mad because someone rejected me? Do you think it's going to hurt me that someone makes fun of me? Dude, I literally got rejected to my face by a hundred women. Yeah. And at that young, which really it fucks you up psychologically. Because it's like, well, so nobody in the world wants me or what's going yeah. on? Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, still, I still kept trying. I don't know what happened. I think we had to leave. Otherwise, I would have fucking kept trying, dude. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, man, I mean, so that's where I'm coming from. I'm coming from the very bottom like nothing everything against me so dude anything positive yeah to it's me it's so like big, it's fucking yeah. amazing i'm like oh shit okay you know yeah i think i think um no you might be onto something and, and uh uh my dad told me this because i talked to him and i was like hey how come you didn't push me harder like push me and my brother harder to, to what for what just like to do more shit, to be more di like, uh, to be more disciplined. Cause we're, I mean, we're always in sports. Like that's something that he at least was very adamant about. We're like in swimming, basketball, and it was intense. Like, uh, we did boxing for a little bit, but he didn't want us to do boxing. He was like, I don't want you guys breaking your noses and all that shit too early. Uh, cause he did boxing and he has like kind of a crooked nose a little bit. Right. Um, and I fucking hated it because it was really cold water swimming for years. I mean, it was like five fucking years since I was Damn. like 10 years old, like all the way to like 15. He like pushed us and he was like, no, you have to go here. And it was like freezing cold water. Dude, when you go into the pool, it's not like the pools here in America. Right. The area that we live in Costa Rica, I was like, it was like, I basically, uh, the only way, and everyone knew this in the swim team, it was like you took a cold shower before you went What's in the pool so yeah. there so the shock is less but still obviously you went in and you just like fucking swam as fast as you could for like the first laps and then your your body gets used to it basically you go numb it's not your body gets used to it it's you would walk out and i had purple fingers and like purple lips because it was, was so that cold. healthy or yeah it's fine like when it gets bad is the temperature changes so if you go out and then it's super hot then that fucks with you okay. um but yeah, because you're like moving. So it's it's just like people who don't have too much fat experience that. Okay. And I was, I mean, I was even skinnier than I was now. Just imagine me. Damn. But so we had that aspect to it. But um, I told him, you shouldn't have let me quit like these things like basketball, for example. 
uh, or, you know, even when I was playing bass, like I had this teacher uh, and I was like, oh, I don't really want to take lessons with him anymore. I just want to learn on my own, which I always prefer doing anyways. But he said, I wanted to, I wanted to put you guys under a lot of pressure. And he's the kind of dad who like, he dropped my brother in the middle of the city, like in the capital Costa Rica. And he was like, forgot how to get back home. And he would leave. So Damn. like, that's good skill. So he's forced to talk to people, ask for directions. My mom obviously went batshit crazy when she heard he did that. Dude, that's crazy. <laughs> but um, that's the reason why he didn't do it with me. Okay. Because my brother took me- most of the beating. And um, and he was like, yeah, your mom just stopped me. And she was just like really adamant. And uh, I mean, I there was all these complications when I was born. So I, we, me and my brother almost died. So like my mom was extra kind of careful extra and protective. Careful. Uh, that's why she fed us really good. Like made sure there's no sugar in the house. Like Damn. when we had sugar cereal, I mean, it was like a miracle and it was always at a friend's house and she would always call the mom and be like hey i know i like she wasn't like one of those psycho karens but she was like uh they typically don't need sugar so if you have something else if you can give them that'd be great um but yeah i mean dude we had a really good upbringing i think um uh i just got spoiled i think a little bit too much towards the like uh at some point in my life Mm -hmm. where i guess like when my mom saw my dad putting pressure on me he was like you have to be in the swim team there's no debate like, so Monday through Friday, every day at three o'clock, we had to walk from the house to the swim, to the swimming pool. That was like a 30 minute walk, I remember. And it was kind of scary too, because you're walking through the city as a kid. I'm no 10 years old. Damn. So like she w- she started, um, yeah, my mom just gave a lot of pushback. And I mean, it was natural for the mom. And yeah. uh, my dad was like, yeah, I kind of regret not. But I saw your mom and she was, you know, going through this emotional turmoil, like every time she tried to push. And I think that because you have this background, you know, of like coming from uh, a lot of pressure, your tolerance is higher for a lot of things. I think I have a lot of diva tendencies. If I was a rich kid, I for sure, there'd be dead hookers everywhere, cocaine. Like, yeah, I mean, we, we would all be like that, dude. It's um, my cousins, uh, like that's, they set the example for what a... Sh- um, I probably I don't know how much I should say. I was about I mean, to really like, we're up to to our I don't think anybody's watching up to this. Yeah, point. yeah, I know. I guess at this point it's this conversation between minutes. us. <laughs> but yeah, I have like this cousin and she's so shitty. Like her attitude. Now, I don't know anymore. I don't want to talk bad of about I mean, her people don't change. Yeah, I guess I guess people don't change. Uh if she listens to this, this is something that I would tell her directly. I'm like, she's very spoiled very spoiled she never got no damn never like and it, uh, this has been known like uh, you know throughout everything throughout history yeah throughout history <laughs> <laughs> and um but i saw it like a few times in my life and i was always amazed because even then as a kid i knew i was like something is off um because it would be screaming throwing tantrums i want cake for example and literally the parents would drive someplace get cake and give it to the kid and i was like dude that cannot fucking be good for your character yeah, that can't if you get good. everything you fucking ask for and it reflects you know and luckily um one of my cousins who was brought up that way he started recognizing oh shit i'm actually really spoiled mm. so we started talking because him and i are very very close yeah and i ch- checked him a couple times i was just like dude you're fucking you're being a little bitch right now and like no one's telling you this but like you're going to go out into the real world. You're going to start working and you can't fucking handle that. And I think he slowly started getting it. He's gotten a lot better. Uh, but he's he's like, yeah, dude, our family's kind of crazy, honestly. And there, are, there is, a, <laughs> I mean, every family has it. So I think, dude, uh, you know, nature, nurture, that's the whole argument, right? Do, who, you, who are you? Like, uh, does it have to do with where you came from and how you were raised? Because uh, some people grow up in very wealthy homes and they're very level-headed. They're very put together. They recognize, hey, I come from a lot of wealth. Um, so I think self-awareness is exclusive to whether you're rich or poor. It's just like, however you get it, make sure you get it. It's like, make sure you're like fucking self-aware and shit like that. Uh, and yeah, being self-aware. Um, yeah, some of the things that recognize, I get mad easily because my, for the longest time, I was really cool in high school. <laughs> right. like i didn't realize this because it was just like in high school i just wanted to fuck around and laugh but because of that attitude 
I guess that naturally, like, I wasn't a dick. Yeah. Uh, well, some people would argue that. Um, but yeah, people always liked me. Like, I never really had, like, I mean, I had one bully when I was a kid. And some people didn't like me, but, like, those people who didn't like me, um, no one was on their side. Usually everyone was on my side, literally. Like, oh, that guy's just being a dick. But people always liked me, and I think it was, uh, it's a culture shock, or, like, it's a shock whenever it's, like, oh, uh, there's all these pieces of my character that I have to develop. Like, I've, I think I'm very sweet and empathetic, but I'm, I can be really ruthless sometimes, you know, and cut people. And it's like, all right, let me slow down a little bit. That's not funny. Uh, let me ease up a little bit on the knife twisting. Um, and when people call you out, my defenses go up and it's just like, oh, you don't get it. You're stupid. Right. This is funny. And then in retrospect, it's like, they're probably right. Most of the times when people call you out and stuff, uh, they're probably right. Now they can be wrong too. Yeah. Which is why you have to be really careful with like what you accept. Cause I've gotten feedback where it's just like, Phil, you're too, uh, uh, you're too friendly. Mm. And what I got, and I was like, Oh, what does that mean? It's just like, Oh, well you're giving the wrong impression. Like whenever you're you know, smiling and, and talking to, you know, this was in the church youth group and other occasions. So I was like, uh, I don't think so. Yeah, well, what were they trying to get at with that? What do you mean you're giving like you're trying to smash, or what do you what what, are they, what were they getting at? Yeah, I think like the maybe were they were jealous. They they kept saying, "Oh, Phil, you're no." They said, "Phil, you're flirting too much with like people." So they were jealous. Yeah, I think so. To some it's extent, probably the pastor trying to smash. Yeah, and uh, yeah, there's a, I mean bullshit happens uh, like that where like people are just but even including myself like where people are very sensitive towards one particular area in their lives where they just have kept telling themselves this is who i am yeah and everyone has that it's just like you have to i guess if you're aware you can take preemptive steps not when it gets there because when it gets there it's too late it's like okay so for example like uh kind of annoys me when youtubers are loud and throwing shit in the hotel room and stuff like that um, I mean, when Cece's birthday and the whole thing, they're throwing cake everywhere. And I'm like, well, the throwing part is not bad if they pick it up. I but th- what yeah. did I say? I said something that the response that they gave me was like, oh, yeah. Well, All right, dude. Now that's what did you say? Because I was like, hey, who's going to pick the cake up? I think I said that like because I, I was OK with them throwing it. Oh, yeah. We're 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 not clean. Uh, we're throwers. We're not cleaners or something like yeah, that. We're throwers. We're not cleaners or something like that. Yeah. When they said that. If that was my hotel room, I mean, I know CZ has a higher tolerance and everything, and he expected that. Right. But for example, like, um, I never understood that. I guess I never understood that. It's just like, oh, you're just being a dick. You understand you're being a dick. Right. Like, even if you're within the context of YouTube and everything, you're being a dick, dude. Like, who? because that's the thing about, like, somebody has to do it. Yeah. So who's going to do it? And it's like, uh, it's kind of like taking a shit, putting it all over the wall, and it's like, all right. It's like, well, I'm a shit sprayer, not a shit cleaner. Yeah. It's like, well, you're just saying you're a shitty human being. That's all you're saying. And that's my personal opinion. And whether people think it's right or wrong, that's up to them. But it's like, uh, yeah, go get hugged more as a child or something. Like, you need more love as a child to to call that attention. But I'm pretty sure I have those tendencies as well where, like, you know... um, yeah, I don't know. It, it's weird how people are and they grow up and stuff like that. But I think like you have been the rare examples in my life of people who uh, you default more to gratitude a lot more. I think that's the difference where uh, even though the, obviously there are times, it's not that you don't recognize like some situations fucking suck dick. Right. You're like, wow, dude, this fucking blows ass. But it's more like your default is closer to gratitude than someone like me, for example, where I'm like... Okay, he's starting to get pissed and I need to go in control mode. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm going to like control this situation now uh, rather than, um, you know what? It's not that bad. Uh, Yeah, I guess they're throwing cake everywhere and shit like that. They're having their fun and yeah, it sucks that they didn't clean it up. But uh, what can I do? It's more so like that. And Uh, I think, yeah, I think it is more of the, the giving up control of situations that helps just uh, ease any type of anger or anything frustration like oh i mean i have no control over this mm. so i'm just gonna let it go yeah do you get pissed how often do you get upset like generally i, I, upset I think like i that? get mad 
Like genuinely. Yeah. Well, not not even mad. I guess it frustrates me when um, when people can't be logical. If that makes <laughs> sense. Like when I'm trying to be empathetic and like explain both sides. Like you know what, I was wrong, but look, here's how you also were wrong. And they don't even ex- yeah they don't even accept like the bare minimum of saying oh you know what I see that you're accepting that you're wrong because I by when you say you know what I was wrong that that makes it easier for people to say oh okay you it know it relieves the pressure of like I have to be the exactly. one exactly right. yeah, they can yeah. say you know what I you know what now that you say you're wrong yeah I probably was wrong too so it's more like when I uh, when I come with like when I encounter people that they can never rationally understand things. Yeah, like they they make up stories, or they lie. They completely lie to your face, making up stories of the situation how it went down, just so they never made no, anything wrong. Because if it's the narrative they tell themselves, exactly, and that's why we lie to ourselves, and that's so fucking dangerous. That is really li- dangerous when you lie. Lying to other people is a different thing. As long as you're like, oh fuck, I did lie to them because I was trying to protect it, and you acknowledge it. Like right. even if it's just you in your room, and you're like, okay, yeah, let me try not to do that more. But if you're like, no, that is the truth, then you get into a place where reality is completely warped. Exactly. Because something is going to happen outside of what you think reality is. And you're like, oh, this doesn't belong here. When, yeah, it, it's the natural current of events. Like, um, Yeah, I think that's the only thing that really frustrates me because it's, it's more like, uh, I mean, it's like, dude, I don't understand how you can... I just don't understand how you can really lie this much. I guess that <laughs> aspect, I'm like, dude, how can you lie this much to yourself and like actually believe is the truth? Yeah. And uh, I mean, I try to argue logically and be empathetic, but then now after doing it a couple of times with different people, I realize, oh, the best thing to do in that scenario is just to agree with them and then just walk away and probably yeah. never talk to those people again. Yeah. That's probably what I'm just going to do now. Like, oh, okay, yeah, I mean, yeah, you were right, dude. I'm sorry. Just walk away and then just... You know who said that? Robert Downey Jr. said that. He was just like, I've come to a point in my career where I smile, I nod, and then I do whatever the fuck I was going to do anyway. And I'm pretty sure it happens so much in entertainment or whenever you're running things, you're working with professionally, that is probably the most upsetting situation where that happens. Because with a friend, it is annoying and you're like, oh, what the fuck? But whenever it's like somebody you're working with or something, it's like, Jesus. Yeah. Like you have to. That would suck to have a business partner like that. Or yeah. anybody that you're working on a project and they are like that. I My biggest. Okay. So uh, me and my dad, we have um, a complicated relationship sometimes. Him and I fight a lot. A mm. lot more than we used to. Yeah. I've learned how to like let things go a lot more because I'm like, dude, he's about to die. Damn. No, I mean, dude, realistically, because he's 73. Damn. Um, Let's say 10 more years go by. Yeah, you probably need to uh, just keep it peaceful and because it, no, no, it's going to hit you, dude. Like, oh, I should have done so many things. No, ex- that fight was stupid. The time we had alone, I wasted it arguing. Exactly. You wasted it arguing and doing all this. And I'm starting to come to terms with that a lot more. And uh, I was talking with my brother about this because he, I mean, he lives with him right now. Right. And I, I mean, I under, I've lived with them before. They're not necessarily easy people to live with. I'm pretty sure I, I'm not easy to live with. So imagine four people who are difficult to live with living Damn. together. But uh, um, yeah, I don't know. Like I, I just started getting all there. I'm like, um, I'm not going to look back on this fight. I'm not going to look back at any of this. So we went out fishing and I'm starting to get annoyed because of something. I'm uh, like the fucking rod. And I was like, the fuck are we doing here or like no a, a more recent example is my mom he was like hey let's paint i was like oh, i don't want to do that and the pain and all this. she was like no come on come on and i was like nah and i was like what the fuck am i saying i'm gonna be on my phone or just laying on the couch i'm not gonna remember laying on the couch yeah so i'm like you know what mom i'm sorry i was being a little bitch that's what i told her i was like let's fucking paint so very aggressive or creatively and we started painting and we're talking and we had a great time and i was like I just discovered I like painting because I mm. suck at it. And it's like this meditative thing. And to do with friends, dude, that's fucking so much fun. So we should try it with some time. And you just paint whatever. Whatever. It does not fucking matter. Now, as paint. you say that, I'm nodding my head yes. But I know it's never going to happen. No, correct. So you do it on a <laughs> date. That's like the next best thing. Um, but what I'm saying is like, uh, yeah, all these fights and all this other bullshit that happens, like whenever 
I'm fighting with my dad is because I recognize like, for example, with his health, I used to like when he was like, uh, Oh yeah. I remember like try not to get him to eat sugar and all that. Yeah. I would throw it away. And And you would get mad because I understand why you would get mad because it's like, Hey, this is for you. Yeah. This is not like, I don't understand why what's going on. Yeah. It was like, it was very frustrating because it was just like, um, I hate that I love you because I need to, I feel like I need to do yeah, this. Otherwise you say, uh, fuck that guy. Yeah, who, fuck that uh, who cares? Guy, who cares? But since it's your dad's like, I have <laughs> to take care of <laughs> I you. No, dude. And it's, it was so frustrating. And the worst part is my brother and my mom were kind of like, no, you're going too hard on him. I'm like, fuck no. Right. Why are you letting him eat it? Like literally he could be diabetic and all this other shit. So I'm throwing the Coke away down the drain and they're screaming at me. And I, <laughs> dude, I was like, and the thing about it is like, I realized, oh, I know why I get so frustrated at my dad because I'm afraid of being the stubborn. Mm. If I'm that guy, right? fuck that guy. Like right. that's what's going through my head. So I'm like, oh my God, I'm my dad. Damn. I'm my dad in a lot of different scenarios, which is not wrong. He has a lot of very admirable qualities, but it's more so like... Uh, I mean, I don't think you were that stubborn, dude. I've never seen you be uh, really stubborn on something. You always kind of try to find a medium. I think, uh, I what think happens, I'm stubborn on things. <laughs> I think you are. I think what happens with me, I get really hot and I'm like protecting this idea because I was like, I want to make sure you believe in it as right. much as you're saying I'm wrong. Like yeah. when someone says, oh, I think you're, dude, I don't think that was funny. You're just being mean. I was like, well, let me really push again. I'm like, no, fuck you. It was funny. And then once things come down, I'm just like, okay, yeah, this isn't that funny or something like that. Uh I think it's good that you're stubborn though because it it forces people because you listen to logic at some point even yeah, if yeah. it's not immediately. So being stubborn is not always a bad thing because you force people to come up with good, new ways of explaining why yeah, they, they really want that They point. have to back up in a very logical way why you know this behavior is incorrect. So for example, because of all these arguments we've had in the friends group, I've learned, oh, I have to keep tab like not tabs, kind of tabs honestly yeah. like ex- specific examples because if i'm like if i tell one of our friends like maurice for example i'm like dude you're being your soul and your fucking ego you're always like this and he's like when else when else when else right and that pisses me off and i was like what do you mean when else you know when else right and you're gonna force me to do all this homework and shit like that and then it's better if you're like here you fucking pull up receipts yeah you pull up receipts <laughs> but uh no i mean uh I mean, there's good and bad to everything, but I think like you are stubborn, but you listen to logic. So it complements. Yeah, each other eventually well. I'll really like, why, why? I'll be like, why, why feel like blah, blah, this. Show me the facts. Yeah, you put what's pressure, going on. You put pressure on the argument. And if the truth is the argument. If it's a good argument. I'll be like, you know what? You got me. It's yeah. a good <laughs> argument. Um, and, uh, and then you can let it go. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I think that's, that's one thing why I butt heads with my dad. And I bought heads with people who are stubborn too. Like, I'm, like uh, you're right. I think I think the difference is they're stubborn just for being stubborn, and they're stubborn. And then once you give them a good logical fact, they're like, you know what? Yeah. They might not admit it at that moment, but they'll come back like a few moments later. You know what? You were right. Yeah. Uh, and that's what happened with my dad with the health shit. I went back to visit them. He had lost thirty pounds. He's really like in way better shape. And he was like, yeah, the doctor told me if I keep eating the way I'm eating. I could be, I'm, I'm like a month away from being diabetic. Damn. So, which is the shit I was screaming for like a year and a half. Right. And then when he said that, there was a side of me where I was like, I want to put banners everywhere. I want to hire a little, uh, you know, those planes that leave the smoke trail, say, I fucking told you so, what the fuck, and all this. And at that point, that's where like, you know, I'm like, dude, I'm not going to remember. Who cares who was right? Who cares? And yeah, I mean, it is harder because I always try to get my family to eat healthy. Even though I'm not eating healthy anymore, I wasn't <laughs> eating healthy at the beginning. I was making juices. Or here and here, I bought the juicer and that. Yeah. Um, There's like rotten carrots right now that I bought because I was doing the juice shit too. And yeah. Just, but I always try to get my family to eat healthy and it's just, it's just like, dude, why are y'all eating McDonald's every day? Yeah. Like, I mean, I get maybe if you're young, I'll still let it slide a little bit. If you throw in some vegetables in there, but I mean, dude, when you get older, you really have to protect your health and drinking like three sodas a day. I'm like, dude, this, none of this yeah. is healthy. And I would throw the sodas away, but they would buy more and I would hide them and they would buy more. So it's like, it frustrates you because 
it's like they can't stop, but it's bad for them. Yeah. And you show them videos of how much soda is bad and all this, and they still decide to do it. No, it's just, dude, I mean, say, uh, you're uh -huh. preaching to the choir. So, I mean, and then they, they then they, they say things like... I heard your mom uh, once say, uh, no, la azúcar te da fuerzas. Yeah, they make... They, they and say, the, all these arguments... <laughs> and like when you're trying to like <laughs> teach them something, they say a joke like that. And then, then that pisses it is you funny, off. Then that pisses you off. It just makes you madder. Uh -huh. But uh, no, and then when people bring up stuff like, um, oh, the government's doing all this, blah, blah. And I'm like, dude, if you can't change that you can't drink soda when you know it's bad for you, how do you expect the government to make this huge change? Yeah, exactly. No, and it, it's it's also very self-revealing in the sense of like when I was screaming at my dad, I was like, oh, what other things do I have that people are screaming at me? And me and my cousin have like this accountability thing in the family. And the same thing with my brother. He knows when he calls me and he asks me something, I know it's my role to be very harsh. Not harsh mean, but right. I'm like... So, for example, he was showing me this girl and uh, he was like, yeah, I'm thinking of marrying her or something like that. Damn. Like, he's not thinking of marrying her. He was like, I thought of marriage, you know, okay. and I, don't, I think she could be... Basically, he's not dismissing her. And he's talking to me about her and... um. I mean, it, it wasn't a good fit. It's not the best? Like as in personality-wise, body-wise? or Well, physically, I told him, because um, he was saying, oh, she's super hot. Like, I was like, okay, what do you rate this person? What are you, because I know you have a good rule. When people tell you, hey, look at my girlfriend or look at this girl, like super rule, you're really kind to them. Yeah. And I mean, I, I think I should take more into that. My <laughs> yeah, because first the, thought the, is, the, the, she's <laughs> horrible. She's a gargoyle in one. What are you doing? <laughs> What are you doing? Those are my she, first Yeah, thoughts. she belongs at the top of the cathedral guarding from demons. You right. Know, the gargoyles. Um, um, yeah, but the thing, the reason why is because you have to like, I forget the expression, but it's like uh, sweet as honey, but like. Ease him into it? Yeah, basically ease into, like when you, when you put down a dog. Like, it, it's not like you go there and chop the fucking head off. Like, you know, you, uh, I have vet, vets have like all this process, like the family saying goodbye. You talk, the, some of the vets like talk to the dog and it's like, it's okay. You know, they give them like the energy because the dog is reciprocating and they drip, you know, the, uh, the thing into their heart little by little. And it has the same effect, whether you chop someone's head off and, or kill it with honey. Uh, and with my brother, like I recognize, um, I mean, everyone has like sense of, like no matter how tough you think you are, yeah, someone's like, you know. so, uh, yeah, whenever he showed me and I was like, I mean, we joke and he knows how I am. So it's just like, oh my God, you know, fucking monster and stuff like that. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, no, the real dude, I'm um, like, um, she was like, dude, she's not necessarily what I would consider attractive. Right. Like at all. Damn. But that's me. Now, we might have different tastes. See, when I, someone says, but that's me. No, no. And here's here's what I say, though. I know people have different tastes, but I know you and I have the same taste. Right. So, I'm saying that, and I'm not, like, criticizing it. I'd be like, oh, that's all you can get and all this and drilling it. It's like... Well, how about us a personality? Because at the end of the day, looks aren't everything. No, they're not. No, no, they're so not. So, she is this amazing woman. Well, so what I he, can't blame a guy for getting something... You know, that's not the best, but... I mean, we, yeah, we always joke on this podcast, but, like, realistically, to me, the number one thing... I mean, first of all, it can be, like, this horrible creature. Yeah, it can't be the extreme There has version. to be a baseline. Yeah, we can't be fucking over here extreme. physical attraction is very important in a relationship. I and it shows something about a person. So, it's not, it's not like you wouldn't date a 300-pound person because they're 300 pounds. Yeah. It's like, well, I mean, if they're 300 pounds, they probably don't go to the gym. They probably don't go hiking. Yeah, you don't share the same values. So it's a lot of things that it gives away that you wouldn't even be a good match even if you wanted to. No, exactly. You know? And and also they influence you very directly in very deep ways. Like if I'm with somebody who doesn't work out, I know I'm lazy. Right. Naturally, when I wake up, I want to say, I mean, I'm pretty sure most people do, but like some people are more disciplined, so they don't mind if their spouse doesn't work out. Right. I cannot be like that. Like my spouse or the person I end up with has to be at least wanting to be physically active because otherwise it'll fuck me up. And that's yeah. a value that I think is important. It's like my health. And then I think another thing that happens, dude, is uh, I know people do this. 
they get annoyed. So it's like, let's say you marry a girl who doesn't work out. They'll start getting annoyed that you work out because yeah. it reflects on them because they don't want to work out. Yeah, they're projecting. And if you're like, hey, I'm going to go to the gym. <sighs> you're going to the gym again. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, they'll, so they'll, they'll get annoyed because they hate that you're showing them what they can't do. And it's like, they wish you could also Even be lazy. It's a good thing. Yeah, they wish they could be lazy with them so they don't feel as bad. Um, so that's also like a bad thing that if you get someone who doesn't work out, hey, honey, I'm working out again. You worked out three times this week. What are you getting another girl? Yeah. yeah, You know, it's like, then you get in a fight. Yeah. No, I mean, I remember when my brother started working out in high school because I didn't know he was bullied a lot, I guess. Like, and he told me later I was never bullied because he was like protective. Yeah. He was a loser. Yeah. (laughs) And he, uh, he started working out a lot. And I was like, dude, why are you working out so much? What the fuck? Yeah. Even though it was a good thing, like he got a bench and he was doing this and he's pushing out. I mean, he's really strong. I fuck with him a lot. Right. Like a lot. And it's me fucking like a, with a bison with a bull. Be like, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm like, if he really got angry, yeah, I think he would completely shred me like cheese. Right. And I'm, I'm picturing like, he's so kind and like, very, he's very, he's very sweet. So, if someone piss, if I picture him in a fight, I'm like, um, with a regular person, because I know when when you know people say shit that gets mad, I would be like, kind of almost want to see him go full hard emo because I've never seen him. Because uh, I mean, he's like, uh, he was like, uh, yeah, I have a goal by the end of the year. I want to bench press one rep max, like 400 pounds, Damn. and I want to be able to do at least three. And all his friends are like these army guys and firemen, and they're he's always hiking, he's always doing some shit. He's like sending me videos of him deadlifting a shit ton of weight. He needs to be careful, dude, because yeah, like it's it's good and it's great, but once you reach those weights, dude, any little mistake, yeah, exactly, it's like so take, much weight, dude, that any little mistake that you could handle, monumental in the lower consequences, weights, consequences, yeah, you could fuck up your back. No, that's what happened. You could uh, fucking crack a fucking shoulder, tear a bicep. It's like when you get to those extreme weights, yeah. A tiny mistake, dude, and you would wish. You would think back, like, dude, why was I fucking trying to reach 400 pounds? No, so what happened, uh, so Gage, uh, one of his friends, uh, right. he tore his pec. Damn. And he showed me a picture, and he was, like, out for, like, two months or some shit like that. And my brother, um, I think he was, it's always deadlifts, you know, because deadlifts are, like, even a fraction of a pound, like, yeah. you move incorrectly because you have to have, so many things conscious like your feet the width like the how straight your back is how lean forward you are like all this other shit and then the next day he woke up with like lower back pain and he had to do all this physical therapy yeah right now he's at the point where he's like yeah fuck i like what am i trying to prove uh he's still really strong so i'm like you know he's fine but uh yeah i mean uh with whenever you're trying to like help change people and stuff like that basically whenever he calls me uh he's like what do you think about this song that i made because he has been or what about these pictures or he's like hey i'm thinking of this career change what do you think right because he knows like most people especially christians because we grew up a christian like in church they're very nice people yeah they'll just support you and say okay yeah yeah, it's like because they never know and you know to their benefit it's not their role to be like that you know the way they see it is the world is harsh enough. We're going to be sweet. You know, yeah. the world can give you that feedback. So he'll call me and I'll be like, that's not a really good song or change this. Or like, dude, honestly, I don't think you should. He wanted to be like a pro- programmer. Like he wanted to learn how to code and shit. And I was like, I mean, you can do it, but I know your personality. You always like being outdoors and shit. You're going to hate it. Yeah. And the people you meet in that job, are you going to hate them. Yeah, they're going to be boring. Yeah. Cause I mean, he's like fucking hey. I mean, you know, the term, that cringy term. That kind of like very active and high testosterone behavior, basically. Right. That's kind of what he hangs out with. Every time I go there, I, I feel like I need to be more active and shit. I'm like, okay. Because he pushes me. Like whenever we work out, he's like, nah, dude, you're going to do more. Yeah. I'm like, huh, okay. <laughs> Comfort. What happened? I'm Hollywood now, dude. I'm not into this hard shit anymore. <laughs> I'm like, can I have my kill juice, please? Yeah. yeah dude, it's so funny. Like. That's also another thing. I realize like how much of a pussy I am whenever I'm with a group of people who really push themselves. Right. Like he has this friend called David. He's this army guy. He's like, are you ready to hit the gym? And I'm like, there's like 10 o'clock on Friday. I just came in from my flight. 
And he's like, yeah, come on, baby. Let's go. We're about to smash some legs. I'm like, legs? Yeah, dude. Dude. And then you proceed to die. And then uh, I wake up like the next day uh, because old people wake up at 4 a.m. for no fucking reason. My dad is old. So like I'll be sleeping on the couch. They always try to give me their bed, but I'm like, no, no, you sleep. And I'm on the couch and I hear like some bullshit in the kitchen. Like someone's cooking, like full on cooking. Not like opening cabinets, like stuff like that. More like fire turning out. I'm like fucking Gordon Ramsay cooking for a whole buffet. And I look over. I'm looking at my clock because I'm thinking, I'm like, did a TV? I left the TV on or a podcast. And stuff like I'm looking at my, it says 4.33. I remember literally the image. And I look over and my dad is like, hello, my boy. And, <laughs> and immediately, he knows that pisses me off. So he fucks with me. And I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, I can't have, I can't handle that right now. Right. Um, But yeah, I mean, it, people have like all these quirks that you wish you would change. And, and at the end of the day, like, I think, um, now, as if, you say that, oh, I guess let me let me finish finish your thought. No, basically, uh, I mean, I I talk a lot of shit about my family because this is shit I, I tell them to their face, yeah. And stuff, uh, but they have so many good qualities. No, that yeah, I, they do. I envy them, and that I'm like, I wish I was as patient as my brother, or as generous as my dad, right? Or as thoughtful as my mom. Mm. Where like my dad taught really like generosity, like he's so giving. He's right. always been giving as far as I can. And I'm not like I used to like uh, be like that. But I guess like, you know, shit happens. My brother's so patient, dude. I mean, I fuck with him relentlessly. And even when I don't fuck with him, like there'll be shit that happens to him at work. And I'm like, what the fuck? You have to do this and that. And he's like, um, yeah, but what do I get? And he's right. He's like, what do I gain if I do all that? And then my mom, she's always like, I come home and she has balloons saying, welcome back. And Damn. she's like, hey, I cooked you your favorite dish. Damn. Hey, and she, like, even when I say, hey, uh, kind of want to get a hotel and you know, be downtown and stuff like that. For what? Why do you want to get a hotel and be downtown, Phil? To be a demon. Exactly. For no other reason. For, it, do you ever tell her, yeah, I want to get a hotel because I want to fuck some whores? <laughs> <laughs> I I feel that's that would hurt them. Yeah. So I'm like, but well, whenever mean, yeah. they say it, I'm just like, I, when they asked me, I was like, I'm not going to go there to pray. Just not that much. Right. right? <laughs> <laughs> like my family kind of knows, but it's just one of those things where like, uh, well, it's Phil, like he's still growing and learning. And, shit. and uh, but I can tell them, like I told my brother, I'm black out. I blacked out last night. And he's like, all right. And he picked me up on the way to church and we're at church and I'm a little buzzed. You got the fucking sunglasses yeah, on. Like, oh, look at it, Hollywood over yeah, there. I know. It's just like, <laughs> that's, uh, oh, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i mean uh it's just having about a group of people that genuinely like authentically cares for you but that's family dude because yeah. it's really hard to find that anywhere else yeah it is family like in some like uh the whole expression if you find a true friend it's like finding treasure and all this other bullshit like people who generally have your best interest like hey this is going to be tough but i'm going to go against uh um you know what you think and all this even though they, I mean, no one's perfect and shit like that is, um, is sort of the answer to life in a lot of different ways. Because they'll keep you in check, but they'll kill you with kindness too. They're not going to do it maliciously. Some people think they're giving you good feedback, but they're just trying to cut you. Right. That's all they're doing. And yeah. you can kind of realize that as you get older and shit. You're like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess it's hard to see if it's they're being realistic with you or, or some people are like, oh, dude, you're just hating and you're putting down my idea. Um yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to see. I mean, I guess it depends how you take feedback. But I was going to say, uh, as you were talking that about your dad, wouldn't it be cool, dude, if, like, the the girl you married, yeah. her dad is really cool, that you can be like, yo, let's go to Vegas. And he's like, I'm down. Fuck, yeah. And you and your girl's dad is like, is like hey. You're having fun with your, uh, what's it called? Father-in-law? Yeah, father-in-law. It's like you tell your girl, and like the girl and the mom stay home. And you're like, hey, me and your dad are going to go to Vegas. Just gamble, play some poker, a couple tables, <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know. <laughs> and then you're in their fucking party and dude, Vegas and shit, buffet, getting drunk. And then you come back home. It's like, what happened? We lost it all. Y'all lost all the money. <laughs> he's like, yeah, this motherfucker fucking gamble with this. And you just fucking couple of dudes hanging out in Vegas and, you know, you'd go and do cool shit with your father-in-law. Yeah. That would be dope, dude. Having a fucking father-in-law, like, you could just fucking 
fuck around with. And that's what, like, you were talking about, um, you know, looks and, and how a person is and everything. And uh, unfortunately, for the most part, usually um, I met some really beautiful people, like, inside and, uh, and out that come from fucked up families. But whenever um, they come from really good families and they're very hard and welcoming... Dude, that makes a person so attractive. Like whenever they're genuinely like sweet and loving and they're fun. Right. And yeah, like all these qualities. Like honestly, because um, I mean, who wants to be with a hot bitch? Like uh, just a, like some fucking bitch that you're not even enjoying your time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Like I see sometimes pictures of uh, this is going to sound like I'm fucking hating, but I'm trying to make a point. <laughs> Like, I'll see, I saw a picture of Dan Bilzerian, right? And he's, like, with six models. And Chris Elia was talking about that in his podcast where he was like, what kind of conversations are you having with these girls? Like, dude, I'd rather be in that jail with my friends. My comedian friends were laughing our asses off and stuff like that. And all the comments, like, in the video were like, oh, you can't get six models and stuff like that. And he even calls it out. Right. But, dude, realistically, I, I mean, it's... Uh, who do you have the most fun with? That's what fucking matters. If you're not laughing, you're dying. Because you're, right. you're spending time that you're never going to get back and you're not having fun. Like, what yeah, is the guess, fucking point? You're right. What are you going to talk about with six girls? Yeah, you're like, so where are you all from? Yeah. Uh, oh, so I saw you did a shoot with Vogue. How yeah. was that? Yeah, I think you're right. Part of the conversations are all about guys who DM them and... What happened yeah, there was this guy week. that I was fucking, and oh, I gotta oh, go to this like gala that. next week and shit like that. It's like, dude, there was. Um, it is interesting if you're in that world. I yeah, guess yeah. what I'm saying. Uh, but yeah, I guess to us it wouldn't be interesting I like conversation. De- there's a difference between uh, depth, you know, of conversation, which uh, I'm always chasing. That's why I like going on dates because yeah, sometimes, that's why. yeah, that's no other reason, why. no other reason. <laughs> But when you meet a stranger, they're more often than not willing to listen to you generally than with friends sometimes. Because, you know, they're Mm -hmm. used to talking to you and stuff like that. Of course, overall, it's way better to have friends. Right. Like, for sure. But it's more so like an interesting experience sometimes because, uh, I mean, I recognize I'm an empath and I genuinely like people. I want to be able to like them and listen to their story. And I love that. I really do love that. So whenever I'm on these dates... Well, yeah, it is sure. Yeah, you know, I don't know how true that is. I don't know how true that is. But anyways, I enjoy talking genuine talk with people. Like I when think I'm, you enjoy people listening to you and <laughs> pretending you're listening to them. That bro. was a great talk. And they're like, I said three <laughs> words. I mean, you might be right in that regards. But whenever people really open up, it's refreshing. I'll say that. It's refreshing whenever people are real and they're not okay. like beating around the bush. And they say, that's why I start with like, all right, tell me a childhood trauma or tell me some fucked up shit or stuff. And I do it jokingly, but it's sort of like to let's get to like the, the good shit. Let's, avo- let's kind of like move through. And this is not just on dates. This is more like with most people. Cause I mean, of course, when people ask you, Hey, how are you doing? And you say, ah, oh, fuck dude. I mean, I masturbated three times last night, but I'm still depressed. So there's that. What do I do with that? Now, that's a lot of information to lay on and super uncalibrated. Obviously, you wouldn't tell that to a stranger. But how fun would it be if people just said shit like that? Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's... Uh, I think fun people, like, whenever you're with a girl, you're talking about, like, you know, going out with her, your father-in-law and doing all this other shit. It's just uh, people being real with each other and just being, like... None, none of these ego games and all this other bullshit. It's just, like, to just be a person. How do you get, how do you get, um, cause I, as I'm, as we're saying this, I'm thinking, how do you get a cool father in law? How does that work? Cause I think, I think maybe dating a girl or dating women and then meeting their dads, I don't think is the best way to go, but I think that's going to be really hard. You're probably just going to hit the lottery on that you one. You meet the dad and then I he think what's going to happen girl? is you probably are going to meet the dad first <laughs> and then you're going to meet his daughter. Yeah, because I I guess if we could if we could ask people who have cool father in laws like hey how, how did that go like how did you meet this yeah because what I, as what I'm as we're saying this I'm thinking I'm probably gonna be playing poker at the casino in Vegas playing poker somewhere right gambling doing what I like to do 
And I'm gonna meet an old dude that also likes doing that. Yeah. He's so like, hey, maybe you should come to the ranch, hang out. So, all right, I'll go to the ranch. And then that's when you meet their daughter, right? And you're like, oh, okay. And they're like, yeah, you can take my daughter on a date. So you go on a date with the daughter. I think that's probably the way <laughs> yeah. to meet a cool father-in-law. Meet him. You're probably going to meet him doing what you love doing. Yeah. And then you're going to meet the girl. Because yeah. think about meeting the girl first. And then it so happens that the father-in-law is also that cool. It pretty, can happen. No, it can happen. But I'm saying like it's pretty hard. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Well, it depends because if it, first of all, meeting like a really fun, good girl, like good for you, uh, girl, is rare. So that alone is like okay. If she's like that, but maybe. think about this, dude. If the father-in-law is like that, oh yeah, isn't yeah. there a lot of chances that the girl is probably gonna? Because if she has that cool of a dad, yeah, yeah, she's probably also gonna be cool. Yeah, but also, but by, by no, that no, but, but, logic, way, you but I'm saying, but no, yeah, I mean, it could be both ways um yeah it could be both ways i guess i don't i don't know uh i guess it might be better if you meet the dad first because uh then he's kind of bringing you into his house so it's less pressure of you trying to please. does that make sense yeah i guess it's less pressure of you trying to win over the dad yeah yeah and like hey dad this is my yeah, boyfriend you already shared quality and there's a dynamic of the dad trying to like put his alphaness on you make you know this the place instead of you meet the dad fucking first you're chilling hanging out and then he just happens to have a daughter that you also like. Yeah. You know, um, that could be a good way to go about No, that, that. would be. That have you ever Have you ever met like a really cool dad and thought like... No, nah, I mean, we just started. I mean, like, I think you only meet cool dads when you get older. Because why would a dad be hanging out with an 18-year-old? Yeah. I went, um, you know? I remember going to this rock show right. one time. There was this old dude there. I was with a friend. And we just started having a conversation because he's like... And he says, I go to a... I love rock shows and my wife doesn't care for them so i just come alone and i've been doing this uh twice a month for the last 15 years or something i was like oh shit and we started talking about all these bands like all these rock bands are like in the history and everything he was like yeah i've seen muse twice already and i was about to see them again and i was like damn dude that's the life and everything dude and i was like i could have a beer with this guy and like talk for fucking hours of the night and stuff like that and uh yeah he was talking about him beating bands and he had, he was all tatted up and everything he was like yeah i used to be in punk rock bands i remember this one guy he's talking about he got into fights sometimes and shit like that and i was like dude this guy's fucking cool as shit you know he was like really good energy um and uh i imagine like let's say in a fantasy scenario where like he has a daughter just as cool as that like an outgoing and stuff i know i'm gonna marry some like rocker chick who's like a little bit wild and and shit like that not in a crazy sense but um who knows or my brother always says you're gonna marry someone who's so laid back because you're ta- you talk for no, three i don't people. think so dude i don't think you're gonna marry someone who's laid back i don't think so either that, that would be too too boring dude. it would be too impossible what do you like do do your brothers ever like talk about that with you be like oh what kind of girl you're gonna marry and shit uh well or, before i answer that question dude, imagine dude imagine um you're chilling right yeah and you get a message for your father-in-law yo dude let's go to this killer show it's just coming up i bought us tickets Fuck yeah i mean no honestly <laughs> imagine you get that message like yo bro, i just bought us tickets to the killers dude, let's go you dude, get that message i don't even dude. need the my wife <laughs> yeah you know, i didn't, I didn't even know i'm like oh i got i got what i need <laughs> and he's like yo dude let's go to get tatted up what do you think about Fuck this tattoo yeah, dude. and you go get a tattoo with your father so dude i think we're, we we don't know anything about relationships because we're forgetting that whole side because when we think oh a wife oh a girlfriend you're just thinking but then we're forgetting the whole side of they have a family's members too that can add to their relationship yeah you know like just just imagine that shit and like, also that that matters with how they are exactly so i mean have you generally met like really fun girls who you're like wow well, i've never met their parents well i met their parents but i try not to yeah because uh because i know i'm gonna break up with her damn like in three or at four least you're months. self-aware yeah like i know i'm like oh, i'm probably gonna break up with no, i don't tell I, him that but in my head i'm like yeah i'm probably gonna break up no with but her. i'm talking about like you meeting uh the girl like the girl is really fun right we're like you have you're like fuck dude this is a really like i could have so much fun with her yeah no no i mean yeah okay. dude. i mean that's why you make him your girlfriend dude because you realize oh dude we can have a lot of fun fuck doing yeah. shit but uh and i'm sure i mean it 
I'm sure I can win the family's members quickly, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Easily, <laughs> dude, to have them all laughing, dude, cracking jokes. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell stories of how I'm a loser, how I got rejected millions of times. And, dude, no one's going to get mad at you for you, like, telling your stories of how you feel at life. They're yeah. just going to feel better about themselves. Fuck yeah. Um, then I'm like, yo, this fucking, we should all go to Vegas. That's probably the first thing that I'm going to tell them when we get there. How about we all just go to Vegas? Yeah. You know, we just buy a plane tickets right now and just hit the casino uh that's that's what i would do um uh, but yeah man i mean uh yeah dude we're forgetting how cool that can be having a wife that her parents even her brothers imagine if her the dad and the brothers like yo phil let's fucking go hiking bro yeah yeah and you go hiking with the dad and the brothers and you're just fucking camping and chilling and shit so not only did you gain a wife you get a family but you get another whole fucking family yeah, that cares about that's you so tight dude that must be crazy that to must have be that. crazy yeah yeah a whole nother family that cares about you. Yeah, I completely forgot about that because uh, so my cousin in Costa Rica, he has this girlfriend and right. uh, they've been together for a while. I think he's going to marry her. Okay. Like he's 24. He's like almost about to graduate college, but um, he's like shouting out uh, like her dad's uh, like furniture store, like an Instagram and that kind of shit. And he goes out and gets beers with him. And uh, like I see him post about it, and I was like, "Ah, oh, that's interesting." So he's at the point where like I I talked to him about it. It's like, "Hey, you're gonna get married and stuff like that." And he was like, "Yeah, probably." He was like, "Did the parents are really cool?" We all went to the beach and spent a couple nights there. And I was like, "Um, I don't know how it is like with American families, but like with Costa Rican families, when the boyfriend gets accepted, he's like, dude, overwhelmed with welcome. Like you get to, go, you know, Damn. do everything, and um." That's how it's been, at least with, like, my cousins who bring, you know, boyfriends or girlfriends. Right. Uh, where my family is really welcoming. They're like, yeah, let's go. We're going to go to the beach. We're going to do this. Come to the cookout. Like, all that kind of shit. Like, they really embrace them. Because it's just like, okay, if you love them. Yeah. You vetted them and shit like that and stuff like that. Now, my family is really harsh in the sense of, like, you can't, uh, <laughs> if you bring some trash-ass person. I mean, they won't say it in front of the person, but they'll fucking cut you they'd be like dude what the fuck are you doing him right a fucking guy didn't even say hi to anyone he's sitting there in the corner he's being all quiet like we know each other so well to the point where like you're not gonna last with him yeah like yeah that's true man i mean uh fuck dude we completely forgot about that part of women and relationships i think that's probably a really important part that once you meet a girl get to know her family because you don't want to be married to a girl and you hate her family that yeah. would suck that would suck. To hate her family. And then you have to go on dinners with a family or Thanksgiving, sharing them. And they're all maybe on their phones and they never want to do anything fun. And yeah. you're just like, all right, so what do I... You're just probably in the couch waiting until the day's over so you can head back. I want to um, marry... Yeah, like the the father-in-law has to be super active. I know she's going to be active probably because she took that from him. Like right. that kind of family. You never know. Because yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, you never know. You never know. You're right. Uh, might be the, quite the opposite of why she was active because her parents weren't active. No, imagine, dude, that, yeah, like if your father-in-law calls you right now, it's like, hey, I got us a suite for two nights at the Bellagio. How about this? How about we go there, piss off the wives a little bit. Right. Because <laughs> we gamble we, too we much. We each take 10K. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No more. We leave our credit cards, our wallets. Yeah, just 10K in cash. Have a little bit of fun. And if we eat shit, you know what? dinner's on me it's just two nights who cares yeah probably gonna marry a gambling dad not, not marry a gambling dad <laughs> <laughs> probably gonna marry a girl <laughs> with a gambling dad you said it so confidently it's so great uh, which will be weird because i hope they don't end up like two gambling addicts because then it's like all right dude yeah, yeah. can't take you to vegas yeah but if they can handle their gambling it's like if they can handle their alcohol you know dude, healthy families are very difficult to like find really you're right no it, it is uh fuck man it is hard to find a healthy family yeah because you're talking about like healthy people yeah healthy people with like their brains are healthy all that shit no insecurities like the dad saying hey he's trying to shove me off he came in with this lambo you know it's like what why are you getting mad at him for having a yeah, lambo yeah. uh stuff like that <laughs> yes when people think like that it must suck dude when they think like oh look he came in and he uh look what he's wearing or something like yeah, that it's he's trying like, to show look off what this person did to me right like, yeah. what the it's fuck? like the world is always against you kind of shit it's like 
come on dude that's so exhausting it must be exhausting like he tried to pay for the check and like in front of me oh like oh my god yeah like what the fuck um yeah dude uh i think that's a really important part of a girlfriend if we're trying to marry a wife if you're gonna marry a wife dude you better fucking enjoy spending time with her family do you think there's like a time period where you're like all right this is a wife age because something that um i think about is even right now take for example right now you're like no there's going to be higher quality women there's going to be like all this but once you're there you probably think about that even more or like the goal post keeps moving forward yeah. and forward no i don't think it's about the girls it's, it's more about me uh i think maybe around 35 and even then i feel like that's too young yeah uh hi huh, that would be weird though dude that <laughs> would be fucking weird because if i'm saying 35 to 40 how old is the dad if the girl's like 21 jesus you know you're the same age well probably would now that's weird see now you're getting the, that now that's weird dude that because is, if you're the same age and you're smashing his daughter then uh, that's that's too weird so i guess i, I would have to make sure the dad's at least 10 years older than me uh what the fuck yeah dude, i mean imagine that's two years older than you yeah or imagine yeah i mean imagine the dad's younger than you how do you handle that because then you look like a creep dude if the dad's younger than you that's not a good relationship yeah there was a creepy episode in friends where like i never understood that where like monica she had a boyfriend oh that was really old richard was yeah. his name and it was her dad's co-worker yeah i'm like that, that's always weird dude the dad's co-worker yeah what the fuck that's so, weird because he used to see her when she was a kid and that's it, super well, dude, weird that, dude. isn't that weird that's super weird i think i think now that i think about it then i have to get married around 35 yeah i have to because otherwise i'm too old to have a good relationship with the family dude because yeah. you know it's always like oh here comes that old dude fucking our daughter yeah you know you don't want to be that and like how can they yeah, you got to make sure the dad's older than you. To have a really good, like, hey, young man, he's trying to teach you things. You know, you have the relationship of asking him questions. And he feels like he's older and wiser than you. Than you being fucking 40 and he's 40 and yeah, fucking that shit his daughter. That's weird, dude. That's weird, dude. So I guess, I guess the age to get married is probably around 35, man. Yeah. Which is not looking good right for me. Right around the corner. Yeah, it's right around the corner. What is that? Eight years? I'm 27. Three. Yeah, that's eight years. Which it probably might be a good amount, dude. Actually, 35 is not bad. Eight years. I mean, we'll be millionaires by next year. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, live life up for four years. I don't even think I would, dude. Honestly, like four to five years. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I might be the first one to get married. Oh, uh, okay. What age are you thinking? Like, let's be realistic. You're twenty, what, eight right now? Twenty nine. Twenty nine. No, okay. You're twenty six, twenty seven, twenty five. You're twenty five. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're a year and a half older than me. You're about to be twenty six. Yeah, in December I'm gonna be twenty six. Now that's gonna hit you, dude. What twenty six? When you're twenty six, dude. You're that's gonna what be I like, thought. That's oh. what I. That's what I thought. Twenty five was. No, no, no. Like, twenty five is safe. Twenty five is in the middle. No, dude. it's quarter life crisis. No, no, you're safe. No, you're safe. 26 it's you feel a tingle in your stomach 27 that's you're three years away from 30 bro no from the, the three zero you're three years away what i keep hearing is like when you're 29 oh yeah yeah i mean it's suicide when you're 29 mode. it's just like suicide mode. you just just fucking bring it and yeah that year you, you're i gotta push dude when yeah, i'm 30 yeah. i have to fucking have and all then this whenever you turn 30 you're like uh, oh that was ridiculous yeah you're like uh, yeah what the fuck was all that pressure's for? done dude 40 <laughs> you gotta wait till 40 but uh yeah i mean okay so you're because i i thought about that with 20 oh the clock started i'm 20 now yeah i literally said that right and now it's just like dude let the clock fucking run fuck the clock yeah uh, no no yeah i mean i think uh yeah dude we were 21 just a couple of years ago man i'm 27 fuck and I, I don't feel any like older or anything because i mean i'm sure when we're 30 we're gonna feel the same way we're yeah, gonna yeah. be like oh 50 is the new fucking 30 uh i think this is what's gonna happen I think what we're doing is going to be successful. Right. And yeah, I dude, just we're fucking 27, 25. Dude. And I mean, even this podcast, dude, like yeah, almost yeah. 30,000 followers. Like, no, no. So I have no, that's not a, like an if, it's more of a when. And I've thought about this very 
um, very hard for a long time. And it's just like, I'm not worried now about like, oh, if it's more about when it's going to happen. Now I'm thinking, I was like, okay, when it comes. Right. Okay. That's your new life. Right. The, that's going to be a, a very new life where you're going to have to like make decisions. And, you know, um, I think, uh, you know, it's going to come sooner than later. So it might be like, I don't know, let's say in a year, we're in a much different position. Oh, okay. You're right. Like, okay. The position changes. Yeah. The correct. position has changed. Like w- drastically where you're like, holy shit. Right. I think more than likely I wouldn't have more than five years of pure indulgement. Let's say I go insane for five years, you know, and live out to this experiences and stuff. So let's start. Cause you're about to be 26. So let's say you're 26, right? Yeah. So how long do you think before you get married? You're 26. You got a couple money even- in the bank. So this is something else that I, I think about where like um, one of my favorite writers, he got married when he was like 24, I think. Right. He's still married. He's 33, I think right now. He's four times New York's bestseller, all this other bullshit, right? And he was like, people were screaming at me. They're like, what the fuck? You just made all this money. You're about to marry your high school sweetheart or something, a college sweetheart, I mean. Yeah. And uh, he was always, I mean, the 21 director of marketing for American Apparel, that kind of personality. He said, oh, and then when I got married, he said, oh, when you have kids, your life is going to go down this shit and all this other shit. He said he had kids. And he was like, every time I made one of those decisions, my life got better. Wanted to fight, like significantly jump forward. Yeah. And it was like this narrative in everyone's heads of like, no, it's going to fail. Look at the numbers and everything. And he said, uh, fuck it. Like, life is not statistics dude, you're right dude. so the way uh-huh. i think i've always looked at marriage in a positive light because my parents had a good marriage right my uncle and aunt had a really good marriage well i mean as far as i know uh but i'm pretty sure i'm right and uh i've had a lot of like most of my like my mom's friends they had well like a few of them not everyone but they also have really healthy relationships. So I know what a healthy relationship looks like. Mm. In my head, I'm not seeing those marriages like, oh, when are you going to stop doing this thing? It's like... Yeah, you're no. not seeing it as when does the fun stop? Yeah, to me, it's more so like... Even right now, like I'm like, I want healthy relationships in my life. Period. You know, friendships and all this other stuff. I think whenever you get married to the right person, and if you're healthy, and obviously they're healthy and everything, nothing changes that much. Like I think well, you things ha- should get no better, no no right? I mean no they do get like I, nothing changes negatively in the sense of like I mean you have to respect people's boundaries and shit like that but you have way more fun that's what I keep hearing from the people who have healthy marriages they're like oh my god yeah we started traveling together we're having so much fun we're getting drunk in the cruise and she was throwing up and the captain threatened to kick us out <laughs> like all these crazy stories and I'm like oh you just have a partner. Basically, you have like this partner that you get to fuck, basically. And uh, but it's not even the point. It's more so about like, <laughs> <laughs> I guess um, people are too negative. Yeah. I think whenever it comes to life in general, it's like, don't do this. Why are you moving to California and doing all this crazy shit? Right. It might not work out. And it's like, well, nothing might work out. Hmm. but what if they do what if it does so it's like don't think oh what happens if this fails think oh what happens if this works out and it turns out to be this amazing experience and i think people who risk it like that like Hmm. get the most reward like dude if you're and you can see that in the casino when you go all in no no yeah yeah i mean going all in is the way to live life and i think you should do that with every area in your life to your discretion you need to be the one making the decision not your fucking parents, fuck not anyone dude. around you. Now that I think about it. It's like, dude, when you commit, that's the right answer. Not what the fucking, everyone says, oh, look at Dr. Dre. And I'm like, dude, I don't give a fuck what anyone says. Yeah. Like, who cares? Like, people die sitting on their couch and slipping. Right. And then there's people that, like, skydive night, their entire lives and they're fine. They never die. So. Well, fuck, dude. I mean, now, now I'm thinking, fuck, bro, we gotta, because okay let's say okay you're 26 right yeah um because now now that i think about it is if you do want to have children you don't want to be too old where you can't do shit with them we're like hey dad let's go play basketball let's go play you're like you're like 45 going i can't play it's like you can't even play basketball with your kids anymore 
Yeah. That's one thing that my dad kept telling me. He was just like, uh, I don't have any regrets or anything. Like that. And he doesn't. Like even, I mean, he was super active with us when we were playing and stuff like that. He was like, I wish I could be able to move a little bit more so right. I could travel with you guys. Because mm. that's what our family, that's how we really bonded. We used to travel to like New York and shit like that. And my mom... I mean, she still moves. She's very. She's a lot more healthy now. So she's right. like, I want to be able to go to Europe and stuff. I want to be able to take her travel willing with my mom and my brother. Like that to me means a lot. Yeah. And with yeah, whenever my dad is all fucked up from the hips and the knees and all this other shit, and I mean, he didn't take care of himself for a lot of years, but also it's the age, and he says it. He was just like, I wish I was just a little bit like. How old was he when he had y'all? He was forty-eight when he had me. So by the time you were like. I would say 15 is when you were active. So he was like 50 something. Yeah, he was like. Uh, 60? Damn, yeah, he probably was 60. No, he, was when 60 he was like 15. But he was still like zooming at 60. He was, he was. I mean, were, we used to go to like hiking, mm. swimming. Damn. Like we used to do a lot of shit. I think he was pretty fucking active for a long fucking time. I mean, he's 73 now. I, Fuck. Right man. around like 67, 68 is when he started to slow down a lot more. He's dude, like, I mean, dude, we're... <laughs> yeah, dude, right now, dude, we're 27. And dude, last night, fuck I me know, up, dude. dude. I'm like, dude, I, I fucking sleep it all day. I don't know how people do it. At that age? Oh, that's brutal. Dude. You have to be a loser if you're 40 and you're at a club and you're drinking. No, like, that, that, no that's, that's what I'm thinking. That's, that's what I'm thinking. Like, dude, that's lame. The whole like being 40 and a bachelor is just boring. Like, like it's I, honestly lame. Yeah. How what you what is that loser, dude? Like, yeah, dude, how are you out here trying to get laid or like, oh, you, you have a new young girl next to you? Like, I mean, you're 40 years old. Dude. <laughs> like, how is that cool? Yeah, dude. It's like, I think people don't talk about that enough about like how uncool it's like you're going to bed alone you know it sucks like dude how many times are you gonna go out and fuck this random girl like and you're not even building relationships you're not you're not building experiences you're not having kids and all this other stuff it's like well this is not something i wanted to do very few people are wired that way like bill maher he's like that news guy he said he never got married and he was like i just could not get married like it doesn't really compete in my head i've had partnerships long partnerships and uh, I don't think I'm at the point where I have kids and I've accepted that. Now, I can make my own judgments. That's what he's saying. But yeah, I mean, dude, I want to be able to be very active with my kids. Like if my kid, like I think people have their kids around like, you know, early 30s, late 20s, even that's almost a premium. Like, so let's uh, say you have your kids. OK, when do you plan on getting married? Like you'll say you're 26. Let's say probably by the time we're 27. If everything goes according to yeah, plan, yeah. <laughs> that's when we'll probably have good money. Yeah. Everything. So 27, when do you think you might... The problem is you've never been in a relationship. No. So you might have to just start to get into one just to feel it out, <laughs> to see how it feels. That's one thing. And that learn the ropes because, dude, Dennis is barely learning. Yeah. Because I'm trying to give him advice. I know he's not going to listen to me. Yeah. I don't give him advice on how he should handle it. Yeah. So you might have to start warming up for... Uh, Yeah, I guess one that. thing that I have in the back of my head is like... Yeah, I think you're right. I go... um, At least with relationships, I know I'm very extreme. Not mm -hmm. extreme in the bad way, but it's more so like... Okay, we're committing to this. I'm like, all right, fuck everything else. It's sort of like when I was doing ecstasy and I was doing drugs and shit like that. Uh, partying over here. There was a moment where I woke up and I was like... I'm never, I don't want to do this. I'm done. And right. literally that same night, my friends were calling me and I was like, no, I'm done with it. And they were making fun of me because yeah. they thought, you know, I was going to give up and shit. And I was like, no, I, I have my time with that. I'm okay. And uh, so I feel like I'm nervous about the relationship more so because it's like, okay, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to fucking do it. I'm not going to oh, be yeah, like. Oh, you're going to go hard. Yeah, yeah, which I don't know if it's a good or a bad thing, to be honest, but it's more so like, um, I hate half-assed relationships. Like people are like, oh, you know, talking shit about their spouse and everything. Uh, it's like, no, dude, if you're going to do it, like do it with somebody you really enjoy and like do everything. Mm -hmm. You know, do everything and have so much fun because it's about the depth of your experiences. Who gives a fuck if you eat shit at the end? But like you're going to go through it and like just be surface level. That's so whack. It is pretty That's whack. That's so whack. Like what are you doing, dude? We're going to die one day and you're going to be like, oh, yeah, I don't know. Dude, fuck that. So I'd rather so like... So what would you say, like 30 is when you plan on getting married? 
I think 33. 33? And the, uh, these are random fucking numbers. I'm right. looking back and be like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> like, let me check the calendar. Oh, oh right. here's what I'm this supposed is to get here. This is what I'm getting but, married. No, I, would, I honestly think uh, early, mid-30s, mid-30s is the latest. But honestly, early 30s because um, yeah, I mean, even right now, like, I mean, fucking kids are probably going to listen to this and family and shit. But, I mean, hooking up with girls. Dude, the kids are not going to listen to this. None of them. You think they're going to listen to podcast number 41 I or guess any I, of these podcasts? I would want to listen to my... If my dad had a podcast growing up, I would want to... Dude, because there's so much he doesn't tell me. Because he used to be wilder than I was, by the way. Mm. He told me little fragments of like, yeah, I used to sell pot and you know fuck girls and go to Woodstock. Like, he didn't say the fuck girls part, but... Yeah, you know. He's going to Woodstock. Yeah, you're you know. smashing for sure. Right. And uh, he used to have a girlfriend who had a very wealthy family and they didn't like her dating him because he was a fuck up, I guess, but he was like fun. Gotcha. And uh, he broke it off and that was more of his serious thing. Like he was heartbroken over it. Um, yeah, you were almost not born. Yeah, exactly. Know? That's weird to think about. <laughs> it is weird. Like the close encounters, right? Where you're almost not born. But... Yeah, dude, I mean, what about you? I mean, you think, because I think early 30s is a good number. Yeah, I mean, uh, now that I think about, I mean, you always get brainwashed, like, hey, the cool guy fucks all these girls. He's older. Dude, you get the And he's point. out here fucking, fucking, fucking point, all these man. girls. Uh, but, uh, no, I mean, it's just it's just weird, dude. It's fucking weird thinking, uh, like, all of us, dude, getting married, married and having kids. Like, that's so fucking weird to think about. Like, oh, dude, yeah, this is my kid. Like, what the fuck? Like, having kids? that Because I correlate marriage with kids. I don't see marriage as like, yo, you're dating a girl and you're like traveling all this. Like, that's not how I think about marriage. So I'm like, oh, the way I see marriage is like, oh, you're going to have... Like, if you're going to get married, it means you're about to have kids. That's how I see it. Yeah, so my parents, well, they were older in life and... My dad had done a lot of... Sh- I mean, he traveled the world because he was in the Navy. Right. My mom came from a very wealthy family. We're not wealthy, but like she came, she was traveling everywhere. Spain, fucking Argentina, everything. Yeah. Uh, so at that point, they, they said, uh, we need to develop our relationships as a couple first. Because couples, at least from their experience, this is what they said. If couples get married and have kids immediately... They don't really learn how to like coexist very well beforehand. So it's kind of like, let's be good us first. And then we bring kids because that is like another yeah. thing you have to kind of. I guess attention. what I'm saying is like, you probably know the girl for two years that you're dating. Her, yeah. Yeah. And then you get married and then you have kids. Not that you meet or get married. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I totally get that. So I'm saying like, you probably know her for like, like two to three years you're dating and they're like, okay, let's get married. And then you have kids. Um, I mean, dude, what, uh, one of my good friends in, uh, and I was, well, that, uh, yeah, somebody that I know. Right. I hear <laughs> throwing names every second. Yeah, I'm trying not to do that. I'm trying to build that habit. Just yeah. in case they're like, oh, I don't want you to say that. It's to respect their privacy, but. Yeah, um, Maurice is out the window, dude. Yeah, you, I mean. He's been throwing yeah, I mean, right. If you go to his Twitter, it's gone. Yeah. He's, he's in another planet. He's tweeting, like, beheading shit. <laughs> and what the fuck. But. He got married at uh, 23. Damn. And he's been married for like three years. That's too young. And man. Um, you got that. Okay, so everything's still working. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Basically, I think um, there's no right answer. Essentially, there's no right answer, but you have to know yourself. I know dude, that. You're 23? I mean, dude, you're 20. You're about to be 26. I don't imagine know shit. Yeah, imagine don't getting know shit. married at 23. I was such a fuck up. I still am, like in many ways. I, there's no way I would be like, oh, I'm ready for this person. Right. Fuck no. But some, I guess some people are, and, or at least they're convinced. I think they maybe just deal with it and like struggle, but I don't think at 23, bro, I mean, what the fuck do you know at 23? I mean, there's some couples that get married at 19. Yeah, I mean, that's, that I guess they grow together, but, but even then it's like, I guess you never really fully develop yourself. You develop your couple self. But never you're true. No, that's what I'm saying. I, so I think like... So that's why heartbreaks are crazier yeah. because they're literally a part of you. Yes, they are a part of you. So when they cheat on you, it's like, oh, I'm a killer or I'm a kill him. Uh. What the fuck? Um, which is... Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, is, that, is, that, is cr- that is crazy. Dude, we got to end this podcast. No, no, we don't have to end it. We're getting to the good part that I was about to talk. You want to hop in back in or what? 
They were still yeah, talking. I guess so. Uh, so Dennis <laughs> went back. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> this, this is. How long is it? And now we're 22. There's no, no fucking three, three hours. hours. And 30 what the <laughs> fuck? Yeah, they were still I, talking. We're just like hanging out. Yeah, we're just and hanging we're out. We're recording it. Dude, we got fucking caught, dude. You got caught? Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, I thought that was going to happen. So, yeah. by the way, Dennis, what was your plan? Uh, I was just, uh, basically, I was sneaking into Hollywood Town. I was and trying to, dude, I'm trying, I've am i been trying to figure out how to sneak into Hollywood Town in the night, dude. How many How many people did y'all have? Uh, dude, it was you? just me and him. Everyone canceled, dude. Bro, this guy what is just you fuck? and him. Bro. No, dude, so basically, Vidro said. So, what was the point of the video? Uh, story? No, I thought, I was like, let's see if any of the fucking fans shows up, dude. Uh, literally, none of them fucking showed up. Um, and then Vidro wait Vidro and Danny fucking uh, told me the, they're down to come and the fucking the, the dude that helps the, what's his fucking name the Raymond uh, he said he's down too and what happened and then Raymond texts like dude I'm gonna go see a girl when we were in the Phil's room I texted him I'm gonna see a girl dude I'm a pussy sorry dude uh, fuck and then uh, Vidro and then Vidro just texted me he's like dude I, I, my bed I fall asleep basically yeah. What I can say... I mean, those, everyone's tired as shit today. I mean, yeah, tired. they're pretty tired, so... Um, I'm yeah. surprised you did it. And then, I mean, because also I said, because like a lot, I mean, since a lot of kids following Steezy and shit, and so they follow me too, and I said 18 and plus, dude. Right. And I feel like if I said, yo, come meet me, they probably meet me there. Yeah, but you don't want younger yeah, kids. Yeah, I, I don't want younger they kids. They get in trouble with Yeah, you. exactly. That's why I said 18 plus. If you're 18, just fucking, you know, that, I, t- I give them location and shit. And so stuff. when did y'all get caught, like halfway uh, or... Dude, it wasn't even halfway, dude. It's just at the very yeah. beginning. Fucking uh, motherfucker, slow as fuck, dude. Yeah. Because, dude, when you sneak into also you gotta just just gotta go fucking straight. You just gotta run, dude. It looks like it was cold out there. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, it was. It wasn't that was cold. It cold? Yeah. Right, I just got it just for in case. Yeah. Uh, well, dude, we were talking about marriage. When do you think you're gonna get married? Oh damn. Um, dude. Yeah. Are we sure we want to like keep going? Yeah. This shit is gonna go to like four and a half hours. I mean, bro. it's fine, dude. Relax. Dude. When when are you gonna talk with your friends like this? No, no. I mean, you're right. I mean, I dude, who the fuck is gonna listen three hour podcast? No, we can I break mean, it up into parts. It's fine. I mean, anyways, uh, I don't know, dude. I, I dude, I'm only give dude, a fuck, dude. dude. I mean, dude, I'm, I'm already twenty five. No, twenty three. Twenty three. I'm twenty three, dude. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna get married until like. I'm maybe like thirty, dude. Honestly, thirty. Like maybe like. Everyone's saying that. Everyone's saying thirty, thirty five. Uh, I think that's a good. The thing about it is like the ridiculous part is that you're trying to plan your life. You don't get to choose when you get married. Right. You really don't. Like you can pretend. Oh, you have a little bit of control. But dude, realistically, if you meet the person, everything's right, and you're like, it's a feeling. You're like, yeah, I feel good. What? You're 29, and you're like, no. Right. I gotta wait till I'm 30. Yeah. It's like I made a commitment. I'm gonna be 31. Two more years, and then I'll be, finally be happy. It's like, uh. Yeah, just fucking whatever, whatever. Yeah, it. But but I guess you y'all are both right. Probably will be around the thirty to thirty five range. Yeah. Where I would probably will get married around thirty to thirty five. I yeah. mean, dude. Uh, well, Alejandro, you're like twenty seven, right? Twenty seven. So never mind. Maybe around the thirty five. More, I mean, more, <laughs> more than thirty five. I, mean, I just feel like. But you never know. You dude, never I, can, know. I can't get married. I'm just not mature, dude. I'm a fucking kid. Dude. Yeah, yeah. I mean, right now, I mean, you're twenty three. Yeah, dude. It's like, yeah, dude. Man. I I don't. I don't think I could do that yet. But. I forget you're that young, dude. I forget that Dennis is 23. Yeah. Steezy's 21. We forget that a lot. Yeah. That's why yeah. he does act like a little kid because he is a kid. You yeah. know, he's 21, even though I mean, he acts probably more mature than all of us. Yeah. I think Steezy's the most mature one. And yeah. I feel too kind of. Well, I, th- I really think me and Alejandro <laughs> are the fucking kids, dude. No, no. I mean, I'm mature. But oh, y'all don't okay. See yeah. It. No, yeah. No, right. Y'all don't <laughs> see it, dude. I'm mature in the like mature, like real mature. Like the real, like when you're so mature, you can be free. If that makes you're sense, you're rotten. Kinda. So it's like when you're, it's like it's like imagine it's like you're really buff, that you can go to the gym and lift, like number fives and don't get like oh everybody's like making fun of me. Does that make sense? I have a question. When do you think you're gonna get a girlfriend? I mean, I've had girlfriends. Yeah, but no, but like when are you trying to like start? Oh, the out reason why I don't want to get a girlfriend right now is because they take so much time. If you want to keep it healthy, you I mean, have dude, to spend time with her. And work on the relationship if you want to keep it healthy. Yeah. Not like the, oh, see you next week and forget about her. And then she gets mad. Why is she getting mad? No. If you want to keep it healthy, it takes time. It takes money, too, to go on dates and hang out. Yeah, it's effort. Yeah, it takes a lot of effort. And right now, they're focused on getting money. That's why I don't have any dating apps. So I'm literally messaging zero girls. The only reason why, if I do smash, is because I'm out there doing stuff and it just happens that that day. But I'm not trying at all. 
Um, because it takes so much time, dude. You're not trying. What was that whole speech at the beginning of this podcast of you like getting? No, but that's because we went out to a bar. (laughs) That's because we went out to a bar. Otherwise, on my phone, you can literally see zero messages. Yeah, yeah. Zero. No dating apps. Nothing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, so once we get the money, dude, we get the money. We'll probably party for like three years, just do crazy shit, go on cruises, travel the world, and maybe when I'm 34. That's 34 to 35, probably when I will get married. Yeah. Um, and like I told uh, Phil, we're talking about like, you know what a father-in-law is? My father lies? Yeah, you you're, know what that is? No, no, your father-in-law. So your wife's father. Your oh, wife's okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. father. Yeah, yeah. So Ma- like Maddie's dad, for example. Like yeah. Maddie's dad. I'm, I'm telling Phil like, uh, I will want a girl who has a cool father-in-law where I can go to Vegas with and just tell the father like, yo, let's go gamble in Vegas. Yeah, like- <laughs> Fine. And Did he I, would be like, fuck yeah, Alejandro. We dude, take 10K you know and we go to Vegas, me and him, and the, my wife and his wife stay. Dude, I don't, I don't think I could do that to Maddie's dad, dude. The fuck? Dude, when I met him, bro, you know, like, when you shake a hand right, and you look at your eye and you're trying to be like, you know, like, uh, yeah, you know, like, basically showing that you are, dude, you are a good guy there, right? Right. Uh, motherfucker does this, dude. I shaking a hand and he does this. Damn. And I'm like, fuck, dude. And he keeps getting me like a bitch face, dude. And I was like, dude, this guy is fucking scary, dude. And um, yeah, dude, it was, it was, yeah. I don't think I could be like, yo, let's go to fucking Vegas. No, dude. no, but that's what I'm saying. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Like, uh, I would. Well, pick. sometimes, like, also, you haven't really nurtured that relationship either. Also, like, too. I mean, you know, yeah, exactly. I'm pretty. Yeah, right, if yeah. you guys end up getting married, you know what I'm saying? What was uh, that clo- uh, covering your face? You know. Oh, no, I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> I just been funny. No, what I'm saying is, if you end up getting married, then that's a whole different level. Like, parents are not seeing you as just some fucking shrimp dating their fucking daughter. You know what I mean? Shrimp? Yeah. No, like, I, I don't know. Matt is this, like, like you know, he's, he's a really fucking trick fucker, yeah. Yeah, so basically what I'm saying is, like, that that would be cool to do. Have a dad you can go to Vegas with, you can go fishing with, like, a yeah. father-in-law. Okay, yeah, yeah. Maybe uh, use the rest. Th- that, that would be dope. But, um, yeah, I mean, imagine you have a dad. What do you like to do? Fucking play soccer i guess now that father-in-law that would be too harsh i mean they're both mics dude because it's gonna be hard to edit this but if you really have, <laughs> yeah, if you have fucking both mics uh i mean yeah dude um, so 30 do you want to have any kids yeah dude, I, t- I think i want to have like you know two kids i think that's two two max dude I, I max can't, yeah i can't Why? Three, dude i mean dude like a guy and a girl or two guys i feel or like two girls i feel like I think like girls it might be easier than guys, dude. Honestly. Fuck no? no, dude. Especially you, dude. You was a dad yeah, of girls. Fuck. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Dude, you're you right. would try to beat up every boyfriend they brought, dude. Dude, dude, I did fucking, uh, dude. Even my sister brings brings like guys so where I fucking talk shit, dude. Yeah. Yeah, like I was yeah. like, dude, don't talk to my fucking sister. Dude. Yeah, I feel like you would fucking beat the shit. Yeah, out of I bro. could be. Yeah, I see myself protective with that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you probably would wish for guys, but yeah. knowing you and your genes, bro, you probably are gonna have girls. What the fuck no, I is feel, that I feel supposed like to I mean, feel like dude. you're going to have girls, dude. What do you mean, girls, dude? I feel like you're going to have two girls. Why? I could just tell, dude. You, you, shut the you don't fuck up. You don't look like a guy who's going to have uh, guys. You look like a guy who's going to get married. So and basically you're calling me a pussy. <laughs> no, no, I'm not saying call me a pussy. I'm just saying, dude, I can tell, I, I can tell Steezy is probably going to have guys. Steezy? Nah, I can tell Steezy probably going to have sons. Imagine. Dude, look at his mom, dude. His mom has four guys. So his genes come from like yeah, but a lot of male dominated, like having sons. Yeah, sons, but in sons. my family, I have like real like brother and sister. I have brother and sister. So, you know. So, see, so I'm saying you got a girl in there. You know what I'm saying? Half huh. and half. Um, Damn. And what, let's say, I guess, where were you marry? What if they also have like a bunch of sisters? So you already know like, well, oh, yeah. shit. Okay. Oh, uh, well, yeah, Maddie only have sisters. So that's what I'm saying. So it's like, you oh, got to be careful yeah. with that. Uh, but two kids? All right, I mean, I guess you could handle two kids. Yeah, dude. Uh, back to back, or you want to give her some space? Like, we mean back to back. Like, you have a kid, she gets pregnant, and then the next year you also get her pregnant again. Nah, dude, it depends, dude. Uh, On what? I mean, dude, I don't know, dude. Maybe, like, I mean, dude, I can't tell, like, hey, I want to fucking two kids, dude. No, no, you can't. I mean, yeah, I probably could, but it depends, like, you do get a kid. It's a lot of responsibility. It's a lot of fucking no sleeping, dude. Uh, right. Fucking changing diapers and shit. Um, Fuck. You know, I got to experience first with a with a little kid. Right. And see how I do it. So and you it, would wait like a year? Like probably a year, yeah. And see if, if I do like, a, you know, if I'm ready, let's, you know, then I'll probably do it again. But 
It's a lot of responsibilities, dude. It's like, dude, it, wouldn't that be weird, dude? Because it's gonna come to the point where we're all married. Yeah, and dude, we all have kids, and dude, our kids are hanging out with each other. You know, and my kids beating up your kid. No, it's never gonna happen. <laughs> dude, my kids it's never gonna happen. It's never gonna, gonna, happen. Like, it's never gonna, like, gonna fucking happen. It's gonna be like <laughs> it's never gonna your, happen. Your kid's gonna be like, Dad, Alejandro, Alejandro's son, or like <laughs> whatever. Shut the fuck up, dude. Be like, Shut hey, Alejandro, the fuck stop. Up, dude. Can you please stop? I mean, dude. I mean, dude. It's Ron is in jeans. Uh, me and Alejandro already fought, and I beat him, dude. No, you did not beat me, dude. Do you want? Do you want me to post a fucking video? One round, do you scratch like uh, dude, my muscles? Dude, we went two rounds. You massage. You basically gave me a free massage. Okay, calm down. You gave me a free massage. A free massage, okay. Yeah. After when that first round I did, Alejandro's like, "No, dude, I want to fight." Dennis. Dude, I wanted to keep going, dude. They stopped you, dude. That, he didn't want to because they know I was gonna beat you. Phil was like, "Okay, this is over," and Alejandro's like, "Yeah, fight. You fight, Dennis, then, dude. Nah, I have everything dude, I wanna, on the video." I wanted to keep going, dude. I, I have mean, everything on video too. I mean, dude, I it's, wanted it's it to okay. be a ten uh, round match. You know, you know what's the funniest part is? Yeah. Imagine seeing Steezy's kids, dude. He's yeah. so fucking small, I mean, dude. We would all be, all, I, just, I just can't. All see of it, our dude. sons would beat up Steezy's kids, dude. Damn, yeah, that's that's honestly probably true, dude. So, dude, Dennis wants to have two kids. How many kids do you want to have? Oh, dude, that's a good number. No, two, I'm yeah. telling him he's probably gonna get girls. Like, I can just tell though, dude, Dennis is gonna get two daughters. So the um, uh, there's this scientist who was like trying to have boys, and he was like, "Let me try to use science to see if you could like calculate a boy." Right. And there's like small things. That, I mean, inherently, it's random, right? Right. But uh, uh, he did. He said he did some shit. And he has two boys. In like a time, and I was like, "Oh, that's interesting." I mean, I don't think you can really fucking control that, yeah, so can. don't even try to like do any bullshit. You like might that. come up with a fucking child with a dick and a vagina, so stop <laughs> trying to do science. <laughs> I know. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think I would never want to have obviously a single kid. I think brothers and sisters, like they have to have uh, one. You know what I'm saying? So if I have like a I have uh, uh, a daughter. Yeah, a daughter. You want another daughter? Well, maybe not. I w- I would just want at least two. At least that two. way they can have each other. Right. You know because I think like the bond that I have with my brother. Uh, that you can't have with anybody else. You can't really impossible. have, dude. It's it's so rare, and I and I get like soft talking about it because I think about it like we fought for. I mean. That's the one thing about that you. This never happens with any other relationship. You could like fist fight with this person and you come back to dude him and an hour later something will be like hey do you want to go to the movies <laughs> and it's so um yeah i mean i think that's a beautiful thing whenever like um you know our kids have uh, brothers and shit like that so i would say two my brother wants a huge family he, dude, he says fuck like that dude a I mean, huge fucking family no some people like that i mean that's their thing so what, what would be your max uh, I don't know. I mean, like probably four. Four. Four is a good number. Like if you have four fucking kids right now. Four kids. My yeah, brother wants six. That. Six. Mm-hmm. Fuck, dude. Yeah, but I mean, I told him. <laughs> Dennis is getting scared. I told him, dude, if uh, you need to be rich as shit first. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta be. You rich. need to be rich as shit. You can't be fucking bringing a kid into a broke world. Like that's awful for the kid. Yeah. Um. Yeah, dude. I d- dude, I definitely want a. Le- uh, I don't care. Like. You know the the gender, I guess. Right. But I definitely want like a little fill. That's my cynical side, type. Like, right? Narcissistic, I mean. Um, where I want a little fill running around. So even if it's just like two girls, one boy, or whatever, right. I want a little fill running around because it'd just be so hilarious to me seeing fucking huge ass head, big ears running around. Shit, <laughs> and just seeing him like grow up, dude. That'd be the shit. That'd be so uh, pure. And I know. As soon as you have your first baby, this is what everybody says. It's like, oh my God, it changes you. I know that's true. Yeah. I know like if I hold my son like over here, I would fall in love with that kid like almost immediately. Damn, dude. That's the most I mean, look at the, look how I'm talking. Yeah. I mean, you don't have any kids yet. I know. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully, dude. Damn. So like if I'm talking like this, dude, I'm already like... Yeah, there's no way I'm going to do this whole party shit, cocaine. You know, hey, bullshit. this is what yeah. happens. Fuck I think up. we should all make a deal. When we get married and we have fucking kids, we all meet up and then we have like a fucking kid fight, dude, and see which kid's better. <laughs> I mean, saying, that would dude. be cool, dude. Yeah. I know my kid would win. No, I mean, that's got, <laughs> dude, dude. But that would be cool. I mean, I could just see my fucking ginger son just fucking everyone up, dude. Uh, nah, dude. Yeah, dude. What if my daughter beats up your kid? Yeah, it's never going to happen, dude. Dude, if my fucking kid is a fucking pussy, dude, you ain't fucking living in my house, dude. Living in fucking Phil's house, dude. 
I mean, <laughs> I was gonna say something, but I'm gonna say it off the podcast. Um, <laughs> what I think, do I think I want to have like ten or twelve kids? You know, yeah, I think that's cool. Ten to twelve. Twelve fucking kids. This is, so I don't know how I'm gonna figure out because I know one woman can't do that. It's impossible. You're gonna adopt? Ah, fuck that. Did I adopt? No, I'm no, no, I'm nah, just. Like, I don't think I want to adopt because I would. I wouldn't. Well, you could do like. I would never see him as mine. I mean, you, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you could probably do surrogates. You want to have multiple wives? No, no, <laughs> dude. Holy, <laughs> you're like, dude, the, holy you're, fuck, dude! You're I'm pushing away all the options. <laughs> like, oh, dude, I, I could see Alejandro blowing up on YouTube and have like seven wives, dude. No, no, I'm saying, I'm saying, like, yeah, surrogates. I'm down for surrogates, but I want my son to be like natural, so I would probably have to hit it. You know what I'm saying? Your son would be natural because it's your sperm in there. No, no, but dude, the whole sperm in the egg test tube stuff. No, 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 no. Are you saying you're gonna hit your kids? No, no, I'm saying I would hit it. Get her pregnant. And he's basically saying like no. he he needs to smash other women to get to the twelve because you got one woman pushing out twelve kids. Dude, it's, you know how much child support's gonna be, dude? It's gonna fuck you now. Why do you mean child support? What is this guy talking no, about? No, I'm just talking about like, hey, let's. Uh, the, child support is when you like leave how, the kid. How much the the kids are gonna cost? Yeah, but do you think after you fucking one chick and then another, do you think it's not gonna like? No, no, no. I know? mean, obviously, I'm still trying to figure out how it will get done having that many kids. I'll mm-hmm. probably end up like with eight. I mean, unless uh, if you like fuck it to wins, dude. Fuck it, twins. And like oh, if you get twins. Yeah, if you get yeah. twins. That would be cool, dude. You get twins. Yeah. I There's a friend of our family who, like, the first try, they got triplets. Damn. Okay, that's not cool. That's, that's intense, too much work, dude. dude. That's intense. Triplets? I think twins yeah. would be cool. But I guess I'll aim for eight kids. Oh, uh, my God. No, I think a big family is dope as fuck. The Italian families, that's what they do. Uh, and yeah, otherwise, it doesn't get boring, dude. It never, dude, there's so much you, chaos. You always have people doing shit. Um, I don't think I could deal with and they could play with each other and like you could tell hey take care of him and like yeah I mean you're chilling the older kids you force them to take care of the younger kids um yeah I mean I guess uh alright I guess let's end it bro fuck yeah I gotta go edit and uh yeah alright guys uh if you're still listening at this point you guys are fucking superhero we did a Joe Rogan podcast style uh but who gives a fuck uh, if you don't want, you can just click off. But it's bad for the brand. Fuck you, Steezy, if you're listening to this. Um, I don't think Steezy's listening to this fuck far. Fuck no, dude. He's definitely not listening to this part. Uh, rate us on iTunes. It helps us out a lot. Stream everywhere where podcasts are created. Um, we have the Patreon there where we never show up and talk to our fans. But occasionally, once a month, every merch drop, um, you'll get a chance to win random thing and even then who knows and uh, even then who's verifying that well really? yeah i mean i guess the most important part is if you are listening hope you learned a lot of things from our failures <laughs> in our lives and yeah uh, we appreciate you listening thank you for supporting Dude, that's so dope I mean, like if you are listening right now actually if you are listening comment pineapple just the okay. word pineapple yeah comment pineapple if you listen to all this way to the end and i uh, will do something cool for you yeah we'll do we'll, and don't tell anybody else to comment yeah pineapple. don't tell anyone like in the comments if we fucking catch you you're fucking banned yeah you're banned dude so comment pineapple and uh we'll try to find something cool to do to whoever comments yeah, pineapple maybe put a raffle or something like that yeah yeah because yeah, that means you watched all the way to the end unless yeah, you're that smart guy who just skipped to the end yeah, just yeah. to see what we said hey, at the yeah, end. hey basically this what's gonna happen we will send you uh steezy's uh used condom and there you go you can have fucking steezy kids dude. there you go steezy kids <laughs> yeah we we'll right. want that yeah. anyways all right bye